Okay, so disclaimer. I am not a mental health channel, nor am I a therapist. I have pivoted my content the last three or four years to focus on philosophy and introspection, extrospection, which means like knowing the self, the consciousness, and how that consciousness relates to the world, right? We all live in different cultures and different bubbles is what I like to call them. We all have different expectations of what's real. We all have different perceptions of what is real. And we all use language so differently. The world is full of billions and billions and billions of unique people who have unique ways of relating to the world. In my past life on YouTube, I've had a, a few of them. I actually used to be a peer educator for sex education and alternative lifestyles like BDSM. And I'm going to put like put that hat on a little bit today because I'm going to throw a lot of terminology at you that I think would help bring out the nuance of this conversation while keeping in mind that I'm not a peer educator anymore. It's not what I do. I just I still love that part of my life and I know so much and I am nearly 35 this May. So I've just lived a very long life with a lot of adventures. I've been in a lot of unique situations that most people haven't been in, and I've traveled a lot. So I have just like a little bit, I think, more in my toolbox than the average person, and certainly more than a 19-year-old Katie. So we want to go into this with compassion, which means to suffer with, and we want to be self-aware that we don't know all things, and we certainly don't identify or perceive things all the same. So before we jump into the latest video, so before we get into Katie's latest video, which aired last night, uh, I want to actually just recount once again her own original description of what happened to her with this little snippet that I saved. And then I want us to listen to Katie with an open mind and be willing to hold her accountable without victim blaming. It's really, really difficult, but I want us to do that. I also want us to be aware that George is a person who could be flawed and he himself could have made mistakes. And we're going to talk about the difference between miscommunication and intentional harm, right? So first, before we really get into the new stuff, I just want to set us all up, bring out your notebooks, pay attention to how Katie originally tells the story of the initial major incident between her and George. Let's start there, okay? Even when you listen to videos faster than the original person was talking, it can change how your brain perceives that person. So just keep that in mind as well. So let's watch, let's listen to her normal so we can perceive her and her real, like her real self. James on my phone when it happened. Out of nowhere, I felt him slip his hand under my clothes, sitting next to me on the couch in front of everyone. He disguised it with a simple, are you ticklish? I coughed out a no. Still right there, he disguised it with an are you ticklish, which insinuates that he knew what he was doing and purposefully violated her consent in order to make her uncomfortable. And in order to get away with it, he pretended it was about tickling her. So her language is very specific, Katie's. Nova, shout out. Welcome to the Boundaries, our Open With Boundaries memberships on YouTube. I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Okay, let's keep going. I'm really aware of the fact that we were in front of other people. If Hold on, right there. Are you ticklish? I coughed out a no, still staring at my phone. I was overly aware of the fact that we were in front of other people. The fact that everyone else was sitting around us, watching us, including my best friend, and that his hand was inching further to places I hadn't asked for it to be. Okay, so his hand was inching to places she didn't ask for it to be. People were around and people were witnessing it. Nobody said anything, which I hate to say is pretty common in crowds of people. Um, I did I did like child psychology for a hot second in college before I dropped out. So no big deal. But when I was in that class, one of the things they told me in child development is that when there is an emergency, people don't actually do anything about it. So if they see somebody in trouble, they are actually less likely to do anything about it. So I learned from then on to do something if I saw something because it is actually sadly so common for human beings to witness a rape and not do anything, to witness a sexual assault and not do anything, to witness violence and not do anything because they don't want to get involved. Because I think we're animals evolved on a planet. I actually think it's part of our survival brain not to get involved, but also it's really sad because then we can't rely on our communities. There were videos that went viral a little uh, two, three, four years ago, I don't remember, of men surrounding women at gas stations. And the question was, do you get involved? And to be honest, it's sometimes better to call the cops 
But ultimately, it is kind of scary to think like, I'm going to get in between eight people harassing a woman. You know, they're going to come for me. They're going to turn on me. I don't know if they have a weapon. You know, yeah, Cola says the bystander effect. Exactly. There is this phenomenon that just happened. So I want to be open minded to the fact that we freeze, we fight, we have flight, we have a chemistry, biology, genetics impacting how we're going to react to things. And we're not going to react perfectly every time. Dominic with the super chat. Thank you so much. 50 euro. Amazing. Really interested in your take on this. I only uh, just discovered your channel because of this and really appreciate a mature, level headed approach to this quote drama. Well, I'm very nervous. And a part of this is because I have such an, a unique lived experience that I'm a little afraid people are going to think I'm victim blaming when I certainly don't want to do that or that I'm allowing people to get away with things. And I certainly don't want that either. The last thing I want to do is let a predator get away with being a predator. But what I also need to be aware of is how nuanced and complicated being a person is. And we're going to refer to a therapist on YouTube that I really like, Dr. Kirk Honda, for a, a phenomenon that tends to happen with certain people with attachment styles, I think much like Katie's. So we can have a little bit of leak, at least reaching out to the educational construct to give us some backing to what we're talking about today. Um, okay, so just in that alone, just a reminder of where Katie started off with, she felt like George came in with an intent and that intent certainly would make him a predator. But what if you didn't have the intent to be a predator? Lots of people that are abusers, lots of people that are um, toxic, lots of people that you know, are abusive, don't intend ab in abuse. I think there's this idea that like everyone is sitting here and being Machiavellian and, you know, malicious and they're thinking, oh, yes, I just want to hurt people. But often that's not the case. Most people are good people because they think they're doing good. And so the question is, when we refer to people as bad or good, what are we using to to judge that? Is it our own perception? But then we got to ask ourselves, why do we think we're good? Which is where the introspection part comes in. So check this out. Dr. Kirk Honda has been reviewing Love is Blind, which is like one of my favorites. And he talks about in this video called Borderline Abuse Chapter 1, Season 6, Episode 53. He just talks for a few minutes about some of his work and his relationship with um, dealing with abuse perpetrators, right? And I often will say people are often toxic. I think all of us have toxicity within us. It's just about the relationship we're having with it. But listen to the way that he describes this phenomenon that he has seen in people as well, because I think it will help us. And I've actually done a collab with Dr. Kirk Honda in the past. So if you guys want to look that up, he's a really great therapist on YouTube. He's not the end all be all. I don't mean to put him on a pedestal. I'm just referencing him as somebody who actually does this for a living in terms of the psychology part. And I'm wondering if Katie is suffering from something similar to what Chelsea on Love is Blind is suffering from, which is an issue with her attachment style. So check this out. For abusive people, there's a set of them that are the way that people typically... Hold on. I've got him on point 1.5. So it's going to be a little sped up because Dr. Kirk has a very slow way of speaking. So just keep that in mind. We talk about them where they wake up in the morning and literally say, I'm going to abuse this person. Or they start a relationship saying, OK, I have to hold back my abusive behavior because they're not going to take it. If I have to suck them in and then I'll abuse them. Certainly there are people like that. But in my experience, it's pretty rare. I mean, we're talking about a psychopath, someone who preys on other people and enjoys it. Sadist. The vast majority of abusers that I treated who were court mandated because they committed a crime of domestic violence and they were ordered by the court to attend the treatment program that I was a part of, I would work with these people and it was hard, you know, because literally none of them wanted to be there and thought that they had committed a crime. All of them thought that they were being treated unfairly. All of them thought that it was no big deal. All of them thought that their partner was really the abusive one. And we would look into it. We would talk to the partner periodically. And of course, we would talk to the individual. We'd look at the police report, all that kind of stuff. And um, 99 times out of 100, we would conclude, no, no, no. <laughs> the right person was convicted of this. Plus now, OK, so this I'm bringing in. He's about to say something that is, I think, so appropriate for Katie. Before I go into this, though, this would be the sort of like the idea of, you know, when you have a parent, if you like had parents like I did immigrant parents from Iraq, very traditional values, very anti-LGBT, very well-intentioned, but I would argue are the reason I have borderline personality disorder, which is in remission for years, thank God. You know, I've done the therapy, I've done the work, I've done the, you know, I've made the effort to, to focus on myself and to do DBT and to recognize, you know, what situation I'm in, what's going on, not to use it as an excuse, but an explanation. You know, growing up with parents that with their best intentions ended up being like toxic and abusive unintentionally have definitely made strides to be better people. But pay attention to the fact that like people always think they're good unless they are sadistic in, um, in a bad way, not a consensual way. And unless they, you know, in this situation, 
um, they're not always like trying to be abusive or toxic. It just happens because the way they were, they were raised with their acknowledgement of the world, their understanding. Now, my parents have gotten incredibly better over the years. They're very good people. But do they harbor or maintain some of the issues that they received in their childhood? Absolutely. We all do. We're like products of our environment. And through introspective work, we can be a little bit more than that. But of course, nobody sits there and thinks, unless they're the psychopath kind of people, nobody sits there and thinks like, I abuse my children. All these men who walk out on their kids aren't thinking like, I'm a shit person. They're just thinking, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. This is the best decision I could make for me. This is what I should do. And yes, you and I would be like, why the fuck do you walk out on your kids? Why weren't you there to support them? Well, there's certainly, again, the way we view ourselves, the way we view our narratives is going to be in the most positive light. So you know, when Katie attributes maliciousness to George, I think she's making a really common mistake that a lot of people make. And I just, I can't imagine after everything we've seen that George has that maliciousness within him, that he's seriously targeting Katie, trying to make her uncomfortable. But maybe, I can't read mine, so I could be wrong. But I'm assuming Katie's doing something that Dr. Kirkhan is about to explain, which Chelsea kept doing in Love is Blind. So let's get into that. OK, let's talk about that because I actually think this is what's happening. And if this is what's happening, then a lot more compassion can be had for everybody involved. OK, so let's see. You know, court, juries, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, are, do wrong things happen in court? Yeah. But, you know, anyway, so what I learned was that all of them that I came across and then subsequently in my private practice, I would treat abusers as well perpetrators, they all have massive attachment insecurity and learned or developed this pattern of retaining attachment security through control and what we would call abuse. And they are operating from this desperation of retaining an attachment. They don't set out to abuse. They set out to retain attachment like everyone else does. Mm -hmm. But instead of uh, having other kinds of behaviors that are based on trust and self-awareness and uh, emotional regulation, they, they have a set of behaviors that are available to them that are coercive, domineering, controlling. The irony of people who have narcissistic personality disorder, and Dr. Kirkonda works with patients who have it, and he really has seen them gotten get better, but it's a devastating personality disorder. I, you know, it's such a difficult one to have because the deepest root of a narcissist is that they're incredibly insecure and self-hating. So when we have to deal with them, it's so easy to hate them and to think they're evil people, but think about if that was your life. Think about if you were born or had a childhood that gave you or made you suffer with this horrible, horrible illness. Like it's just such a horrible thing to have and it's so hard to deconstruct it. Though there are people who have worked on it, there are even um, narcissistic um, TikTokers who have talked about this. You know, it's a very interesting phenomenon. And I'm not saying Katie has NPD. I'm, I'm not seeing any of that. I actually think it's something less of an issue than that because that's a huge issue, right? But Dr. Kirkonda often talks with a lot of compassion for NPD people. And I've read a few books on them. And I, I definitely think I have a narcissist in my life. And I do love that narcissist, right? That person's so special to me. And they're somebody that I love and I wish would get better. And I'm not sure if they have it. But when I think about them, I think like, oh, that's what I think they have. They're, they're suffering. They're a person who's suffering. And so my heart goes out to them. That doesn't mean I don't have to have boundaries. That doesn't mean I have to hang out with them. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean. Right? Like you can know that people suffer without needing to justify their actions. Also, shout out to Felicia. Welcome to the memberships. So let's keep going. Harmful. And they don't know it in the moment. They're not thinking, I'm trying to tear this person down. It, to them, it feels rational to them. It feels like it's commensurate with the situation. Like, I don't know if they're going here, but you know, they're talking about him last night having gone out with his friends for an hour. For most people, if as long as it is the way that it looks that he just went out with his friends, for most people, they would, you know, even if they were kind of hurt, they'd be like, ah, I just kind of, I just kind of wanted to spend some time with you last night. And on a scale from one to 10 about hurt, it might be a two or a three. But for people that have these kinds of traumas, the, the two or a three, or even if it's a one to most people, it'll feel like an eight or a nine. Maybe. This is key. We all wondered if all, again, I'm going to use language here that sounds really dismissive, but I think it's important. We kind of wondered if, quote, all he did, quote, was tickle her or touch her, or even grope her boob, or even, you know, why is she reacting the way she's reacting? As if she was graped, right? That's a lot of the commentary around Katie and George. I think this could be happening possibly where she's witnessing, she's involved, she's having this relationship with the situation, but she's having a reaction that is out of reason, but that doesn't mean it's not happening. That's why your feelings are so 
valid, even if they're not reasonable. But that doesn't mean you get to act on your feelings and hurt other people just because they are really happening. That doesn't mean they're reasonable. That's why people go to have DBT. That's why borderlines do DBT is they learn how to be reasonable with when they're exhibiting or expressing their emotions and how they're doing it, right? And I think Katie might be suffering from something similar. I don't know. I'm not a therapist. Where she's not able to introspect and say to herself, why am I reacting this way? Why didn't I react a different way? You know what I mean? And I'm thinking that that's probably what's happening. Be even a 10. So uh, so to give it an analogy for typical people, for people without this condition, uh, it would be as if he had um, cheated and uh, um, you know cheated for a month. See? He's saying... So him going out for an hour with friends to a to a person with this kind of brain could literally feel as if your partner had cheated on you for a month. And that's a really difficult thing to process that, okay, when I hear you say something, I'm processing it this way. When this thing happens, I'm processing it this way. Some things I also found out, I'm gonna throw some terms at you, okay? Some things I recently found out is like Katie identifies as asexual. So asexual people... Um, the way to think about it is they don't have an experience of like sexual attraction. Asexual people have sex. They can have sex. Asexual people feel the biological urge to masturbate, but they usually have no desire to or need to engage in sexual behavior, but can often do it for their partners or because it's sort of an indifferent thing to them. So from my understanding, and I could be wrong on this, Katie is asexual, and that is impacting her relationship with how things have gone down. Now, allosexual, which is like what I am, is I just have sexual attraction to people. It doesn't matter if I like you or not, I can be sexually attracted to you. Allosexual. Demisexual are people who usually don't have a sexual attraction to someone unless a great emotional bond has been created, right? So when you think about categorization, which I'm a big fan of, right? That's how my neurodivergency definitely plays its um, kind of hyper-focus is that I love categorization. And I love things being accurately categorized. So even in this situation, are we really talking about sexual assault? Are we talking about sexual harassment? Are we talking about something else? Are, you know, there's so many ways to have this conversation. And then we have to ask ourselves, like, it was it violence? Is this violence? Like, what is this? And so there's so many questions to ask before we know. But a lot of what the internet does is it black and white, it black and whites everything. And it thinks either Katie's the worst person on earth or George is the worst person on earth. And I hate to say this, but humans are somewhere in the middle. Okay, so there's something about this that I think is getting lost in translation because nobody has this educational background and nobody knows these terms and nobody's thinking about it from this perspective. But there are so many ways to think about this. So again, you and I might have been in situations in which somebody touched our chest or somebody touched us in a way and it didn't feel like the end of the world. But for Katie, her brain did process it that way. And I think that's incredibly valid. That doesn't mean that George is a predator. It actually says more about relating to yourself than relating to other people. In that moment, Katie needs to relate to herself than relate to George because she can't be in George's mind. But she kept attributing a lot of like evil to George, which I think was very inappropriate. Okay. Now we'll move on to the actual video that Katie made recently. Uh, going into this video, I re-uploaded it on my channel. It's unlisted because Katie's original volume and her original video was like way too low. So I just re-edited it to up the volume. So we're watching uh, an hour and two minutes of Katie's video re-uploaded on my channel. But her original link, I will make sure. Let me grab it for you because I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable here. This is her original Twitch channel. I'm going to put it in the chat for you guys and put it on Discord. This is her original Twitch link, if you guys want to check that out for sure. Um, <clears throat> so again, going into this, we want to make sure that we recognize Katie's a person. She's 19. I'm certainly not going to hold a 19-year-old as accountable or more accountable than we even hold our politicians. And you all on the internet be acting that way. And I'm certainly not going to hold George, a guy under 30, more accountable than we're holding anyone else in society, especially people in positions of power, true power. OK, not things like YouTuber counts, which we'll talk about in a bit. I think there's so much misinformation going into this story. So I'm just trying to add the nuance, right? 
Um, Hitman says, what's the difference between asexual and low sex drive? Asexuals don't have a desire for sex. Low sex drive means you have a desire for sex, but you don't have the drive to, to be into it. There's a difference, right? So like asexual can have high sex drives. That's why they often masturbate to get rid of that feeling, but they don't desire the sex part of it, traditionally speaking. And then of course, there's like an ace spectrum, which means you could be somewhere on that spectrum, right? So the difference is like asexuals have high and low sex drives. Their sex drive doesn't dictate their attraction or desire for sexual activity. Unlike an allosexual, like I'm allosexual and I have a high sex drive, right? So, okay. Um, those things are different. And again, some people feel like, oh, we shouldn't be categorizing things so separately. We shouldn't have to create all these terms. I think you're being lazy. I think lazy thinkers simplify the nuance of the human uh, condition. And I think it's fine to be a lazy thinker. I think most people are. And I think it's easier. And I think that it makes sense for how humans have made it through all of their existence, right? As like an animal species evolved over time. So I prefer to categorize everything in the most nuanced way possible. So in this uh, page right here, you should see this thing that says categories. You know, in life, we're always talking about the color blue. This is like my little example, but we're, it's what shade of blue are we talking about, right? So maybe Katie, when she says sexual assault, is talking about the light blue color. But when George or I think about it, maybe we're thinking about the dark blue color, right? And so again, when we're having this conversation about what are we talking about, unless we know what color of blue we're talking about, you know what I mean? We're not going to know. We're not going to be on the same page. So keep in mind as we watch this video, what is sexual harassment? What is sexual abuse? What is sexual violence? What is sexual, um, a, 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 a sexual, um, a, a, whoa. Well, guys, why am I blinking on my words? Sorry, what is rape? What is like, what are all these things? You know what I mean? So again, I don't think, pe sorry, my brain totally just like, fooped. <laughs> I don't think people are considering these things when we're talking about it. Okay, so let's go ahead and start her video. Once again, I linked her original video on Twitch in the chat. I'll link it again just in case. Let's go ahead and check out what Katie's recent video, what she has to say. Okay. So she's starting off. Hi, mods. She's Love waiting for again. people. Love you guys. She's like, hi, mods, love you. And I don't know how mods work in other communities. You know what I mean? I don't know if that means anything, um, but she's just waiting for people to come in. Oh, and I want to say last, what, sorry, something I saw on Twitter, and I don't think this is true. Lots of people were like, Katie is undoing years of feminist, like, progress. Okay, if you guys are blaming a 19-year-old for years of feminist, fe feminist progress, like, going down, like, you need to fucking sit down. Your bubble is insane. We all live in bubbles and we all have perceptions. But if you're going to put the weight of the responsibility of a whole political movement on the back of a 19-year-old, you have lost the plot. Just lost the plot. Okay? With peace and love. Okay? She's just a kid going through an adventure. And yes, her accusation has repercussions. And we should talk about that. But don't act like men, grown men out here, grown women out here, people in positions of actual power, presidents, politicians, popes, aren't sitting here doing a thousand times worse, a thousand times worse, and never being held accountable to the point where you're dragging a 19-year-old girl, who obviously has problems, harder than you would ever those people who you actually got to point a finger at. Okay? So bad take. Okay? Bad take. And by the way, is she doing harm towards real victims? Everybody is. Because we all have different ideas of how we ex like have experienced that. You know how many people get on my videos and say, Brittany, you just wouldn't know. You're not a victim of rape. You wouldn't know. Not that it's any of your business, but I've openly talked about my assault. I've openly talked about my rape. But the assumption is that I'm not a victim because I don't talk about it the way they talk about their, their rape, which is fair. We all think people are having the same experience we're having. So Katie, from her experience, is thinking, I'm a victim, you should understand. And I'm thinking, I'm a victim, you should understand. And then we are assuming that because we experience it one way, you know what I mean? We should all be experiencing it the same way. That is not how life is going to work, okay? Instead, we should be listening to how she experienced it and whether or not people like Katie can have a different experience with life based off of her own knowledge and understanding, and same with George. 
right? Oh, and just a shout out to Dream Stands or fans. I did get a video about Dream talking about the incident. It was like 40 minutes and I did pre-listen to it. So I have that perspective in my head as well. All right, let's go. She's chilling. She's waiting. I just want to skip anything in case we're going to miss it. <sighs> She's humming. This bit's kind of awkward, isn't it? <laughs> Me just waiting. Till everyone gets here. Okay, we're waiting. This is a very interesting way to start off a, a live stream. It's interesting that she's waiting for people to show up. Is that a Twitch decision? Okay, I might... It's taking longer than usual. This is really awkward. <laughs> she goes, it's taking longer than usual. I mean for people to show up? Let me forward this part a bit. Oh gosh, here we go. <gasps> no? Oh, I got nervous because she said, okay, let's go. Okay, she's humming. I just don't want to skip anything, so I don't like... She, you took her out hey, of contact. is everyone uh, here now? Hopefully? Maybe? Yes. I guess it is time. Okay, we're going to um, normal her. And the reason we're not listening to her on a faster speed is I, I really want to hear her tonality. I want to see her express herself. Hi, everyone. This is uh, the stream I promised. Um, I apologize that it's so just late and not, you know what I mean? Um, it's the stream I promised that I would do. Uh, my final thoughts on everything, you know, just everything that I need to get out before mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can even begin to heal anything. Um, so here it is. I apologize that it is later, I'm pretty sure, than I said. I've been really sick, um, and I was hoping that I could wait to do this so I could be of right mind to and wait until I got better, but mm -hmm. I've just been getting worse. Uh, why is I, so I hope she's gone to therapy. I really recommend, if you, if you have to put it on a credit card, which is what I did, you go to therapy. Like, if you know you've actually been assaulted or had something terrible happen to you or you feel like you're drowning in your mental health, it's okay to go to therapy. I really recommend it. Now, of course, you got to find the right therapist and it's going to be complicated and it's going to be hard, but I definitely recommend it. it. In the long run, it will be better, but I also know that's a difficult ask for people. I myself was in denial of my own assault for many, many years because I just – you know what I mean? I didn't want to have to be that person. And then eventually my PTSD got too bad and I had to go to therapy and I still have to go to therapy for it. I'm still not done with my process of healing myself. So I get it. And that happened many years ago, many years ago, you know. Um, thank you so much, Dominic, for the super chat. It's very peculiar, peculiar to wait forever for, wait, it's a very peculiar to wait forever for an audience. I wonder if she just did it in the same way that I just play music for a long time is just to give people a heads up. They're like, hey, I'm streaming. You know, maybe she just did it for that. Or maybe she just didn't want to have to repeat herself. Or maybe she felt like, hey, let's like make the, the commentary after people have gotten here. So, you know, I won't be too, I won't be too nitpicky. Oh, so, I figured I would just today? do it now because obviously not going to be getting better anytime soon. So uh, here it is. Like I said, this is a stream. Ooh, are those notifications going to be on the whole time? Because I'm not going to lie. That's kind of annoying and inappropriate. I would say borderline. It feels inappropriate for the theme of the stream. Just my final thoughts on everything. Um, if you're looking at the stream, for me to like expose and drop new drama or just anything to talk about, it's not that kind of stream. Um, and I apologize if you think it Love is you, going to be. It's just Less than three. everything I need to say uh, from my voice, coming from me. Um, I also apologize. I will be, you know, stopping, stuttering. I can't control the emotions I show during this. I didn't even write anything to Love say. I've written people. down, you know. Um, some people on Twitter, I did, I didn't pre-watch, but I did check on Twitter and some people didn't like that she was smiling so much. 
I just want to say as a person who has a, a, a tick where I'm when I'm really, really nervous, when I'm like grow like uncontrollably nervous I actually do smile a lot and I even giggle my siblings and I all suffer from like this horrible thing um uh, my mom has it where like we literally we get giggly when we're incredibly nervous so I'm not gonna hold it against her that she's smiling a lot even though it feels very unsettling it also could be a nervous tick so Again, going in with an open mind. I'm not in these communities. It's probably easier for me to also observe this a little bit more, quote, objectively, whatever that means. Also, shout out, 900 people are here and I appreciate you guys being here. Um, I will try my best to also pay attention to chat, but, you know, I, I'm i I'm trying to focus on Katie. Um, but okay, let's keep going. Katie the things I want to talk Blood. about, but it's not something I can just sit and read. Uh, which is hard for me because it's hard to just voice. I'm sorry. One more thing because chat keeps saying this should have handled been handled in private. Though I agree with you, I will say this to you. I myself as an older content creator still deal with a lot of bullshit behind the scenes. It is true. It exists. Don't put your content creators on pedestals. But one thing I always struggle with is like, when do you come out with information about people? Because if it's just that people are toxic, well, I think that's pretty clear. People are toxic humanity wouldn't be the way it was if we didn't all suffer from toxicity right so I just want to make it clear to people that as much as like this could have been handled handled in private this is a question for you when do you owe your community a warning about somebody who's toxic that's a great question to ask yourself because I struggle with this all the time if you know something about someone in which they're just toxic like they're not gonna grape you they're not gonna take advantage of you in a in a well, they're going to take advantage of you, but not like in a horrible way, not like in a prison way. They're not going to, you know, when do you speak up and say, hey, don't do that with that person? You know, oh, hey, just, you know, that person is kind of an asshole or hey, that person cheats or hey, that like, when do you think it is time to speak up and tell people? Because Katie probably felt an obligation to speak up for her community and for herself. But like, when do you do that, right? How I'm thinking what I'm thinking. Um, so I do ask that you guys be patient with me. Um, mm -hmm. and this isn't edited, so I can't, you know, go back or cut out the pauses that I make. So Love again, I apologize. This Katie is going to be Hart, all over Katie the place Hart. and mm -hmm. probably not make any sense. Okay. Um, but I'm doing it anyway. Uh, I guess. Um, I also want to thank everyone you, Katie. that is even just here. Uh, even if you're here for the absolute wrong reasons and you hate me. I uh, hate my guts. Uh. I do think hating Katie is, again, when we hate people, it's a it's our relationship with ourselves that we're hating. Why would you have any room to hate somebody? Because you're upset that you can't change them. You're upset they hurt you. Or you're upset you can't understand them. That's my theory. So let go of hate. Let go of resentment. Let go of the, you know, the anger within your own body so you can have a better relationship with existing in existence. I couldn't even imagine living a life where I hate Katie at this point in my life, but I know growing up, I certainly hated a lot of people and I've let go of that hate over the years because it genuinely makes no sense. If humans are going to human, which is a saying on this channel, and we know that people are going to struggle and we know that people are going to have different relationships with themselves, then the relationships they have with themselves is their issue, their problem, their thing. The relationship I have with them is my responsibility. And so again, I can't imagine hating Katie at this point but I know why you're upset with her. I understand that anger. But remember, if you're neurodivergent like I am, your sense of justice might be just as bad as her sense of justice. What if Katie and Amesy and all these people in this community are having a neurodivergent sense of justice and then so are you? Or maybe you're having a moral sense of justice because she's such a, I can't believe she did this. How do you think she feels from her perspective with her morals? From her morals, she's thinking, how can you do this? And from your morals, you're thinking, how can you do this? And that's what we're all doing to each other. Okay? I want to thank you anyway for being here to hear me. Um, because there's a lot of people right now that are even just only watching clips from <laughs> things I've said and refuse to watch the full thing. Where there's a lot of people mm -hmm. that only want to watch his videos on it, especially. Sorry, Amesley, Amesy, B said, who's Amesy? I think Amesley, whatever. There's a girl in the sphere. I don't know her exactly, but she's in the sphere.
where she has a very deep sense of justice. And I appreciate that energy from her, but also I think it might be misplaced, you know. Because of the latest video using clips from live stream, they really don't feel it's necessary to watch or read any of my stuff. And it's hard. Uh, I feel like I don't have a voice in my own story, mm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So I really want to thank you guys for at least being here, hearing me out. Again, I'm sorry if I like say things the wrong way and, and just use the wrong wording or go back. It's just crazy right now. Everything's crazy. Mm. But, but I thank you guys for being here. Um, yeah, you guys are saying she didn't watch George's response. I'm pretty sure that they katie didn't also i'm sorry i think amesy is a they them my bad they them sorry i think amesy i don't know if amesy uses all pronouns but i think they are they them i think you're right chat sorry um yeah i don't know if katie watched george's video i know originally she said she wasn't going to so i'm not sure if she got around to doing it which i know is difficult asking people to asking people to watch their perceived predator speak about them but I because I know I understand that anxiety um but also eh, it's difficult you know what I mean it's difficult to decide what is the right ethical thing to do anyways um the one biggest thing that I want to clear up it is fucking sexual assault okay I'm not gonna apologize say that it isn't sexual assault that I'm not a sexual assault victim the touching that he is admitting, has admitted to many times, this touching that he admitted to not asking or getting my consent before he did, he felt up my tits on a couch with other people there. He stuck his hand up my shirt, under my bra, and felt up, fondled, whatever you want to say, he felt up my tits. Unwanted sexual touch is literally in the definition of sexual assault. It's fucking sexual assault, and I'm never going to apologize for saying it is, okay? Uh, it isn't fake allegations. It's not fake allegations. I'm not a liar. Hi, Quite literally, better, and the thing that I was talking about is my sexual assault. Okay, having those voice notifications on is not cool. Um, right here, we're just going to, okay, grab your note pen and paper, okay? What is sexual assault? Right? Mods, if there are like trolls in chat or very inappropriate people, I have give you permission to ban them or mute them. Um, Johnny being particularly one of them. People who are writing like really hateful comments, like you can ban them. Um, okay, so um, what is sexual assault? So I'm going to bring out, again, if you guys don't know my history, back in the day I used to be a peer educator for sex education and BDSM and alternative lifestyles. And if you know anything about alternative lifestyles that are very consent focused and care a lot, a lot about consent, like really love consent, you know that it's a very complicated subject matter because there's the law and then there's the expectation from your community and how you're involved in that community. So sexual assault, assault in general is actually pretty broadly defined in order to protect victims from predators and perpetrators. The dilemma is that it's broadly defined um, and will possibly cause issues in the future because of that. So I don't want to focus too much on the legal definition, but I'll give you a little bit of a story that I think will be helpful. When I was in the BDSM community pretty, pretty actively, like every day at the dungeon, it primarily exists as a sex education center during the day in a dungeon at night. And during the sex education hours, you could take a class from lawyers in the community that would teach us how to engage with police officers who didn't and were not BDSM educated. Meaning if you had a hickey on your neck, if you had some spanking bruises because you were doing consensual BDSM, if you were engaging in anything like spitting on your partner, pulling their hair, choking them in bed, pretty common things in like a lot of adult relationships, whether you're vanilla or BDSM, all of those things are considered assault. And on top of that, sexual assault. So remember that just because it can qualify for doesn't mean it is. Just because it can qualify as doesn't mean it is. What's the difference from consensual sex and rape? It's the consent. So again, it's not the sex that's the rape part. It's the consent. So when you're having the deviate like, or the distinguishment in, in, in words and conversation, 
Katie is allowed to perceive it as sexual assault because from her perspective, that is what happened. But from George's perspective, which is also just as valid, from his perspective, he has no reason to think it's sexual assault because he appropriately escalated according to what he was being perceived as like the right way to do things. So what's so hard about being a person in a community is that we don't agree on what it means to appropriately do things. You can ask a person's consent three, four, six, seven times, but if the person feels, and this might be valid, that they were too drunk to even consent anyways, or they were too this to make a decision, or they were too this, or their age, or then that's why we have lawyers and judges and juries, and that's why it's so complicated. And so again, when we're having this conversation as a community, you need to decide how do you as the individual understand that you've gotten consent from a partner? Because remember, her argument is that she was drunk. My argument would be so was George. So again, there's like a confusion here. I also hear things like saying like, George is a criminal. He did a crime. Katie also committed a crime that night. So not only do we have two criminals who are now drunk, but it's crime on crime, crime. So again, I want to be as nuanced as possible to explain how a miscommunication could occur, but also acknowledge that we don't want to make excuses for predators. We don't want to make excuses for bad people. We also want to make sure that we acknowledge like good people can do bad things. And so we have, there's so much that goes into this, but that's what I noticed first and foremost. So when I say everyone lives in a bubble, I mean, we all live in our own perception of what is real. And then you usually congregate with people around you who agree with that reality. So Katie's hanging out with people that agree with her reality. And George is hanging out with people who agree with his. And then hopefully there's the truth. But the truth isn't always accessible to all of us because we're still always just perceiving. And so it's really difficult to know. So just like keep that all in mind. So, and that's the one thing he confirmed. He can sit there and confirm that he did it and so he did confirm that they had a physical interaction so if a man kisses you without first asking you if you would like to be kissed you could call that sexual assault you could be married to somebody and if they kissed you without asking your prior consent in some way that somebody deemed not prior you could call that se sexual assault so again i agree with her that from her perspective, it was sexual assault. And I'm saying from George's, it wasn't. And I'm saying both truths exist at the same time because there's not an objective happening here because we do not know George's inner thoughts, nor do we know, Kate, nor do we know Katie's. People are accusing Katie of targeting George and maliciously trying to ruin his career. People are saying George maliciously targeted Katie and she he's trying to malicious uh, he tried to maliciously like assault her and embarrass her in front of her friends. We're making a lot of assumptions on the internal workings of two people that are giving two different stories. So if we actually believe them for the way they both told the story, they both had an interaction. They both thought it was a different thing from their own perspectives. He validated her consent and didn't ask her to come back to his hotel room, didn't have sex with her, didn't kiss her, didn't do anything else, right? So again, like when we're having this conversation, both of them could be telling the truth. And that's what's so difficult about being a person in a society is like how are both people telling the truth and there's no real predator or victim because it just happens that way, you know? Does intent or impact hold equal weight in these ca in this case? Um, I think it does in all cases. In some cases, well, I don't know about equal, but I think ultimately we have to pay attention to intent and then we have to pay attention to impact, right? So from my perspective, the thing I've learned the most about my life is that life isn't simple, but it's simply complicated and that people are, you know, it's a, a life is so complicated, guys. We don't choose to be here. It's not like we consent to being born. And then when you're born, you're born into a physical body that has all these preconceived prescriptions onto you. Oh, you're black. Your life's going to be like this. You're a woman. Your life's going to be like this. You're gay. You're Muslim. You're Catholic. You're Jewish. Like here's a whole history that's going to be pushed on you. And then you have to decide, well, what if I wanted to live outside of all of these constructs? but you still have to literally exist in a society. And that society is what we're witnessing right now. You live in a society. This is that society, right? Kenzie with the super chat says, this is her third or fourth statement and her saying it for the first time now feels dishonest after backlash. 
I think that's a fair perspective. The fact that she didn't clarify, that's why we rewatched the beginning section, okay? Why we rewatched her uh, talking about how he touched her, because you're right that ultimately her bringing up the boob contact now adds sort of a, a hesitation in believing her story, though I think both things can be true. He could have touched her boob, and from his perspective, it could have been consensual, and from hers, it wasn't. Both of those things can still be true. They could have had sex that night, both being drunk people, her being a legal adult, him being a legal adult, and the same thing could have happened. They could have literally had sex, and it still would have been consensual, and unconsensual because there wasn't a communication that made sense to either of them. Not all cultures work like your culture. Not all cultures ask out loud, would you like me to kiss you? Would you like to have sex? Would you like me to do this? There's also a terminology called blanket consent. So my husband, I married, okay, she has blanket consent to have sex with me whether I'm sleeping or whatever I'm doing. He's blanket consent to come up behind me and touch me. I have blanket consent to kiss him. We don't have blanket consent to have surprise anal. That's, we don't have that, <laughs> okay? You can't just do surprise anal in this relationship because you gotta prepare. That's been negotiated. And whether you like it or not, that's because we're trying to respect each other's consent. Most people are not having those conversations because they think it's cringe. And if you think it's cringe, that's okay. Lots of people agree with you and want the kind of relationship you want. The dilemma in life is you learn the hard way. Cultures differ from yours. Don't assume people live like you. So in Katie's world, she's saying George is a predator because he didn't prior, he didn't prior to the interaction ask her for consent. And from George's circumstance or position, he's probably thinking like, oh, I'm just like first base, second base, third base, like enjoying the process of dating in escalation. But also, this is how miscommunication occurs because we're not all the same, right? Mikey with the super chat, congratulations on over a thousand views on your stream. Let's go. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Welcome to how we tear people apart. You know what I mean? Wow, Brittany Simon is retarded. You made a username dedicated to me. Guys, I've officially made it as a streamer. Thank you so much. Guys, can we ban these people, obviously? Like, okay, ban people making fake usernames. Ban people saying chat's retarded. Like, ban anybody using inappropriate slurs. Ban anybody uh, in chat who's, you know, possibly fucking with TOS. Just, like, ban them. Thank you. I'm still sat here getting called a liar, getting called a fake victim, uh, getting called, what was it, a slut and a prude at the same time. Uh, and quite frankly, it's fucking ridiculous. Mm. Um, I'm not going to stand. I think that is ridiculous. I think it is ridiculous. I think it's cruel to, to tear this girl down and expect her to know things that the average person doesn't even know. And I'm really sick of seeing grown men tear her apart for the same bullshit they would do themselves in different ways. Right? So, okay. Like, okay. Down. Luckily, I'm not scared to say it anymore. Um, that's it. It's sexual assault. He felt up my tits. This touching that he's talking about, that's what it is, okay? No, I'm not upset that he tickled me. I'm not saying that he assaulted me because he tickled me or because he was close to me. No, I'm upset because I was on a couch. She's not a slut, but she is a fake victim. What is a fake victim? Again, what is a fake victim? Right? Because your immigrant parents are calling you a fake victim right now. Oh, why are you complaining? Look at this life we gave you. Listen, you can be a victim and you don't have to make it the, the whole thing. You can be a victim and not need it to be the end all be all of your universe. You're allowed to be a victim and there might not be a predator involved. And I know that's really hard for your brains, but I'm gonna blow your fucking minds right now, okay? You can have a victim without a predator. You can have a victim without somebody intentionally trying to victimize you. And that's the irony of life. What do you call a drunk driver who didn't intend to kill anybody on the road? Manslaughter. It's not intentional. Because it's not intentional doesn't mean it doesn't have a victim. Right now, you could say the drunk driver is the predator, but they're not predators. They're making a, a decision intoxicated that obviously they're being held accountable for. But it's funny that we hold drunk drivers accountable, but not people who are drunk and partying. I think that's interesting that we're willing to hold drunk drivers accountable for how they impact people. But Katie was drunk in this situation. 
So how do we know she didn't take advantage of George? And if she's saying it was witnessed in a room of people, right? Like, what does this mean? If they did, if he did touch her, which he admitted to touching her, we just don't know to the extent of how, because she's now mentioning the details out of the blue, okay? Then she can feel violated. You can't take that away from her. That doesn't mean George was a predator. And I need you to understand both these things can be true. Both of these things can be true. She can be a victim and there can, they're in a world where there's not a predator. Now, the question is, if you think George is maliciously picking on her and targeting her because she's 18, or if you're on the other side where you think Katie's purposely trying to destroy his career, how do you know you're right? How do you know, how do you know you're not pulling a Katie or a George right now by reading minds and not having the facts, right? How do you know that? 18 years old, drunk, on a couch with other people in the room, and he sticks up his hand and starts feeling- If the other people were in the room are all willing to say this happened, and that, that is true, then we can talk about what it means. What does it mean? Okay? Actually, really fast. I got a comment on my last video that kind of kind of coincides with this. I just want to read it out loud. I gave a club example in my last video about what is sexual assault. And I clubbed all through my 20s, mostly gay clubs. Straight clubs were freaky to me. But I mostly had a lot of fun in gay clubs. I'm a queer kid. I was adventuring, you know, popping bubbles, experiencing life, trying to figure out how other people live, trying to figure out what I wanted from the world, right? I'm trying to figure out like what I want from the world. And I went to this gay club and this gay guy kissed me and didn't ask prior consent because that's not how the culture works there. And of course, you find that out when you're there. You're like, oh, OK, people just touch you here. How do we feel about that? But then once you say no, they respect your consent. So I was in a community that would touch you and then you'd be like, oh, no, I'm not into that. And I'm like, oh, OK, my bad. And then they'd go hang out with somebody else, which is cool. I'm OK with that. But I can understand how that could be traumatizing for somebody. I got a comment that said, your club example doesn't make sense to me as it sounds like you're describing a sexual assault, but in a form that you tolerate. Now, I don't want to delude what I think of as sexual assault, which I think is intentional and purposeful, but I could see a world in which a bubble defined sexual assault as the fact that it happened, but not necessarily that it matters. Because if you say, oh, well, you just don't care if someone's sexually, like if you don't care if you're sexually assaulted or if you're raped, that could be possible. But then in my mind, does it make it not rape or not sexual assault? I think it's very true that on a planet of 8 billion people, there could be part of the human population that could be raped or sexually assaulted and not feel impacted by it, though I personally doubt that. So I don't want to invalidate your personal experience. But I personally doubt that you're not going to have some impact. But the reason I doubt it is because in order, the reason I doubt it is because in my belief, in order for it to be rape or sexual assault, you would have had to not only want it, but it would have to be pushed on you after you've declared in a very aggressive way, I don't want this. So if somebody is touching you and you say, oh, I don't want this, and they go, too fucking bad, bitch. Okay, well, like, I don't know how. OK, that that's not going to impact you in some capacity. Maybe it doesn't. I don't want to project my feelings onto you. But same thing. If a guy at the club kissed me and then I said, oh, I'm not into that. And he said, I don't give a fuck. Well, OK, well, maybe I'd have a different relationship with that thing. And then I would call it sexual assault. But the initial process isn't assault to me because I wasn't assaulted. I was interacted with. Right. So if an old lady touches my hair. Yes, I could call it assault if I'm being a bitch. But I'm not going to do that, right? So again, I think this is like a really fair like assumption. But I don't want to live in a world personally where people who like um, go to like maybe they hug me or maybe they shake my hand. That there's not some understanding of also silent consent and like understanding of social cues and also speaking up for yourself. There's so many things that have to go into this. So for Brittany, in order for it to be rape or sexual assault or, you know, there has to be a, I don't want this, and somebody denies you access out or a way out or access to agency. Basically, they don't care about your input on the situation, right? So for me, it's not that I'm, I think of it as sexual assault that I'm tolerating. I just don't even think of it as sexual assault. Like, why would I even consider that sexual assault? That would be like considering your grandma and grandpa hugging you at family gatherings sexual assault because they kissed you on the cheek. 
Like, no, I'm not going to consider that sexual assault. That's like such a weird take, right? But it's possible that you might have that perspective. The comment goes on to say, in hindsight, well, I don't agree. Oh, no, sorry. I do find the situation interesting because I was in a very similar situation where I was cuddling, laying down with a woman in my same age group, 20 at the time. And I asked if she was okay that I kissed her. She immediately said, oh, my God, that was such a turnoff. In hindsight, well, I don't agree with her. That, me asking, did make it less natural or, on the other hand, let that situation turn me off, turn me, wait, hold on, my dyslexia is kicking in. While I don't agree with her that me asking did make it less natural, or on the other hand, let that one situation turn me into one of those guys that swear off talking to women because it seems like, oh, women are dangerous, right? It is an interesting perspective, right? So this commenter had the situation which I've had in my life where you're like, can I touch you? Can I kiss you? Can I do this? For some people, that's a turn on. For other people, it's a turn off. You have to know which bubble you're in and how you receive love and physical affection. For some people, being asked, can I kiss you, is a total turnoff. And we have to acknowledge their right to exist. And for some people, it's like a relief. Oh, thank you for asking me. That means so much to me. Thank you for asking me. I don't know if you remember, but a few years ago, lots of people were upset with Disney movies because the princesses didn't consent to being kissed. I think that's fair that some people might feel that way. I also think it's fair, right? that some people feel another way. So I think what's interesting is how we define words, can, how we communicate consent, how we have these conversations. And I think you need to know who you're dealing with. And I don't think people do. I think we just kind of wing it and hope it turns out good. You know what I mean? Feeling my tits. That's what I'm, that's, that was my fucking story. <laughs> no, he didn't ask if I wanted it. Uh, but somehow, you know, he had enough energy to ask the question, are you ticklish? Which I responded with, no, I'm not fucking ticklish. Uh, and that's what led to him feeling up my tits. Um, he will never understand, uh, that feeling when I realized this wasn't just a bunch of people hanging out on a couch together, a bunch of friends hanging out when it was inherently a sexual thing. And in that instead of just a bunch of friends on a couch together, I was being wanted for my body. Uh um, so this could be part of her asexuality, but this idea of like he'll never understand what it's like. Um, okay, I'm new to this community and I'm not really in it, but George and, and Dream are incredibly sexualized by their fan base. No offense. When you guys ship them together, when you put them in compromising situations, even when they play it off in videos, that is what sexual that that's what hap that's what's happening. So maybe I'm like the old person in the group, but I'm pretty sure that's what that means. And then on top of that, I listened to Dream's recounting of the situation and the event, and he sounded pretty like that it wasn't sexual, that he wasn't sexually active that night, that everything pre went pretty neutral. So Katie's making a lot of assumptions about people's intentions that I think is coming from her distortion. So I think she is mentally distorting things, but that doesn't mean that it's not true in her head. And it doesn't mean that there could have been a miscommunication because of it. And so I think, again, she does need to take responsibility for how she's perceiving things. But it doesn't mean that she didn't perceive them that way. So you can validate her for perceiving that way and then let her know, like, hey, I know you're feeling this way. I know it feels this way. I know, it, you know, you have this evidence in your head. But with peace and love, that wasn't his intention. It was a mistake. And I think there needs to be a real conversation about how this occurred in the first place. But I do think she's having a, a distortion, sort of, uh, something. I don't know. You know what I mean? I, I, I think that's uh, everything she's saying makes a lot of sense if you're operating under her perce uh, her perception. You know what I mean? MM says, at what point is setting a boundary a personal responsibility? It's always okay. Setting a boundary is always your responsibility. A boundary is only set by you. So in this context, when you're setting a personal boundary, it is always your responsibility. It is no one else's responsibility to read your mind or to have that kind of relationship with you. Now, here's the thing. You and I both know people that love to have their minds read. I even have friends in my life that go, can you guess why you're, I'm upset with you? No. And it's just how people operate. Some people love when their relationships guess how they're feeling. Some people love having their minds read. I don't, and I don't think you do, but some people do. And we have to validate those people without engaging. So I always tell my friends, if you're mad at me, you better tell me because I'm not playing a guessing game with you. 
okay? I love you so much, but it is very wrong to put me in a situation where I have to read your mind about something. You already know why you're mad at me. Just tell me. And I've gotten this from men and from women. This is not a gender thing. I've literally had grown men and grown women both tell me, can you guess why I'm upset with you? Um, no. But I can see why you think someone should do that, but I'm not going to do that. The boundary is for me. I love you, but I can't engage in this kind of behavior. I'm going to go. And the sad thing is, is that in a lot of situations, a lot of the world, right, it is operating off of guessing. We are figuring it out. We aren't perfectly in the know. We don't know things. We just believe a lot. We believe so much and we know so little, you know, so we're making it, it's going to be messy. It's going to be complicated. Okay. Um, Hevu says difference between Katie and George is that George empathizes with Katie while Katie goes full attack mode, taking no accountability. I 1000% agree. Now this could be because George is a little older. This could be because Katie's younger. It could be for a lot of things, but absolutely. George has so much empathy and so much maturity in relation to the situation. And Katie has none of those things because she's probably 19 and doesn't have them yet. She's young. She feels incredibly impacted. She feels like this is what her life is. It's very, it's very common, which is why she would need somebody in her life that's a little older and a little bit more mature and someone she could trust to be like, hey, we need to have a conversation about validating your perception, but not going after George because I don't think he intended this. Right. And I think that's so key. It's so key. Again, as somebody who's worked on her trauma, as somebody who's in the healthier stage of her life, as somebody who's basically 35, right, in a couple months, I know so many of my past selves, like when I was in my 20s and in my teens, I know what it's like to feel so much and to not have the tools to, you know, dissect it and observe it and really meditate on it. Okay. Soner says 19 is grown. I just disagree. I don't think 19 is grown. I think there are 80-year-olds who aren't grown. I think grown is a mindset. Grown is an understanding of self. Grown coincides with your physical age, but also your mental age. I know so many adults who are not grown. And 19 is certainly not a grown-up. You're barely even into adulthood. And so again, you can say 19 is grown, and that's a valid perception from your bubble. I disagree. Now what? Yes, she is of age. Yes, she needs to be held to an adult responsibility, but certainly not a maturity level. So again, legally, she's absolutely an adult and we should pay attention to that. But obviously, calling her a grown person, <laughs> sure, maybe. <laughs> I don't agree. Um, no, he would have never felt my uncomfort because he was too busy feeling something else that night. Yeah, she's definitely angry. And I can see that she's angry. I would love for someone to have the right conversation with her about dismantling that anger. <sighs> um, the amount of miscommunication, misinformation that is spreading is one of the biggest reasons. I feel like I just don't even... Captain says I still don't consider Georgia Dream grown people at by any metric. I agree with that. I don't think they're grown. When I look at them, I go, okay, I feel like 20 years older than these people. I'm about 10 years older, but I, I'm much more grown and I'm still not even as grown as my parents. When I look at my parents, I'm like, oh, they grown grown. When I look at me, I'm like, oh, I'm grown, but I'm not grown grown. My parents are real adults. Like my parents are real mature adults, like in a lot of capacities and like the ways that matter right? They all, we all have immaturity within us at all times in our life, right? Until we die. But my parents are like grown, grown. I'm like grown. And then like, I feel like Katie and Dream and Minecraft YouTubers, they're like big kids. A lot of people experience their 20s, like grown up teenagers with money, same into adulthood. So I just have a lot of leniency because I just see a lot of immaturity around me, especially in the streaming community. I do think these things keep us young. I feel so silly and goofy half the time because my job keeps me young. I know that I'm grown outside of my job, but I also know that I'm not grown, grown. You know what I mean? Okay. Really have anything to say anymore because, I mean, I was reading my own story on Twitter and I was reading it and I didn't even know it was my story they were talking about until they said my name because of how skewed everything's gotten. 
Uh, that's normal. That's normal, right? All content creators, that's just how it goes. She's got to understand like your story is never yours. Once you put it on the internet, the internet's going to decide who you are. I always tell the internet, like, if you hate me, I wish you would hate me for who I really am and not the version of me that lives in your head. But the internet's just going to hate you for the version of you in their head. And you got to accept that as a content creator. And if you can't handle that, you better get off the internet, sis. You better get off the internet. Um, it's like this huge game of telephone where each time it gets a little bit more off, but no one's acknowledging that they could have heard wrong. And they're yelling what they heard as loud as possible. Okay, people saying mm -hmm. I'm trying to ruin a man's career because he tickled me or like, or especially he did not rape me either. Like it's it's so important to hear what I'm saying. Mm. Um, people getting their info from TikTok comment sections. Like it is. I think that's true. And that's very normal. I saw a lot of people distorting the facts. I even saw YouTubers that I like and respect uh, getting the facts wrong on exactly what happened. But that's normal. It's just it's going to happen, right? It is insane. And I half of me thinks it's because they're not neurodivergent enough to hyper focus and research everything. I have been listening to so much content in regards to this. Twitter has been sending me so many clips, so many things to listen to. It's a lot. And most people aren't going to take the time to do it because that's just how it is. You know what I mean? That's just how it is. So... I really do encourage everyone to watch my response on it. Like, either read my response. Now, okay, she is trying to, um, playlist says, I mean, she's trying to ruin his career. Now, okay, she is trying to ruin the career of someone she perceives as a predator. That's true. The question is, is there a way for Katie not to, or for Katie to realize he's not a predator? And can you sexually assault somebody without intending to? I would argue by everyone's definition of sexual assault in this conversation, yes. If Katie is describing that that is sexual assault, then I would say that, I would say that you can sexually assault somebody without meaning to, which means it doesn't matter to some extent, but it could matter, but it might not matter. You know what I'm saying? It depends on the context. And if sexual assault doesn't matter, then what does that mean? But obviously, if you go around saying, like, this person sexually assaults people, then, yeah, you better destroy his career. But also, you better be sure that that's what happened. And that is the conundrum. She's really sure something happened that I'm not totally convinced happened. Now, I know the touching happened. I'm not convinced it was sexual assault. And that's the dilemma. Are you destroying the career of a man who mistook some signals and mistook social cues? And are you ruining his life because of a misunderstanding that's kind of cruel bro that's so cruel but also I don't think Katie has anyone around her to give her the wisdom and if she's only getting advice from people in her peer group it's going to be even more confusion like it's even more confusing it, it's just even more confusing if the people in her peer group all agree with this how is she going to have the nuance or the tools to think of it differently like, how is she even going to have that conversation? You only know what you know, and that's all you know. It's like, think about conservatives that think trans people are grooming kids. Why do they think that? Because it's all they know. If Katie only knows this, how could she ever think to know something else? And you know what's even scarier is if conservatives realize trans people weren't grooming kids, and if Katie realized George didn't sexually assault her, they would have to, one, be embarrassed, two, face themselves, Three, apologize. And four, pop a bubble that would transform how they're processing reality and actually recognize like, oh my God, I got something so horribly wrong. And most people, 99% of the population is going to have a very hard time doing that. Introspection is an incredibly big deal for people. It changes your life. It radically moves you as a person. And most people are perfectly fine being who they are. So expecting Katie to be different than who she is it's like expecting Trump to be different than who he is. Why would they ever change when it doesn't make sense in their bubble? So on Twitter, watch the original video. I don't fucking care if you can't stand the fact that I'm- And I did rewatch her video in full today because I just wanted to see if I missed something or if maybe I misheard something. And so I just, I have that fresh in my mind as well. Crying. At least if you're gonna say something, if you're gonna hate me, that's fine. Watch my full video and then choose to. Like, 
it's just there's a lot i do there is something i'm fully owning up to and and clearing up right now the screenshot uh that i my mm. recent response on twitter this is the only kind of like response thing i'm gonna give uh i will acknowledge that was a complete miscommunication there's a screenshot i said was from his friend that wasn't there for the assault mentioned our ages and acknowledged you know the situation was weird it's a real screenshot what i got wrong and what was miscommunicated was who it was from it was actually from instead of the guy who left or wasn't there for the assault it was from the girl mm. who wasn't there for the assault who wasn't there for the assault that's even weirder okay super chat from kenzie thank you so much says she said that people heard her wrong according to her but she didn't tell her whole story just added a few facts yeah, I think that's the problem is that she she adding in the details of the assault three three the third time around is pretty bad. Like that's pretty bad. So she told the story once, she clarified in text messages and tweets, and then now this is our third time and she's now telling us more details. I think that's see nobody in her life knew to give her advice on how to do it. Is it a lie? It just doesn't look good, right? And again, I don't want to be mad at this 19-year-old. I see the way I'm, I'm very lenient on people for making horrible mistakes based off of the only tools they have in their arsenal while still understanding that like, hey, you can't just do this. But I also think everybody in the situation has to be also mature. And if people take away Georgia sponsorships or stop working with George because of this, I also think that's a fault on their end for allowing Katie to to control the narrative when I think it's pretty clear to any mature adult in the circumstance, like, hey, this was obviously miscommunication. I'm very sorry it happened. We're not going to stop working with George. But the fact that they stopped working with him makes sense from a brand perspective because like, eh, this is too messy. Also, George maybe isn't the most like self-aware person to stop interacting with these types of people. But also, Katie never would have been there that night if she wasn't someone's like plus one and a friend of a friend. So again, there's so much that plays into this where I'm sure everyone involved would have loved for that night never to happen, which I think says a lot. But the fact that the grown mature adults in the arena or allowing a lot of this to be twisted as a narrative, I think is also where humans are at right now in terms of our socializing. Right. Like it's just where we are in terms of like in terms of, you know what I mean? It's I get it from a company's perspective, but also I think it's sort of like where we're at. It is what it is. Right. Um, Spooky with a super chat. Let's go. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you so much. You know. OK. Um, Which I acknowledge is frustrating that I got that wrong. And I didn't really. By the way, they both got things wrong. George got the wristband thing wrong with the 21 and over thing. She got the text message wrong. People got things wrong. And by the way, I love Abin Preach, but they even made a video with not the full information because there was a follow-up video I don't think they watched in which they also said Katie lied about having the wristband on, which I think we all thought until George clarified that actually was her friend. So we also like all spread misinformation because we didn't know any better. So I'm glad that both her and George were owning up to that misinformation. I think that actually means her and him and Katie might actually just be good people who are severely under mm, processing and miscommunicating because of their own trauma and their own issues and their own knowledge. Like think about it. They're both admitting to fault. They're both admitting to miscommunication. They're both telling the same story. They're, they're just telling it from completely different perspectives because they processed it literally differently. And I think that happens. Think about your own childhood. How do you and your parents have a different memory of your own life? Because you're seeing it from a completely different perspective. And then the question is, what really happened? Well, memory is fickle. Studies show that memory is a very confusing thing. So the confusing part is how do you move on from an acknowledgement that it's not going to be perfectly remembered, but at least we can remember the part that we felt undignified or the part where we felt unheard or the part where we felt like this impacted me severely. Mostly you want an acknowledgement and then you want to move on because most people aren't out here being predators. Most people are not trying to fucking come into your bedroom window at night. If that was the case, we'd have a very different society. Now, depending on the bubble you're in, that might be more likely in your area. But generally speaking, Obviously, given the way things go at VidCon parties and things go with these social situations, most people aren't out here getting ready to, con you know, connive their way into, you know, your pants. 
Toast with the super chat says also her friends who bought, brought a drunk girl who's just graduated high school to a hotel room with a bunch of guys in their mid-20s are probably not capable of giving her the wisdom she needs right now. Yeah, probably fucking not. You know, probably fucking not. You know what I mean? Uh, wait, Brittany, he didn't say that. He didn't get info wrong. I'm not sure what you mean by that, but George in his first video did get information wrong and then Abba repeated that information in comment sections because Abba's a friend of mine and I saw it and he said she wore a bracelet saying she was 21 and that was wrong. So we all saw that in the first video. George had to make a correction on his second video about it. So I don't know if you've watched as much. Uh, he absolutely got that wrong. But he had to correct himself. Guys, don't be simps. George literally made a correction in his second video saying, hey, I got this wrong. It was someone in the group, not Katie. So, you know, he absolutely had to correct himself. You guys are wrong. Sorry. I realized I got it wrong until after I posted it a long time, a, a long time after. And obviously when I don't come out and say, oh, I got that wrong, when he's the one to come out and say she got that wrong, it cr makes that into the biggest deal. Um, I got a message from the girl that actually sent the text and was like, it was a while after I already posted my response and was like, you kind of mixed up who the text was from, but I'm sure it won't be a big deal because it was only one of the minor things you said mm -mm. Uh, and everything else you said in that response was way more important, uh, which obviously we see. MM says, who got her drunk and watched it? That's the real question. They're who initiated the problem. Well, the dilemma is, look, it's pretty common and normal. And even Dream said this in a video. He said that, um, he said that, look, it's not very uncommon for 18-year-olds to drink or 17-year-olds or even 16-year-olds, right? You guys are getting way too much. I'm putting down a boundary. You're arguing semantics. We're moving on. We're moving on from the George who said what thing. The fact that George even had to correct it means that there was a miscommunication. Okay, so chat, everybody relax. So again, okay, um, wait, what was I saying? Fuck, I got distracted. <sighs> oh, Dream said that he's never been to a party where people like go up to the 18 year old and they're like, okay, you need to give me the beer. Like you can't drink. And that's true. I've been to so many parties in my life, like my whole life. And you, you're not going to take the beer away from the 18-year-old. You're not going to take it away from the 16-year-old. It's just like a weird, it's a weird thing to go to a party and do that. You know what I mean? But so I understand Dream's perspective. Like why would Dream tell Katie not to drink? She's an adult. If she wants to make that mistake, she can make that mistake. But like no one's going to do that. And I agree with Dream in that regard. Like I'm not going to take your drink away. You know what I mean? I appreciate the passion, chat. I appreciate the passion. Being, uh, that was not the case. But I do acknowledge and own up to the fact I completely was wrong about that. But again, I'm saying, even though it wasn't from his friend, it was yet another person in the hotel room that acknowledged the weirdness. Yes, it wasn't from that guy in the hotel room. It was from the girl in the hotel room. Like, I still think the situation- But didn't she say, hold on, I think I missed that. Didn't she say who wasn't a witness to the assault? So what is she even messaging her about? Because it was only one of the minor things you said uh, and everything else you hold said on. in that response was way more important. Which obviously we've seen uh, that was not the case, but I do acknowledge and own up to the fact I completely was wrong about that. Okay. But again, I'm saying, even though it wasn't from his friend, it was yet another person in the hotel room okay. that acknowledged the weirdness. Yes, it wasn't from that guy in the hotel room. It was from the girl in the hotel room. Okay. Like I still think the situation, the screenshot. It's not a fake screenshot as well. It's a real screenshot. I still think it adds to the fact of, you know, people acknowledged it. Um, yeah, I mean, to be fair, it does add, but it also could mean nothing. You know what I mean? Because, like, some people just check in neutrally. Like, if my friends were cuddling with someone, I'd be like, hey, guys, are we going, like, will you just check in, at, like, neutrally? Like, hey, guys, you good? Is everybody okay? You know what I mean? Is everyone feeling okay? Well, in that case, like, you know what I mean? Like, you you could be okay and it could be fine. Right? But it doesn't mean that they necessarily, like, they're checking in maybe because they saw something weird or maybe because they just wanted to check in to say, hey, I just hope you're okay. 
And that's normal. That's okay, right? Like that's kind of nor I mean, what I'm saying is like there could be a normal like, hey, I'm just checking in. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, cool. But also it could go the other way. Do you know what I'm saying? Also, the fact that I said I was freshly 18, which is something a lot of people are mad at. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think you guys were being weird about that. I don't know why everyone was like, Brittany, Brittany. They kept saying freshly 18. I mean, she was freshly 18. I don't know why you're being weird. If you, if a year ago, dating, fucking her would have been illegal because she was underage, then she is freshly 18. I don't know why you're being weird about that. Okay? I think you're like reading into it too much. She was technically freshly 18. About when in reality, I was 18 and five months old. Okay, that's pretty freshly 18, guys. I don't know why you're acting weird about it. So six months ago, she would have been considered a minor and illegal to fuck. That's freshly 18. I don't know why you're being fucking weird. My bad. Uh, what I meant to say in that original stream where I said I was freshly 18, I said I was freshly 18 and just out of high school. What it I makes him look like a groomer? Yes, for sure. But I do, again, think that that is also true. Like, she could have been freshly 18 and from her perspective... He's targeting her because of it. Or it's just actually a fact, freshly 18. Like, you know what I mean? It could have been true either way, right? Mantis says it's weird, Brittany, because it's coded language. It's all coded language. It's all perspective of, 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 of um, bubbles, right? Oh, my God. Did you see that guy, the, the, um, the Boy Scout leader, he's gay and he works at a summer camp for boys. Did you guys see that? You see how you see how someone can just say like, yeah, why are you saying it like that? Why are you saying it like that? You're insinuating because he's gay and working with boys, it's bad. But also, right, could be kind of worrying because you wouldn't put male camp uh, people in charge of girls. So maybe there is something to that. And then maybe there is something to saying, oh, you're freshly 18. And maybe there's nothing to it. I was on a panel once where this person admitted they were dating somebody who was freshly 18. Gasp. Okay. And they knew it was weird, but they were 10 years older and they felt like they never connected with someone so much in their life. And I was like, that's funny that you're with somebody who six months ago would have been illegal to fuck. I think that's weird. But also, I think it's pretty common in society because it happens apparently all the time. So, I don't know, saying freshly 18 is to indicate a power dynamic. I don't think that's weird from a girl who feels she was assaulted. Like, I don't know why you're acting like that's a weird thing to say. She already feels like she's assaulted. The freshly 18 part is to indicate the weirdness. In the same way, if I was talking about an age gap relationship, I'd be like, why are you 25 years older than that girl you're fucking? Because it's weird. But also, she's an adult. She can consent to it. So again, like... Is it that weird? Is it that weird? What I meant to say. Again, put your brain in her brain. Put your brain in her brain. Empathize with her and then decide how she got there and then dismantle it. Same with George. Put your brain in his brain, then figure out how he got there and then dismantle it. Was I was 18 and freshly out of high school. I just put it in front of the wrong thing. And also he didn't know her age, which is true. So it doesn't matter from George's perspective. It just matters from Katie's, Katie's perspective, not George's, because she says he knew her age, but I don't think he did. And from his saying he didn't, I believe him. But this is from her perspective. Remember, we're trying to get into her head, right? And I do acknowledge that. Uh, but once again, I feel like the idea is still the same, whether it's freshly 18 or freshly out of high school, because I had just graduated a few weeks earlier. The idea is still there. It's still there. And these are the things, I'm sorry, I do get- Mantis says, I mean, she wanted to appear more innocent to make him look more predatory. Guys, she thinks she's been, okay. So either you are accusing Katie of being incredibly manipulative or you are denying the fact that she could have perceived this as sexual assault. She, I believe she 100% believes this is sexual assault. 1000% believes it. And that's the question. The question isn't if she's lying or being manipulative because you don't know that. You can't know if Katie's being manipulative any more than you could know George Predator tries and targeted Katie. How would you know that Katie is doing this to fuck with George any more than George didn't target Katie? Right? 
Like, you don't know that. Don't read her mind just because that's your bias. I don't know if George targeted Katie. I don't know if Katie's targeting George. So instead, I'm going to actually see them from their obvious point of views, which is she genuinely feels like she's sexually assaulted. He genuinely feels like it was consensual. And that is the more likely story than any conspiracy theory I've heard out there. Okay? It is actually probably more likely that that is what's true. Okay? And if that's the case, both of those things can be true at once. But we cannot read these people's minds. Frustrated with that because people are mad at me saying that I'm a liar because of these things instead of acknowledging the fact that he fucking admitted to doing what he did to me. Like, and we're worried about the fact that I, was, I said I was freshly 18 when I meant to say I was freshly out of high school. Reg says she can believe it and still make it sound worse on purpose. Well, I think that's also a point of human beings try to protect themselves the best, right? Like human beings do try to protect themselves. So George will try to protect himself and make himself look the best. And she will try to protect herself and make her look the best. And I think if you're denying that, you're being incredibly biased. And that's so human of you. But there's no way that both George, Dream, and Katie didn't try to make themselves look the best possible. And if you don't believe that, then you're denying your own proclivities to do the same. No reasonable, rational person would tell this story and not in some way make themselves look better. That's just not how humans work, you know? It's just... It, I'm... Again, and... Now, she is saying the reason why people think she's being manipulative, not saying I do, but many do, is because her friend group has been proven to be so. Now, that is more than possible, but George... And you know why I'm being soft on Katie, or softer, is because George told me to be. George told me in his video, and I believe him, that he doesn't think Katie's being malicious, but he does think her friends are. And I believe George. So if you believe George, you should fucking listen to him. And I agree with him. I think Katie is genuinely having a moment and lots of people are taking advantage of her in this moment. And I do think her friends are probably being intentionally or unintentionally probably pretty malicious. But George said, don't go after Katie. He said, hey, I think she is being manipulated by her friends. And so I'm, I'm going to take that into consideration. That doesn't mean we can't hold Katie accountable. That doesn't mean we can't have a conversation about George. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean. I just, I shouldn't man. be getting frustrated, no. but hey, um, Katie, it's just it's upsetting we all seeing love you. him admit to it. Um... And that not being enough. Um, and for the people saying he was drunk too, so he didn't consent. Mm. I didn't fucking feel up his tits. What did he not consent to? I would like to make it clear. There was no reciprocation in any sexual act. The sexual act that happened was not reciprocated. Um, it's, it's, so, that's a, that's a, so that's a very logical point, but it's not a very nuanced point. So when people say he also didn't consent, we're saying there's a possibility of doing things when drunk that you don't realize is happening because you're drunk. Like taking keys and driving a car, which is why you don't get like murder charges, you get manslaughter, right? So she's right that nothing happened to him, but his body and what he does drunk could also be part of the alcohol, right? And so that's what I think is important here is like when you're drunk you do stupid shit okay sometimes you forget the sink is running sometimes you put something in the oven and forget it's there sometimes you're touchy-feely with people in a way you shouldn't be because you're drunk and then people have to be like hey don't get drunk if you can't control yourself you know what I mean also do not repeat comments in my chat it really fucking ticks me so I if I see one more comment I've seen the same comment four times already if I see it another time I'm gonna ban you it's the same verbatim. If you're copying and pasting your comments, I'm going to ban you. Thank you. Okay, so see, that's what Katie should have done. George, don't touch me. I like you, but don't touch me. Okay, you're a nice friend. Don't touch me. But she can't because having that tool is one, your personality, but two, the relationship you're having with communication, right? Better with the super chat says, why do you ban anyone who disagrees with you? Ugh, don't, don't, 
don't be a bitch, okay? Don't be a bitch. Now, see, now you will be banned. See, I will not tolerate this. I'm working very hard here to be very nice. But don't troll me, bros. That's a troll comment. Why are you banning anyone who disagrees with you? Don't, don't be a bitch, okay? So, again, with peace and love, okay? Hold on, I gotta ban this person because they've repeated the same comment like seven times. Jesus, you're so annoying. Okay, let's keep going. The only thing he could have not consented to was him putting his own hand on my tits. Oh, this is the same argument for autism and neurodivergency. When we say, oh, I wonder if they did that because they're autistic, we're saying that because they did it, they were drunk or autistic, they didn't have the same intentionality as somebody who isn't. Do you get what I'm saying? It's not to make an excuse. It's actually to say out loud like, oh, they did that because they're autistic, meaning they didn't mean to be rude. It's just that's how their brains process information. So like, why didn't that girl hug me back? Oh, she's she has autism. Oh, what? So she can't hug people? Well, some people with autism don't like to be touched. Oh, so what? Like she doesn't think I'm good enough to touch? And it's like, no, you're making this about you. And we're saying their autism tends to be over like they don't want to be overstimulated so touching you is overstimulation it's like people don't get it same with being drunk we're not saying george we're saying because george was drunk he might have misread social cues because george might be autistic he might have misread social cues we're saying instead of assuming he's a villain and instead of assuming he's a villain he might just be misunderstanding something which, to be fair to Katie, she seems to be misunderstanding something. You see how I'm trying to be so nice to Katie in the same way I'm being so nice to George? And it's because there's obviously a misunderstanding. As an almost 35-year-old woman, I am telling you right now, these misunderstandings will happen. They will continue to happen. You know how many of my conservative friends and family will be like, do you hate me because you won't vote Republican? I'm like, can you please stop making this about you? But people do that because there's a misunderstanding. They make it about them. And I cannot fault them. Humans seem to be this way. Humans gonna human, as we say on this channel. I didn't touch him after that. I didn't touch him sexually before that. There was nothing for him to content or consent to sexually. Um, I understand that could be an argument, mm. not for this situation. Good point, but she forgot the actual reason we're saying he's drunk, which is what I meant, right? The way I explained it. She's making a good point, but see, it's not a fully formed thought because she doesn't know. So I hope she watches my video and hears me say that because that's what we're talking about. Um, the hypocrisy that has surrounded this situation is fucking insane. I'll get into just the blame. Ooh, great question. Derange says, how possible is it to get Katie to see things from George's perspective and that it might have been a misunderstanding. Okay, I wonder this too, because this is where I think I excel in my work, is that if I can understand a person and see them a little bit, I usually can communicate them in this way. I think if I talked to Katie alone and she understood that like I fully validate her perception, but also let's talk about dismantling and making sure our perception is 1000% accurate to the best of our ability. I think that that's, that it will tell me. I don't know. Right now, we're not seeing a Katie that's alone. We're not seeing a Katie that's not filtered through her friends. We're not seeing a Katie that I think has all the tools. The fact that she didn't give another example during that example of Drunk George means she doesn't have all the tools. So I think if I gave her the tools, then I would know. But I, I just don't know what she's capable of figuring out. And look, most adults aren't. Reminder that like all of us only know what we know. So I wonder what her response would be if she knew something more. But she's certainly not going to get it from haters on the internet. And no offense, if you're writing her bad messages, if you're writing her that she's a bad person, she doesn't need to listen to you. She should block you. If you are leaving mean comments in Katie's threads, she should block you. Why in the world would anyone listen to you? If that's the way you give criticism, is to tear somebody down, is to insult them, then like, yeah, she doesn't need to listen to you. And that's it. You know, so hopefully she is somebody who she respects or is within reason who can talk to her and they can give each other better tools. You know? of me, uh, that is insane shit. Um, but the hypocrisy. And same with George. Everyone who's writing him horrible messages saying he's a groomer or a bad person, he should ban them.
of I just can't do anything uh, in this situation. I mean, I came about it out about it publicly, and I was called an attention-seeking slut. So then, I'm yeah, if anyone called this woman an attention-seeking slut, like I think, I don't think I think less of you. I do. I'm like, fine. I privated all my things so I can receive followers, receive clout. You know, I couldn't grow from this. I've privated everything, so I can't gain that. Uh, and then I'm told I'm hiding uh, f from everything and that I should go public. I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I cry don't on my to the stream chat. because I'm scared and I'm talking about my assault. I cry and then I'm told I'm embarrassing, that I'm doing it for attention, that I'm a pick me, that I'm dramatic. But if I sat there and I didn't cry, I know I would have been called a liar. So she's right. No matter what she did, she never would have pleased everyone, which is why you can't do that as a content creator. She should never have thought, guys. It does. There are people here that think Bill Cosby wasn't a rapist, or Weinstein wasn't a rapist. You can have that belief system. Whatever. They're both in prison for their, or were imprisoned for their crimes. Okay, fine. And by the way. You can come back. Maybe there's some redemption there. Probably not. Okay. But like, yeah, she, of course, that's the problem. She's, she doesn't get that no matter what she said, the internet would have found a reason to hate her. Because that's how it is. That's, that's the chore of being a content creator. The worst part about being a content creator is like no matter what you say, someone will find a reason to hate you for it and you got to be okay with it. You got to block them and move the fuck on. Okay? So she's right. But also... Okay, she might be missing some context here. Heartless, heartless, you know, a sociopath. You can't do anything right in these situations. And it's fucking insane. The only thing she could have done that was more right is probably not bring it to the internet until she talked to a professional, like a therapist or somebody who could guide her. And by the way, even though your therapist says probably don't talk about it online, even grown up adults still do it. Even people in their 30s and 40s go against what their therapist recommends and post their shit online because they feel like it's their story to tell. Um, for people saying take legal action, do you know the odds of winning an assault case? Like, there's a reason. There's a, one out of three girls are assaulted in their lives, okay? There's a reason so many of them don't come out. Of one in 20 boys are also assaulted, at least in Australia, I think. So boys also get assaulted. But yes, like I think she's right. She probably wouldn't get a legal case. So taking it to the cops makes no sense. But also I think that this also wouldn't make sense to the cops because of all of the circumstances involved. It would have been thrown out because of the details, right? Not because it – because again, like if a judge or a jury saw all the context, it sounds – you can have it be sexual assault in her bubble and not have it be something that gets legally pushed, right? Because again, guys, like we break people's consent all the time for their betterment. Doctors hold you down and give you medication that you don't want because they know you need it, even if you and your state of mind don't know it. Like we send kids to bed whether they want to go to bed or not. Like we have things, like I said, legally spitting on someone is assault, but like even if you're in the bedroom with someone, you could be with your spouse and decide the sex you had yesterday was consensual, but the sex you have today isn't, whether it's true or not. And the reason it's so difficult to figure this out in court is because it's a he said, she said, or he said, he said, she said, she said. It is very difficult. And what's more than that, even with all of the details she lays out, it gets even more complicated because there was drinking involved and there was witnesses and no one stopped anything. It just looks bad for everybody involved. It just looks bad. And probably because... It could have been solved with a, oh, actually, I'm not into that. Oh, my bad. Because look, if she had said, hey, George, I'm not into that. And then George said, well, fuck you, bitch, and did it anyways. Well, first of all, that's crazy. Then there's a witnesses who either were going to let it happen or not. And then everybody's in trouble. You know what I mean? And given the circumstance, Katie had opportunities to leave. She could have left at any moment, at any time, could have said her stomach hurt hurt, could have said she's too drunk, could have said anything, and she never chose to leave, even when her friends left. Now, the details of that are getting a little blurred, so I'm not sure exactly what happened. But ultimately, court systems, are, they're not going to do much with a case like this. I mean, we can't even figure out this case. 
So again, it sounds like they both had a perception of what happened that night and both are pretty valid through their perception. But ultimately, if George did not intend to sexually assault her, if that wasn't his intention, then I think we need to move on and we need to say then it was a miscommunication and it was a problem that is going to continue to happen because it's just how life goes. It's just how life goes. There's going to be miscommunications and you don't have to internalize this as the worst thing ever for the rest of your life because it wasn't his intention. Now, if you can prove to me it was his intention to target her or he's got some sort of like reputation for doing this to people over and over and over again, then maybe we could have that conversation. About this, the system, you would like to believe that it's always for you. The amount of fucking injustice that happens with our system is insane. It's She's absolutely right. insane. It is insane. It's true. And you sit here and see someone come out about their story and your immediate thing is, well, take it up with the law. Like that will serve any justice. What is justice? I think that's a really difficult question. I think justice would be um, for the most reality to be understood. But I don't think that's going to happen because everyone is too heated and too emotional about the, circum the circumstance, even the viewers. Um... So, fuck you. Um, um. Now, obviously, I can understand her anger in this one. She's done the crying one already, so now she's in her anger. I can understand that perspective. People, even just the hypocrisy of people not being able to watch my video, me coming out about my assault, but being able to hear it from his mouth. Yeah, but then vice versa, right? She didn't look up his video, but she wanted people to watch hers. I think there's a problem there. Uh, but they don't want to watch mine because I'm too dramatic and because I'm crying too much. Yeah, I agree. I think if you didn't watch either of their videos, you should shut your fucking mouth. Or say out loud, I didn't watch both those videos. Uh, but they'll watch his. Uh, I think it's insane. The amount of people telling me how I felt that night. The amount of people telling me how I felt. Or the amount of... Yeah, I think that's bullshit. I don't think you can tell people how they feel. Right? Because, like, it's a feeling. It's happening. Right? I think her feelings are valid. They're not always reasonable. Feelings are always valid because they're happening. They're not always reasonable. That's a very specific, specific distinction. She's making the mistake of my feelings are valid, therefore they're reasonable. And I'm saying just because your feelings are valid doesn't mean they're reasonable. That doesn't mean her feelings didn't occur. It didn't mean she wasn't afraid. It didn't mean she wasn't anxious. It didn't mean any of those things. People believe Which is why George and Dream both apologized to Katie, because they acknowledged she felt that way, even if they disagreed that it was unreasonable, which is why Dream and George look very well respected in this situation, because they're literally saying like, like, they're literally saying, well, yeah, like, we can understand how she felt that way. That obviously wasn't our intention. That's kind of wonderful to see somebody say that, you know? From his mouth, how I felt instead of just fucking hearing me say how I felt. It's insane. It's insane. Um, and the fact that if I have inconsistencies in my story, which I do, and I'm not gonna say I don't, I'm like remembering the night of my assault and I'm sorry, but the thing that I really remembered is the assault. I didn't remember you know, like if a person who wasn't there for the assault left at a certain time, I'm, I remembered my assault. I will acknowledge that there are inconsistencies. But when I have inconsistencies in my story and I address them and I acknowledge it, my whole story's out. It's in the trash. Yeah, I would love for her. To, I hope she gets to it, that she responds, you know, because look, sometimes victims of assault will pretend it didn't happen and will keep talking to their assaulters because they don't want, because again, like, People who perpetrate abuse don't always think of themselves as abusers. Most of the time they don't. So it's very easy to keep being around your abuser because there's sort of a part of them that you love, right? A part of them that's like a person, like with Shelby and Wilbur. Like there's a part of Wilbur that she probably really loved, but overall I think he was pretty fucking toxic and therefore by proxy like pretty abusive. And then she was toxic enough to stay in the relationship and Katie was toxic enough to think that she could handle this situation without really taking responsibility for her actions. And, you know, all of them are all pretty young and silly and immature. And, you know what I mean? There's so much that goes into this.
So a part of me is like, it's going to be messy. That's what your youth is for. It's for being fucking messy. That's why when adults are this messy moving forward, you're like, why are you still so messy into your 30s and 40s, dude? You shouldn't be this messy into your 30s and 40s. But I do kind of expect this messiness from people in their 20s and younger because you're learning. You know, you're learning. You're learning how to be an adult. You're learning boundaries. Your brain is forming. You're learning who you are. But yeah, if you're still this messy into your 30s and 40s, whoo, that's interesting. That's interesting. And I'm seen as a liar for inconsistencies. But when he has an inconsistency or when, you know, even the 21 Brisbane thing saying I had a band that said I was, you know, when he has an inconsistency and I. But he 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 took responsibility for that inconsistency and he corrected himself just like she took the responsibility. But of course, women generally get more hate on the Internet and larger. I don't think you can deny that George has more support than she does i think right now from everything i've seen on the internet i've seen more support for george than for her so i would say he's doing fairly well in comparison but also it's because people are also personally emotional about these situations look i've been falsely accused by a woman it sucks and it sucks when it comes from a woman because you're like what are you doing there's lots of reasons people do it and it's mostly a problem with themselves even if you do everything right you can still get raped. Even if you do everything right, you can still be falsely accused. And that is the dangerous part about being alive or being a person or socializing. It fucking sucks. And it is just the reality of being an adult in the world. So that's why you have to do your due diligence, which is why in my 20s, I learned all of those fucking lessons so I could be better in my 30s and 40s. The dilemma is that most people don't learn those lessons or like you're just going to double down and keep it going anyways. So anyways, when you're young, learn your lessons so you can be better as adults. This is why I say, like, she's not a grown-up. She's only 19. 19 is not grown. She legally can't even, like, drink or, like, do everything that an illegal adult can do. She can't even fucking run for president, bro. Okay? Grown means grown means grown. And I'm not even grown-grown. I'm just grown. But I'm not even grown-grown. My parents are grown-grown. You feel me? prove it wrong have video footage of it it's still used against me to this day his inconsistencies are taken as the holy fucking grail and as the truth even when proved wrong and when i have an inconsistency my whole fucking everything i've said uh is gone it's just the way i've been treated is fucking insane uh, and i'm not afraid to say it's look mo some of the biggest content creators in the space are all defending george just in terms of numbers george absolutely is getting more more support than katie george might have gotten massive hate on your side of the internet but in terms of numbers and maybe you're great you guys are missing it because you're not in any of the communities i'm in asmin came out in defense of him papa gut destiny abba and preach these are people with millions of views they all came out in defense of George. Ultimately, in terms of numbers, no matter how much you want to play this, I doubt Katie is having huge players defending her in this way. Though she could, and maybe I'm missing it, I'm waiting to see. But like some of the biggest streamers are literally coming out to support George. So he lost some things. He definitely had some problems. But in my space on the internet, I've seen nothing but hate for Katie. Right? Now, obviously, Mr. Beast removing George from his sponsorships makes sense because that's a business deal. At the end of the day, Mr. Beast has millions of dollars on the line and no offense to George, he's not worth protecting. That's a business decision. I don't know how Mr. Beast feels as a person, right? So if you're on a space on Twitter, like in a bubble where you never see support for George, I'm in a bubble where I'm only seeing support for George and hate for Katie. So just, you know, keep that in mind. We're all seeing different things. It's fucking insane. Hey. Uh, Shout out Tom Fullery in the chat. Bubbles, let's go. Because I do acknowledge I have inconsistencies, you know. If George's close friends left him over this, I'm not sure how close of a friend they were. But also, if you're a person who doesn't have friends with, you know, look, I have an inner circle that even if they did the most horrific crimes, I would turn them into the cops and visit them in prison. Not everybody cares about their friends in that way. So if George's friends left him over this, then that's probably good for George. In my opinion. In my opinion. No, uh, but it is, um, anyways, 
And I also understand the idea that we have different point of views. Obviously, mm. we're going to have different point of views of that night. Otherwise, what happened wouldn't have happened. Um, I don't mm. understand believing the one point of view over the other. And again, mm. even the fact that we have different point of views. The one thing we agree on, the one thing that we agree on is the fact that he touched me and didn't ask if I was okay with it. That's what... Interesting. Okay. What I came out about, and that's what he agreed with. I know, I know people that think President Trump, when he touched women in, in the um, pageants, is a sexual assaulter. But Bill Clinton, who was president, giving having oral sex done to him by an intern wasn't a sexual predator. Do you understand that? I know grown adults who believe President Trump is a sexual predator, but Bill Clinton, President Bill Clinton isn't. <clears throat> Hold on. <clears throat> I'm running out of moisture. <clears throat> oh my God, hello. Because that's how their bubble perceives favoritism. They trust Bill Clinton, so he's not a predator. They don't trust Trump. He's a predator. Isn't that interesting? Right? Raiders Cat member for 15 months says, how does Indiana think? What does Indiana think about all this? Indiana thinks the internet is bubbling hard, bro. Okay. So for Katie, she's right. George touched her. George is saying he did. And I'm saying both of these things are true, but unless he intended to predatorize her, unless he intended to hurt her, unless he intended to literally harm her, then it was a miscommunication. And this is why miscommunication hurts because it, it, it breaks the barrier of expectation of behavior, <clears throat> right? It is true that Katie could, felt, could feel like this is sexual assault, and George could feel like it wasn't. And that's why I'm saying because he didn't intend to target her, because he didn't intend to harm her, he made a mistake and she didn't speak up and correct him. He was under no obligation to ask her prior. She's under no, uh, no, uh, well, she shouldn't assume that, okay. Bubbles differ. In some bubbles, you ask consent before touching. And in some bubbles, you don't ask for consent with verbalization. You go to one base, two base, three base, four base. You have to know which bubble you're in. This is like, I'm so sorry. Like, this is so important. Both of these things are true. He touched Katie. She got touched. But unless he was targeting her, he misread the signals, which means that's a great opportunity to say, oh, George, I, I'm not into this. And he's like, oh my God, my bad. And again, if George in that situation situation went, I don't care, bitch, burp, burp, then there's a problem. Okay, so like, again, with peace and love, this is normal. This is adulting. Adulting is realizing like we're not all the same. Your reality isn't other people's realities. Your bubble isn't other people's bubbles. Do you know in some places the drinking age is 16? The age of consent is 14. The age of consent is 12. It's not great. You and I might disagree, but the world doesn't revolve around you, Karen. So again, it is possible for Katie to have been touched without her consent. And it's possible for George to not have intended to do this to her. And this is what I think actually happened. So it is on both of them to recognize and realize, okay, next time, don't touch me like that. I didn't like it. And next time, George can make the decision to decide if he's going to ask prior, which I recommend. I would recommend to George, who might be autistic and not be, you know, couldn't read body language, to say, hey, um, can I touch you? That might be a tool George wants to utilize. He doesn't have to because not everyone around the world works like that. But Katie's making it sound like objectively everyone is a horrible sexual predator if they make a move and it's wrong. And I'm saying I don't agree. I think a sexual predator is a sexual predator. And I think most humans are little evolved animals who are taught to hit on women and men, sometimes incorrectly because they're in a different fucking bubble. If you go to church, yeah. You might want to ask a woman's father before taking her out on a date. If you live in a secular bubble, what does her father have to do with anything? 
everybody works differently. I mean, <laughs> it's, I don't know. Um, oh, and again, the fact of him saying I painted him in a bad light. I'm talking about my assault. <laughs> I'm not going to paint it in a fucking rainbows and sunshine light. I'm saying I used word choices that painted him bad, but then he says stuff like, oh, we cuddled before. Cuddling can be taken, and I watched it be taken and ran with. He says we cuddled, and people are like, you can't get mad at what he did to you because you were lying on top of him and all up on him before it happened. I wasn't. We were on a couch, sitting, sitting up, sitting up. Okay. We were all on a couch. Everything and anything you could consider cuddling, I saw that as a friendly, like, drunk, what you do with your friends. I was doing it with my best friend that was right next to me as well, you know? She's right. She's right. I, that's what I'm saying. I think you need to validate her perspective. And then we need to say, oh my God, it was a fucking mistake. And I'm so sorry. That's why George said, I'm so sorry. Because it was a mistake. Like, she, he literally had no intention of targeting her. It was a mistake. And I hate to tell you this, but guys, at the end of the day, like, okay, I'll give you an example. My friend who's in their 30s went out on a date with a millennial. They're both millennials. She came home. They got to the front door. He kissed her goodnight. And she goes, Brittany, I'm really fucking upset. I was like, why? And she goes, he kissed me goodnight and didn't ask for my consent. I was like, why would he ask for your consent? She goes, what do you mean? I was like, you're in a very progressive bubble where they ask for consent beforehand, right? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, he is in a small conservative town where you've just moved to. Why would he be trained to ask for consent when every movie he's ever watched, every TV show, every cultural expectation is that he kisses you after the date? And she was like, oh yeah. And I was like, yeah, different bubbles, dude. He kisses you at the end of the night because he thinks that's good manners. You think he should ask before he kisses you. Also good manners. I think both of these things is true. Now, I get called psycho or I get complimented because I'm always like, would you like to have sex with me? And people are like, whoa, I can't believe you just came out and asked. And I'm like, well, I just figured it'd be the easiest way to like not miscommunicate. But most people, not most people, some people in different bubbles, they want you to sort of like get closer and, and touch a hand and move out an arm and move towards a breast and maybe move down towards, they want it to be secret and slow and sensual. That's okay too, right? Now, I'm a person who comes from a bubble that was super, super conservative Republican Catholic. Then I left that bubble and traveled to Seattle where I was in nudist parades and nudist clubs, BDSM dungeons. I was having sex with my friends. I was cuddling with my friends. We were doing platonic and sexual or it just depended on the negotiation. I was doing sexual BDSM and, and platonic BDSM. And I was doing all of these. I was showering with my friends platonically. I was experiencing all of these different cultures, all of these different bubbles. And my brain was being blown at how different the world could be if people just realized it. But then I realized like people sometimes like the status quo. Sometimes they like the way things are. For some of my female friends, they will never ask a man out. They're like, I am never pursuing a man. A man must pursue me. For me, I slid into my husband's DMs. I was like, hey, girl. A little anime gif. I was like, hey, girl. I think we could get along. Boom, married. For me, I always ask a guy out. I always ask a girl out. What am I waiting for? Hell to freeze over? But for some of my female friends, they refuse to ask men out. Fine. We're different. Everybody is different. Katie is making a mistake thinking everybody is how she perceives them to be. And I think that's the mistake she's making. And it's probably a mistake she's making because of her friends and her bubble. Right? She's probably thinking, yeah, like what guy would just touch my boob without asking? Well, lots of people. Because asking verbally is only one way to get consent. He made a mistake. But also, I can understand your worry that he's a predator because it's scary. But also, you would know if he was a predator if you said, hey, don't do that. And he said, Okay, my bad. Or if he said, I'm going to do it anyways. Right? So don't read people's minds. Communicate the best of possible. George, maybe I would recommend start asking beforehand. But also, 
for some people, they're going to get turned off. George might be rejected in the future if he goes, hey, can I kiss you? And someone's like, I'm not into that. Some people don't like it. Some people like it. And I think, again, we all have to remember, like, no one's living the same. No one has the same culture, the same expectation. And that's just what it is. That's just what it is. Um, and again, I believe we any you, touches KT. were more initiated by him. But again, that's just hearsay. Again, uh, but just using words like that, it can be taken and ran with. It wasn't anything sexual. And I still, I believe it was pretty tame. Uh, you know, uh. I didn't. By the way, St. George should have known better is interesting because I think the older you get, the less likely you would know better because older generations didn't date this way, right? So like the older you are, the less you'll be up to date with what younger people are doing in terms of consent. So if you're dating somebody older, they are more, my older friends are less likely to get STI tested. They're less likely to use contraceptives. They're less likely to ask for consent verbally. And that's just because they come from a different generation. So people think I'm like, oh, you're so young and modern, Brittany, asking for consent beforehand. And I'm like, uh-huh. But then, so if you're older, you probably will less, you'll know less than more. And also if you're younger, you'll probably know the modern way of doing things, but you'll never understand that older people do it different. So I don't know, George being 26, 27, I'm not sure if he comes from that version of consent culture. And also it's, it's uh, I've had so many YouTubers doubt me. I've had so many people say like, you cannot, like that's not true. That's not how things happen. That's not how things work. But like it, it, it is how things work in different places. Not every, the world doesn't revolve around you <laughs> again, you know? Mm, again, I believe that it was an invitation for anything sexual or that it would lead to anything sexual, especially it being in front of a bunch of people. Um, so she's caveating all these things, which I think makes sense. Like, especially in front of all these people, why would he do that? I don't know. In my partying 20s days, again, in my bubbles, like we honked to honked everyone's boobs. We were very loud. We slapped each other. We kissed each other. We cuddled. We fell asleep together in the bed. We all never fucked or some of us fucked. None of us. I don't know. It just depended on the friend group. I've been in so many different friend groups and they're all so fun. But they were drama filled and silly and people made mistakes. And it was just like, eh, what are you going to do? And yeah, some people made false accusations. And then a year later admitted they lied because they were ashamed of having sex in the first place. Yeah. When you involve your life with other people, shit gets messy. So be careful who you involve yourself with. For the people saying I'm an attention seeker, I think genuinely when people come out about these kind of things, um, is insane that people believe that anyone who you are an attention seeker we all are people who are not attention seekers shut their fucking mouths if you want to speak out against a predator you should be an attention seeker what people mean by attention seeker is you want attention you don't deserve or you want attention in a way that I think is bad but I think that's kind of crazy to say like oh I want attention that I think is bad but she is asking for attention. And I think if she genuinely thinks she's dealing with a predator, it could make sense that she wants that attention so she can warn people. The dilemma is that she's warning people against somebody that I just don't think is a predator. I think it's somebody who made a genuine mistake. And look, I have a deep, deep fear that I'm going to be somehow promoting a predator or I'm going to be making a misjudgment. I just don't think George is a predator. Out of all the douchebag guys I know, I don't think it's him. Actually, I saved a video to show you an example. You know, a lot of people brought up the age gap and they kept saying like, she's freshly 18, he's 26, blah, blah, blah. I want to show you a different bubble of age gap in which I would be considered, like I would think this guy is a red flag, but George isn't. So George, there is, okay. I think, I tell my male friends, don't date women who are 18, 19, 20. If you're over the age of 22, 25, 22, 25, depends. Okay. But if you're at, like, I know a guy who's like 28, 30, dating an 18-year-old. And I'm like, don't do this. But they're like, well, I get along with her and we have the same hobbies. I know, because you're a child. You're a grown man who's a child because you're not grown grown. I get it. But don't do this. But they do it because that's their maturity level. I know people who are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, dating people who are 25. Because they have a lot in common. Fine. Not all of them are these, like, predators. But you know who gave me a super red flag feeling? was this guy right here. When I first saw this guy, I was like, oh, I have like super red flag feelings about this guy. 
Okay, listen to the way he talks about his age gap relationships. Listen to this. What's your age? 43. Are you single? I'm single. At 43, what's the youngest girl you'd date? I mean, I wouldn't date anybody less than 18. I wouldn't date anyone less than 18. All these men in this menosphere and the misogyny bubbles who are like, girls 18 are the best, freshest pussies 18 to 22. Ew, I wouldn't even date a woman over 25. Yeah, all those guys, super red flags. Do you hear George saying those things? No. Yeah, 18. So 18 is the youngest you'd go? Yeah. You don't see any issues with that having that much of an age gap? No, she can join the military, she can buy a gun, she can smoke a cigarette, she can travel into the world, she's an adult. She's an adult that, that can go to college, be free, travel the world. Now, even if this is fake, it doesn't matter. I know real men in real life who have the same opinion, right? The same opinion, dead serious and do it. They are men in their 40s, 50s, 60s who are willing to date 18 year olds. And then I want to give you guys a new, a different bubble perspective. This is a bubble of age gap relationships that the cut interviewed. And these couples are, okay, so here it goes. Okay, look, this couple is uh, 27 and 55. She was 24 when they got together and he was 52 when they got together, right? So she was 22 when she was dating a guy who was 52. No, 24 and 52. Crazy age gap. I definitely think there's a red flag there. I think there's a red flag there. I think it says so much, but she's an adult and she can consent to it. But look at the way they talk about their relationships. Have you ever? This couple is uh, 30 and 58. So the younger girl is 30 and the older girl is 58. 58. Felt our age difference is. Me, under 30. I raise an eyebrow after 30. I don't care what your age gap is. Like you're an adult, adult, figure it out, right? You're not grown, grown, but you're adult enough, figure it out. But before 30, I'm very like hesitant to be a fan of age gap relationships, right? But lots of people have stories about age gap relationships internationally, globally. Age gap relationships are pretty common. Age gap relationships are just a thing. Now, again, I'm all about a five-year, 10-year age gap. Like, what's the big deal? But also, if the person's old enough. Like, I'm 35 in May. If I was with a 25-year-old right now, I'd be like, what the fuck? They would feel like my child. Like, I couldn't even imagine. But for some people, that's not weird to them. For me, it would feel like I was taking advantage of that person. Because I don't even know how I wouldn't take advantage of a 25-year-old with all of my lived experience, with everything I know about the world. Not that I would want to take advantage of them, but I would look at them like a kid. I would treat them like a child. Because I, I would just think like you're 25. Like we're we're both adults and maybe we can do something casual. Maybe I trust you to consent in some ways. But to have a relationship to make you my partner in crime? I don't know, bro. My partner for life? See, I think with age gap situations, you could have really amazing consensual short-lived loverships. I think you could be lovers. I think you could do a lot of things without there being malicious intent. But to grow with somebody in that age gap, I feel like that would be weird. Like, I couldn't even imagine that. I just feel like I would probably be more disrespectful than necessary because I would just be like, you're 25. Like, I didn't know shit at 25. You know what I mean? But everyone's different as well. So for me, not the greatest thing. For you, might work out. So Katie's saying, I'm 18, I'm freshly 18, and he's 26. Yeah, for some people, perfectly fine. For other people, they're like, why are you doing that? Like, why are you doing that? And again, it's just dependent. Now, if they had said they just had sex that night, I actually probably would have been like, oh yeah, that makes sense. But if they said, oh yeah, we have a lot in common, I'd be like, whoa, why does a 26 year old have a lot in common with an 18 year old? You know what I mean? Emmanuel says, did you get to the asexual part? Well, apparently she's asexual. We started off with that, you know? And, and on cat says, isn't that a little condescending though? I said what I said, okay? But condescending to the younger person? You know, I just, everyone's different, but I never read a 25 year old that I felt like I related to in a deep, deep, fully way. You know what I mean? But if you relate to them, you do you. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you why I wouldn't do it. But you do you. Again, I might have sex with someone who's 25, but I'm not going to build a life with you. Like, what the fuck do you know about life? But also, if you think your 25 year old knows something about life, cool. That's fine. I just don't want to do it. Again, who cares what Brittany thinks? The question is, why do you think something? Why does Katie think it's wrong for an 18-year-old and a 26-year-old to do anything together? 
So Nish is what about 40 and 55? I don't care after 30. I don't care if a 30 year old is with a 70 year old. I don't care about any age gap, anything after 30. I don't care about anything after 30. I'm talking about only if the people are under 30. So I do not care about anything that happens after someone is, the younger person is 30. Okay. I don't think, so. I don't care. Okay. The 18 year old can't take care, take advantage of the 40 year old. Well, any, and by the way, age, anyone can take advantage of anyone. The question is finding out if that happens, right? Anyone can take advantage of anyone. If you watch true crime or if you look at psychology, like NPR episodes about children, even children can try to kill their own parents and they're six. So like those are interesting cases of like, it's very an anomaly, but it's very interesting. So anyone could try to murder somebody. Anybody could try to take advantage of somebody. Anybody could do anything. It's just what are you actually dealing with in the context you're dealing with it in? And that's what I'm saying. It's not about black and white for me. It's like, what's the, con what's the situation? What are the facts? What's actually happening? Okay, this is my opinion. I'm not going to black and white it for you. I'm not going to say, oh my God, being in an age gap relationship is always toxic. I'm going to say, from my understanding, I feel like it's probably always toxic for somebody under 20 to be with someone over 40. I'm open to be proving wrong. I can be proven wrong, but I haven't seen it yet. Under 20 and over 40 sounds pretty suspicious. But everyone's got an opinion. It was genuinely came out about a true story uh, that has happened to them. They know that this attention is the worst attention you could possibly. She should have be. She, it is the worst attention. And uh, as a victim or survivor myself, I think I would have recommended for her not to tell anybody unless she had a good reason why she was doing it. And the problem is, is nobody was sure why she did it. And I think that that was the problem is I'm not even sure why she told the story. I think she was trying to protect the communities, but she didn't say that. You notice that? You notice that she didn't say why she was telling George's story. She just said she wanted to be transparent with her audience, which I think is inappropriate. Your audience doesn't need to know that you've been assaulted. You know what I mean? Why does your audience need to know that? So I want to know why she did it. You ever get. Um... I've lost the love for something that I've spent so long on because of all of this. You know, it is everything that I've worked for since I was 16. On this account, you know, under this name, everything that I've worked for is... I don't think teenagers should be on social media unless they are severely uh, something, something. I just feel like you can't handle it. You obviously can't handle it. Right. But also, no, whoever can. I don't know. People really don't, though. I don't know. It's not that I want to take away a 16 year old's ability from streaming, but a part of me does. A part of me does. I do. But a part of me knows that's like not really fair, but a part of me does. Overshadowed by this. When you look up my name, this is what it is. I'm fucking. Def but you did that, girl. That's what I'm saying. I don't see her logic. I feel for her, but nobody knew this had happened, not even George, until she came out with the story. Who convinced her to share it to the internet? And why did she do it? If she had said, like, I'm doing this because of this, then that's beautiful. But, like, why? Find by this now, you know? And there's no coming back from that. Why, why would I want that? Um, and it's my trauma and what I've been through has become drama and clickbait and just another discussion topic to argue with each other on Twitter. Why would I want any of this? Um, I will tell you guys why I came out about it. Oh, okay. She's going to tell us. She's going to tell us. Later, but I didn't. I, this is not the. Hold on. Because of the shovel story, she felt she was in the right. Yeah, but Shelby's story was totally different. And Shelby's story was just saying I was in a toxic relationship with like a toxic guy. So like that makes sense. But also, why did she do that? Why did Shelby tell that story? I mean, it makes sense. Wilbur sounds like an asshole. But, like, George obviously isn't an asshole. Like, Wilbur sounds toxic as fuck, and I hope he all grows in and goes to therapy. But, like, what did she... So, okay, I'm excited. Let's see what she says. Attention anyone would want. Um, and if someone does want attention like this, they're fucking insane. Um, and uh, this isn't me undermining any of the support I've gotten. I love you guys, and I love the people that have shown me support. Um, I'll never be able to thank you guys enough, but even the good support that I've gotten in this situation, you know, the people that are strictly before I privated following me 
just because of this. It's not even the kind of following that I want, you know? Uh, people following me because I'm a victim. People following me uh, because of this situation. It, it, it just further defines me, you know? I, of course, I love the support and that isn't me not acknowledging how grateful I am. Uh, but again, obviously the bad attention is bad, but even the good atten attention, um, it's, it's not even what I would want. I I've always wanted, you know, to connect with more people and to, you know, my content to be known more, but I don't want it to become more well known because I was assaulted. Um, and I hope you guys can also understand that. So both sides of the attention I'm getting is just, again, it's nothing I would ever want. And again, why would I come out about this? For more clout? I don't want to fucking do content. What, what am I going to do with the clout? Um, I don't. She doesn't want to do content? I don't know what my future holds, but I don't want a career in content or anything. Oh. Oh, I didn't realize that. So, like hmm. that. Um, yeah. Uh, again, I want to talk about the good response. I really appreciate everybody that has reached out. It's such a, a double-edged, you know, because as much as I'm glad so many people are connecting with me and, you know feeling better about themselves it hurts yeah 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 seeing wait. how many bryson said i wait wait bryson said i thought she just said this is everything she worked for yeah now i'm very confused <sighs> maybe she's just changing her mind i've left youtube three times because i was too stressed by it so maybe she was like yeah i just want to be normal again but then she came back that's happened to me before Sophia with the super chat says all these CCs have been on the internet since they were teenagers and it's content creators. So it's clear that they don't know how to interact socially outside the internet. Yeah, I think that's a huge part of it, honestly. Yeah, that's probably a huge, huge part of it, which is why I'm saying like there's a lot of miscommunication happening. So yeah, maybe she wants to be off the internet now, but she might come back. I think she can come back. I think she probably should have taken a break, but I can understand the temptation to like be here. I don't know. People can relate. It hurts hearing the stories enrico says i think you're being you're trying to be too sympathetic to someone who doesn't deserve it um i'm not being well it's my job that's kind of what my channel is known for is i try to like dissect the most nuanced position as possible meaning like as much as like my initial reaction wants to say one thing i have to ask myself if that's valid because it's really easy for your biology and chemistry and your bias to push you into a direction so the reason I'm doing that is because unlike everyone else covering this story, I'm trying not to have that initial gut reaction, which is to like not care about a person. But also like I don't know this girl. She could be the worst person on the planet, but she's probably not. She's probably just as confused as George is and she's handling it the way she's handling it because she doesn't know how else to do it. And she's also way younger. So to be fair, George probably has a better maturity level of handling it than she does. She's reacting like a typical 19-year-old right now. And I'm not that surprised. Right? Like, I'm just not. If I if you have any interest in actually understanding why humans do what they do, you have to really think about it. You know what I mean? People are coming out with. It's great. And I love the response that people feel safe to come out about their stories. It hurts how many there are. And it just further you know, it further sets in my mind that I would do this again, no matter how many fucking names I'm called, even if I have to disappear from the internet, I would do it all again, seeing how many people it has helped and the space that it's created for other content creators to come out about their stories. I mean, even DMs I've gotten, people who aren't ready to come out publicly, but from bigger creators, content creators bigger than me smaller than me and you guys sending me max said are you a psychologist no i'm a youtuber letters sending me messages again it breaks my heart knowing you guys have went through that but georgina says what about the price she had to pay everyone keeps forgetting about that well no i think that's the point is she did feel like the price she had to pay to be in the space she did say that which i think is a problem 
I know you guys are saying the way she talks drives you crazy. It's probably because she's used to being on the internet since she was young. So she does probably have some faker facial expressions. And she probably does have a performativeness to her. And she probably is speaking in a way that feels like, you know, it's kind of, it's actually pretty neurodivergent the way she talks, but also it could just be performative. It's like that poetry. If you guys watch Love on the Spectrum, Connor talks like that. Oh, be still my heart. Like he's very, his autism, like they, a lot of people with autism talk like in a very flowery way. I'm not saying she has autism. I'm just saying it kind of reminds me of that. It's performative in a specific way. The tonality is like up and down and breathy. Um, it's just like, it could be a lot of things. Could be the fact that she's really young and three years of her life were probably in shutdown and or lockdown. It is what they, like everybody talks differently for a lot of reasons. I just think you guys are ascribing a lot of malicious intent to her. And I just showed you Dr. Kirkonda, who's a therapist and most people are not this methodical. You have to understand most people are not methodical about their toxicity or abuse. I just don't think this 19 year old girl is planning out every single facial expression, every single intake of breath, every single accusation against George. You're putting so much onus on her. You're calling her an idiot and a predator at the same time. You're saying she's a genius who came up with this Malavekian like plan and she's an idiot who doesn't know what she's talking about. It's like, which one is it? Is she this amazing villain or is she fucking dumb? And if she's fucking dumb, let's fucking talk about that. Because everyone feels pretty fucking dumb to me right now. Where everyone feels like they know exactly what she's thinking. Do you know exactly what George was thinking? Because if you're mad at Katie for reading George's mind, then you should be mad at yourself for trying to read Katie's. Again, if you look at what's actually happening, we're watching a 19-year-old kid, girl, whatever you want to call her, do her best to balance something that most of you bitches wouldn't even be able to handle because you're not even on the internet. It's fucking hard. Every mean tweet you might have sent at her, you are a contributing factor to why the world sucks. The world is not a reflection of one or two bad people. It's a collection of all of us together. The world is a reflection of us as a majority. If you ever sent a mean tweet to Katie, you are the reason and you are absolutely contributing to why the world sucks. And that's very human of you. So no judgment. But also like, don't sit on your high horse, bitch, and act like you're better than everybody else. Okay? Okay? Okay, now that I'm done lecturing you, I'm going to pee because I deserve to do that. No one deserves anything. I'll be right back. It also is like, you know, I want to create this space that people feel safe to talk about that. Um, the bad response has been... Mm. I think... One thing we do that's like well-intentioned but I don't recommend is actually creating a space when you're young for victims to talk about their sexual assaults. I think that should be done in support groups or with people who have the right way to talk about them. I've noticed in my own work when I tried really hard to create safe spaces for this, it actually went pretty bad because it's actual trauma with a lot of heavy, heavy emotion. And honestly, people need better settings for having those conversations. So even when I've tried to create a space where people can express those things to one another, I think it's been always good, but it gets out of hand because, hey, this is real trauma. This shit really impacts you. And I feel like a 19-year-old girl who um, had this much impact from a situation uh, like this should probably not be creating the space for people to tell their stories because it's too much. It's a lot. And so I would say that as much as it's nice to try to take on that responsibility is actually a huge responsibility. And um, I've noticed that I can't maintain it myself. You know, I try to give a space to people, but it gets overwhelming and it gets really difficult and it gets really dark really fast. So I actually recommend not creating a space, you know, where people can talk about that kind of stuff. I would recommend going to a support group for that. Or somebody with professionals. Even professionals burn out, guys. You know, streamers are definitely going to burn out, you know? A lot. <laughs> um, even the fact of fucking reporters messaging me, asking for my fucking take on it all. Or my comment on it. I actually fucking choke. Are you joking? It's, it's, it's insane. I mean, watching the position I'm in right now, watching thousands of people comment on your sexual assault story 
people fight each other. Yeah, I feel like she didn't realize that was going to happen. And I think this is a lesson she's going to have to learn. Obviously, you and I and other people could be like, yeah, what did you think was going to happen? But that's the point. What did anyone think was going to happen when anything happens? What does anyone think when anything, like, when anything's going to happen? You know what I mean? Like, it's intense. So I kind of feel like she didn't understand the consequence of parting with people. She didn't understand the consequence of posting her video. She didn't understand the consequence. Like, it's like she keeps doing things she just doesn't understand. And I think this is her story. Her, this is her learning what it means. And she probably isn't ready. I thank God every day that I don't believe in because I'm an atheist. That I didn't become popular or famous when I was younger. I would never would have been able to handle it. So I feel like she's misunderstanding something here that I, like she's learning. And George is learning too. George and Dream and all of them are so young. They're all going to have to learn too. You know? Grow for it. People use it as a talking point on a YouTube video or a podcast. You know, it being made into clickbait. Yeah. It's, it's insane. Um, yeah, she doesn't get it. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. And again, if you feel like, what an idiot, what a dumb bitch. Yeah, you can feel that way. But what are you so shocked about a 19-year-old not knowing the difference? Of course she doesn't. She's like a kid, bro. She doesn't know anything. You know what I mean? Um, watching my experience that is so, means so much to me, get dumbed down and simplified in just a few words or in a few sentences so it's more digestible and more consumable for people. It's, it's insane. Um, I will be talking about as for his response, oh, um, I don't have much to say. To me, it's very clear what's going on, but I know it may not be for a lot of people um, because I'm now cleared from the fog of believing shit. Um, he deleted the apology on Twitter, so that's not what I'm talking about. That was deleted. Uh, no, there's just, again, the two videos that have been made, which I don't even know where to start. Um, I mean, and I could have, could have even understood if it would have been a, I know we have different perspectives of the night, and I know I, I assume stuff that I shouldn't have, but I'm still sorry for hurting you, period. But anytime, again, he readmits to the fact that he touched me without consent, it's followed with a but. It's followed with a, yes, I touched you. Yes, I didn't ask if it was okay. But you were smiling. But you seemed like you would have wanted it. But I assumed you wanted it because I'm fucking sick of it. I'm fucking sick of the butt. Um, I'm, I'm just so sick of it. And, and not even just that, it's then put into this video where the entire video is picking apart my story once again, picking apart every single thing I said, and once again focusing thing on things that are relevant to the fact that you fucking touched me. I mean, being like, whoa. Um, George did clarify why he deleted that tweet, so that's not surprising for those of us who watched his videos, but for her, she's probably seeing it as a negative. I don't think she's wrong here again. Like, he did touch her, but he didn't touch her with malicious intent. It would have been like, even if he kissed her that night, it would have been, uh, you know what I mean? Like, it wouldn't have been, it, both things, again, can be true. That's why you have to speak up and be like, oh my God, you misunderstood. Like, I'm not one of those people. And then he did admit to touch, like tickling her and putting his hand on her waist. But I don't know if he admitted to squeezing her boob. But even if he touched her boob, even if he kissed her, even if they had sex, you know what I mean? Like, all of this happens differently for different people. Some people never get verbal consent. It's all like in the moment. Some people get verbal consent. You know what I mean? So again, she has to remember that like not everybody operates under your expectation. So I think that's the problem we're still having here is that in her first video, she didn't clarify, right? She didn't clarify how he touched her, which left everyone confused. 
And then George said it was like tickling. She said tickling and then everyone got even more confused. And now she's saying boob grab and now everyone else is more confused. Because if everybody was in the room and saw it, then I need everyone to say, hey, I saw this. But no one's saying that, right? Uh, Takan says, does she even believe in nonverbal consent? But it doesn't seem like it. Yeah, actually, that's another thing. If she doesn't believe in nonverbal consent, then like we're at an impasse. You know what I mean? That means we are in an impasse. What do we do with that? I would say now we live in different bubbles and one bubble doesn't care and other like other bubbles do it differently. Right? So I I like that's what I would like to know from Katie's values. Like do you even believe in nonverbal consent? You know? Like how do you know it's a like how cuz that's fine, but also like how do you operate under that assumption? How do you take care of patients in comas if they can't verbally consent to you? Do you bathe people with Alzheimer's who can't confirm with you that they want to be bathed? Like the world operates on nonverbal consent because we have medical problems. We have communication styles. We all operate differently. So I would like to know that perspective. You know what I mean? Valerie said she said she didn't. I don't, I don't, I haven't seen that. Oh, she addresses the nonverbal consent, kind of? Oh, kind of. Oh, she said my friend left early, but really he left late. What the fuck does that have to do with you touching me and not asking first? What the fuck? Your friend wasn't there when it happened. Oh, this is all the stuff she left out. She left this out because she can't be trusted and is leaving. Oh, Carrie says George specifically said nothing sexual happened and her best friend said it was just touching her waist, I believe. That might be true, actually. I rewatched her video today, but maybe I should have rewatched his. Important info out. I left out the two people that were in that room that weren't there for my assault. I was talking about my assault. They weren't there for it. Why would I? It, he's put in this position, right? To pick out every inconsistency and especially pick out any information I didn't mention and to put it on a silver platter and be like, here. Here's everything that she was kind of wrong about. Yeah, the internet sucks that way. I hate when they do that with me too. They're so bad faith, but it is what it is. Like it is, what are you gonna do, right? And here's everything she left out. So she can't be trusted. And because I'm the one pointing it out, you can trust me. Because I'm the one putting it out there for you, you can trust me. He's put in this position. Um, and again, he says, he says stuff like, he convened. Ghosty also said nothing sexual happened. George did say he touched her around the waist in the first vid. We watched it earlier. Yeah, I remember the waist part. I remember the tickle part. And so that's the part where, again, this is ugh, this is so... I wish I could talk to her and we could talk about it, but not on stream, like in private. But it's one of those things where I, like, I can't hate this girl. I just can't do it. Because like she's obviously working off a schema that's very specific to her bubble. And I like, what am I going to do? Fault her for like, that's all she knows? But also, like, she's got a backing. People are backing her. So she's being reinforced in the belief. I don't know. What, like, I, we can only do what we can do. So George needs to defend himself. We need to make our stances clear. But also, like, I just wish Katie had somebody in her life to be like, hey, girl, let's talk about things. You know? And, like, that's the problem is I don't think anyone's willing to do that yet. Crayonder with the super chat says she either... Near the end or in a tweet clarifies that she didn't watch his video and a friend watched it for her. That's why she says George didn't apologize. Oh, I see. Yeah, I think I heard that too, that she didn't watch it. Yeah. Britt, she said her friend saw the boob touching, but her friend denies it. Ooh. Oh, this is hard. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, she just could, she could be straight up lying, but I feel like it's more than that. Aim with the super chat. Thank you so much, girl with the spoons. So big. Thank you so much. Brittany, you're killing it right now. You're killing it. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Spoons in the chat, guys. Spoons in the chat. MG with the super chat says, to be honest, she changed them spooning to sitting up as well. Oh, yeah. She just, that's the problem is, look, I'm not trying to be such a bitch and like every word, everything, but I'm trying to say, hey, I wish she could talk to me without any judgment. I don't want, I don't want to hear the story like, <sighs> I just want her to tell me the story without anyone judging her. Just tell me the story, girl. I'm listening. Just tell me the story. And then I want to be able to listen and hear it and understand it and just, you know, like dismantle it in its own proper way. But like, I just, I feel like she's being so judged and she's so afraid and it's all coming out wrong. But also I'm sure George is leaving out certain details. 
I'm assuming he is kind of saying in a particular way, like genuinely, they should both talk to me without recording so I could tell them what's happening because I know I have more life experience than all these people put together. And that's the problem is like, if you don't have life experience, it's harder. But also, um, you know, it's, it's all difficult. Like, again, I don't want to go after every single word she uses incorrectly. Like, I'm just not that kind of person. I don't think people speak correctly. I think people speak incorrectly all the time. They also move in for a kiss at the incorrect moment. They also grab a titty at the incorrect moment. People are just very flawed. Conveniently, didn't acknowledge my age, despite the numerous, you know, opportunities. He conveniently didn't acknowledge the power imbalance. He can- There isn't an automatic power imbalance, so that's something to think about, right? Conveniently doesn't remember these things. I mean- Tom said, now nah, George said in his last video, I'm not going to say where I touched her. I'll let her make that decision. Now she's telling us. Uh, I think I do actually remember George saying something to that effect. Like all, like he was vague on purpose. Like, look, he's already admitted he touched her. I mean, he could touch a boobie. Like guys, touch a lot of boobies in my life. You know what I mean? The question is, if she, okay, I'll tell you a story. One time I was on a polycule. I'm monogamous now, but I used to be polyamorous. Ah, and I was in a four person polycule and it was really fun and cute. Three girls, one boy. And we had a lot of fun. Okay, female top, three bottoms. It was hot. It was great. It was nice. Toxic as fuck. Okay. Toxic as fuck because we all had shit we had to work on. But we were having fun for a while. One of the girls in the polycule couldn't be slapped on the butt. Okay? That was like a big no-no. No slapping her on the butt. And you know what I did one time without thinking? Can anyone guess? I slapped her on the fucking butt. Because I like to slap people's butts. I did. I slapped her on the butt. And right away I was like, I didn't even remember what I did. Everyone was like, <gasps> And I was like, oh, fuck, what did I do? And then I was like, oh, shit, because I forgot. I forgot that one of her hard limits was being slapped on the butt. And you know how they punished me? They slapped me on my butt. But for the record, I felt like a piece of shit. But you know what they didn't do? Drag it on. I apologize. She accepted my apology. We renegotiated boundaries and we moved on. I just genuinely forgot. And she knew I genuinely forgot. So we still acknowledged the issue and then we moved the fuck on. And that's how I know those people weren't trying to hold everything against me. They were willing for there to be mistakes made. And by the way, her issue about being slapped on the butt was related to sexual assault. So it was even for more of a reason I should have paid attention. But I just didn't. And I think when you're with a group of people that mean the best and love you, they really do understand you will make mistakes. And what they don't do is tolerate a pattern of mistakes, but also if they know it was a mistake, and that's the difference. I don't think these people know each other enough to give each other the power, like the power, I read power on the chat. I don't think Katie and George know each other enough to give each other the benefit of the doubt or to be open to mistakes or to have a conversation around how things could go wrong. And I think that that's fair, but also unfair. Ultimately, I've made so many mistakes and I'm so glad we could communicate through them. And I'm so glad when people have made mistakes with me, I was able to see it because I would have condemned perfectly good people for a few problems in behavior. Now, of course, in my toxic days, I also tolerated a lot more toxicity than I needed to. But I learned eventually when to cut myself off and to have boundaries with myself. Okay? So again, like, I want Katie to have better tools, but she's not going to have it if she doesn't let people make mistakes. But also, I'm terrified of protecting a predator. So I want to make sure that I'm not making excuses for bad behavior. I just know most people aren't out here being predators. Most people are out here being dumb as fuck, myself included. And the only hope we have for humanity is that we know the difference between the two. And right now, I just don't think Katie does. And, and then he says stuff like, well, I'm a good guy. Obviously, he's going to fucking say that. You think that if he genuinely is the person to kind of be like this, that he would go on his on an edited fucking video and be like, 
yeah, I'm a bad guy. Yeah, I purposely. Well, does she think he's a bad guy? I think that's the problem. Does she think that him doing this completely makes him the worst, most horrible person? You know? Enrico with the super chest says, where do we draw the line between, or where do we draw the line of validating her feelings and actually holding her accountable for coming out with such a destructive accusation? Um, so if you want my honest opinion, I don't think it's our job to hold her accountable. I don't. I think it's her values job to hold herself accountable. I think at most it could be Twitch's responsibility or wherever she's put out this allegation. I don't think it's the audience's job to hold content creators uh, accountable for their own beliefs. The problem is, is Katie believes this. I don't think you can hold her accountable for a belief. That's like trying to hold a homophobe accountable for being homophobic and saying like, I think gay people are predators. It's like, what are you, you going to do? How are you going to hold that accountable? What if they're religious and say like, nobody should watch porn? What are you gonna, how are you going to hold them accountable? She's not lying. In her mind, she isn't lying. She's telling a real story. So what are you going to hold her accountable for? Her own perception? What are you going to do? You know what I mean? Like, what are you going to do? What do you want What do you want to do to Katie? What do you think she deserves to do? I don't think she's lying. I think she literally thinks what he did was sexual assault, which a lot of people would agree with her. What do you want her, what do you want to do to her? And then you have to ask yourself why you think that's the right thing to do. You know what I mean? But yeah, like what is the public going to do? What, are you going to go bully somebody? Is that part of your values? Are you allowed to go like fuck with Katie? Does that make you feel like a good person? You know what I mean? So Tom's, Tom Fullery says the audience funds creators with their views. It's definitely the audience's responsibility to hold creators accountable. I totally disagree. If you want to hold someone accountable, don't watch them. But what are you going to do? Go bully her and harass her and stalk her? Like, if you don't want to deal with her, if you don't want to give her views, stop engaging with her. You know what I mean? Like, what are you going to do? She isn't lying according to her perception. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? But you're already doing it now. And I just, I, you know, you can share your opinions. I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to try to hold her accountable. But I think she should hold her account, herself accountable with her own values. And if you don't want to engage with her, don't give her money and don't engage with her. You know? Purposefully, oh yeah, I knew her age. He's not going to say that. He has a fucking career to protect. He's going to say whatever the fuck he needs to. He has so much at stake. I have fucking nothing left. Like, it is so, it's obvious to me the kind of people that, th that these people are. I mean, he'll admit, he can get on a video and sit there and admit to touching me without consent, and then he can bury it. He brings up all these screenshots, all these different details that are irrelevant in the night. He brings this up on purpose. So that's what you guys talk about. Hold on, people calling George a pedophile, like they're already lost. You know that, right? That's not even what a pedophile is. She's 18. Like, if you think George is a pedophile, like, you're lost. Bye, sprinkle, sprinkle, bye. Like, I wouldn't even worry about those people. They're totally, like, inept. Like, just ignore them. Right? This is about you. You should have boundaries. Don't engage with people that think flirting with an 18-year-old is pedophilia. Don't engage. Being with a 15-year-old isn't even pedophilia. Don't engage. Right? Like engaging with those people, by the way, their numbers are nothing. You have to understand there's 8 billion people on this planet. You guys do know that, right? How many people, even if it's in the thousands, are actually that, like someone's going to be that cray cray. Let them be cray cray. Let them live in that bubble. That's not your bubble. Don't engage. Okay? So George has to do his job to deal with this and he's going to deal with it in the future. Every content creator has problems every few or so years. People come out with accusations. People create drama. It's literally a part, like, it's literally a normal. Someone just made a video about me the other day. It was so dumb. And I was like, what are you doing? People do shit all the time. I ignore them. I just don't watch them on stream. I don't give them any light of day. Fuck you. Fuck you, bro, for creating bullshit. Like, I just ignore them. Ignore them. As far as we're concerned, George was right to counter this story because it got so big. 
But there's always bullshit people out there trying to like write on you. There's always people who are trying to gain clout because of you. Ignore them. Okay. So again, I just think like if you're worried about like randos on Twitter, that's probably your first problem. You know, but also like defend George. If you if you believe in George, uplift George, like his streams, promote his shit, be team George. But going after Katie doesn't make any sense. He brings up, oh, well, these are texts from Dream and Ghosty. Why do I fucking care about text between Dream and Ghosty when I'm talking about you fucking touching me? He brings up these texts and he brings up these this irrelevant stuff to distract you guys. He's distracting you guys. He's bringing this up to be like, here, look at this. Here, debate this. Here, talk about this. Oh, and by the way... I did touch her and I didn't ask. And yes, that's the thing she's coming out about that I'm confirming. But look at this. If George is getting doxxed, like that's a pretty shitty part of the internet as well. He should definitely um, do something about that. And I think like with peace and love, sometimes even when you're being compassionate towards her, you gotta like do the best to defend yourself. So George is within his 100% right to defend himself. And I think he's done a very good job of doing it in a very mature manner, Right. But I do think Katie, again, I would, God, somebody put Katie in my DMs, bro. I wish I could explain to her how much misunderstanding is happening in her brain. But she doesn't, like, again, I wish she would. <sighs> like, how do you even begin to explain it? She would have to trust me and I would have to make her understand, like, you're not a bad person, but you're misconstruing this so badly that you're you're hurting an innocent person. Now, of course, some people don't think there's innocence in that. You know what I mean? Like some people would say he's not innocent. You know? This, it's so obvious to me. I mean, even like, you know, in DMs and stuff that in my first video, I confirmed, I came out about the fact that, about the messages, but him saying, Let's switch from Instagram DMs to go to <laughs> Mia says, seriously, at the end of the stream, can we get your honest, non-nuanced opinion? LOL. That's that's cute. To be honest with you, um, this is pretty much my real opinion. I really dedicated my my last four years to trying to be as like humans are going to human as possible, like understanding why people do what they do. And yes, it's frustrating. Like I wish this wasn't what had to happen, but I radically accept this is what humans do. Humans misunderstand, misconstrue. We all have trauma, genetics, issues, bubble thoughts. We all have, myself included, moments in our life where we miscommunicate. Um, we have confusion. We oh, like we don't understand each other. We talk past each other. My real opinion is like, I thank God I am old. I thank God this is not my life. I thank God I am ready and prepared for these things. I thank God I've learned all these lessons. And when I say God, I mean nobody because I don't believe in God. I'm atheist. When I see this, I just think to myself, like, man, I'm so happy I live like a hermit and nobody knows me. But also, I love my friends and shout out to my friends. Even if, when you're dramatic, I love you so much, bro. My honest opinion is like, human's gonna human, bro. And she'll either learn the lesson or she won't. But George better learn this fucking lesson that the universe sent him. Or he's just as useless. Dream better learn the lesson the universe sent him. Or they're not going to. Some people also thrive off the drama. There are people all the time in the sphere that are more than happy to have crazy people in their lives because they love the views and the drama. If Dream and George want peace, learn the lesson the universe is sending you. Know the difference between Katie's and people that are not Katie's. I'm not saying Katie's a bad person. I don't think most people are bad people. But learn the difference. Because when bubbles mesh with other bubbles and they miscommunicate, have you seen Israel and Palestine? Have you seen the way the world operates? The moment the other side decides you're the bad guy, they will use any means of justification for any means of action. Snapchat. What is, what is the point of texting on Snapchat versus Instagram? The only reason we didn't continue on Snapchat is because I didn't want to continue there. But in the middle of a convo being like, let's switch to Snapchat, where 
messages and pictures disappear. I mean, I just feel like these kinds of people are so smart and so calculated. I feel like it's so obvious. With peace and love, if George and Dream are calculated, I would be amazed. But you see how people think Katie is calculated? I would be amazed. I would be shook to my core if Katie, George, or Dream were calculated. Now her side thinks they're calculated. His side thinks she's calculated. Be honest with me right here, guys. Come on. Do you think any of these people are calculated? Genuinely? Genuinely calculated. Meaning they were playing 4D chess. They orchestrated this whole thing. Or do you think they're a bunch of fucking kids pretending they're big adults and not understanding how to adult? There's no fucking way. I just don't. I don't buy it. Um, but I also acknowledge why people wouldn't see it because they are very convincing. Um, and honestly, I acknowledge, I mean, it's fine, uh, if you don't believe me. Um, I would, I would also like to point out every source that he's getting, if you've noticed any time he says, well, she seemed comfortable and I even asked... The person he's getting to confirm his point of view is his best friend. Or the guy that he called. Ooh, but who's she getting to confirm her point of view? Is it her best friend? Dun 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 In the video, again his friend. The three three guys that were there, the one guy I didn't mention, and the other two are all friends. Um he says, well, she wasn't uncomfortable. Well, she seemed like she was fine. And I asked Dream about this. That's his best friend that is helping him make these videos. He is quite literally helping him and sending him stuff. Ooh, who's helping you make your videos? Who's helping support you? That's what I mean. She, she you have to, but okay, this is how bubbles work. So this is how thought processes work. She goes, oh my God, look at what he's doing. And the people that are like anti Katie, they're like, look what she's doing. Her friends are manipulating her. Her friends are convincing her. And then she's like, look at Dream convincing him. I just don't think any of these people are evil. Diamond says, oh, I'm sure you talked to Dream. Yeah, Dream and I are best friends. He just texted me the other day. Guys, I don't know Dream. I don't know any of these people, obviously. I don't know. I don't know any of these people. But let me tell you, there's no way. Okay. Like, there's no fucking way all these people, they're just giving each other the same story. It's so clearly bubbled to me that I'm like, hey, y'all need to pop these bubbles, bro, and chill. But they're not going to. Yeah. You can be smart, by the way, while still being dumb. You can be smart without being introspective. You can be introspective and not be like a fucking math whiz, okay? I just feel like they're all kind of immature kids figuring it out. All of them are under 26, right? Dream is like 23. She's like 19. George is like 27. Or something. I'm so glad I'm old, bro. This is what I'm saying. You want to hang out with... Why would you want to date a 25-year-old? They're fucking so dumb, bro. They're so dumb. What are you talking about? Oh, yes, they're so mature for their age. <laughs> okay. To make these videos, these edited responses that he's making, he's making them with Dream. Like, and then he's using Dream as a, a source to tell if I was okay or not. I mean, and, and this friend whose career is also on the line because they've built their careers together. If he goes down, they both go down. They're obviously going to back each other up. And I do acknowledge, this is me acknowledging, I can also be a hypocrite in this situation because I had a best friend there. Okay. Obviously, my best friend was there. So it's these three guys who were friends and then me and my best friend. But I would also like to point out the two... I see fire says doesn't being performative mean they're calculate and trying to force a narrative. Everyone's performative on stream guys. No YouTuber, even me right now is not lacking in performativity. There is no way that I don't know I'm on stream right now. Right? Like somebody asked, could you get, give your real unfiltered opinion? If I was, if I asked myself like, what would be my opinion completely unfiltered? It'd be like, Something to the effect of like, all these people deserve everything that's happening to them, but nobody deserves anything. All these people made decisions that this was one of the possibilities. George made a decision that night 
in which only so many possibilities were an option. And one of them was a girl falsely accusing him of assault. Because anytime you have alcohol, opposite sex people involved or same sex people that are attracted to each other, possibly false accusations could occur slash real accusations could occur because real rape could happen. So when I go into a social situation, maybe this is my neurodivergency, I go, what are the possibilities that anything goes completely wrong here? Well, there's still a statistical probability. Every time you get into a car, there's a statistical probability of something going wrong. Thank you so much for the raid. Hello, welcome. Kakunaru, let's go. We love to see it. We love to see it. Appreciate you. Welcome, welcome. You know what I mean? So what do we think? You know, when we, when we go into a social situation, right, we have to understand that there's going to be the possibility of harm. So if you wanted my totally unfiltered opinion, I'd say like everything that happened was what was going to happen and it couldn't have been avoided because none of them did anything to avoid it. Let me tell you this. Do you know that Katie made one of the biggest mistakes she could have made to protect herself? She drank underage, under 21, in a hotel room with strangers she didn't know but validated those strangers because they were friends of friends. Dream and George made a mistake by drinking with people under the age of 21 they didn't know or just drinking with people in general they didn't know. But also, that's so human. I've done that a thousand times. You've done that a thousand times. And we were lucky that nothing went terribly wrong, but sometimes it did. Sometimes it did go wrong. So the, the question you have to ask yourself when you're partying with people is like, am I gonna be the thing that goes wrong? Maybe. And then how do we feel about that? She literally went against that law of drinking over 21 and went, mm, I'm not gonna listen to that thing, that rule that's in place to protect me. I'm gonna ignore it. And then George in Dream did the very normal thing all of us do at parties. This is why I don't party anymore. I'm, my partying days are over, which is, oh yeah, instead of like only partying with people we know, we're gonna party with strangers or friends of friends. Okay. And then they all, gave themselves over to the whim of the universe. And what happened? This happened. It's always a possibility of it happening. It's hard to know who to trust. But more than that, it's hard to know if you can even trust yourself, especially when you're drunk. And also everyone has a different alcohol tolerance. My in-laws recently saw me drunk because I had half a beer, half a beer. And I was drunk and I was like, my bad. And they just thought it was so funny. You know, oh my God, Georgina, stop. You said you just aren't performative. Don't try to convince yourself, Brittany, you're being so objective. No, I'm very performative. Hello, I got cute today. That's a performance. We all do things in a way to communicate and signal to one another. Look, the only person I'm completely unperformative around, around is my husband because my husband knows me so he can translate when I misspeak or he can translate when I don't look the best or he can translate when I say the thing I don't mean. But you guys don't know me like that. So we need to have a different relationship in terms of how we communicate. You know what I mean? And that's okay, which means I gotta think about it. I gotta be like, okay, I'm talking to people who don't know me and I gotta talk in a certain way, you know, and I gotta signal the right thing to you. And I think with content creators, there's like a parasocial element which confuses people. Even with me, people have a version of me in their head that isn't me. It's just a part of me. And the difficult part is realizing like, I don't know this person. I just know the part I know. See, Mal says performance is an equal fake. Exactly. I don't think it means I'm fake. It just means I'm like self-aware to an extent. Right? So again, no judgment on being young and partying. The only judgment I'll hold is like maybe a little bit gay judge. Like, oh, messy. Humans are so messy. You know, what are you going to do? Two girls that were there, the two girls, the one from the screenshot that said, uh, mentioned the age difference and like was mentioning how weird it was. And then the other girl that mentioned. Do you know people think Muslims are weird? Does that mean Muslims are weird? You know, people think Catholics are weird. Does that mean they're weird? You know, people think trans people are weird. Do you think it's that they're weird? Or do you think like everyone is weird to somebody else? Yaya says, okay, but can we get a flex? Uh, my arms aren't that big right now. My arms aren't that big. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for being a membership for 10 months. Let's go. Um, okay, so again, when we're having this conversation, don't you think everyone's a little weird? 
So I, I don't like that insinuation, like, oh, they're being so weird right now. I prefer people saying like, hey, I just wanted to make sure, is everyone good? How are your spoons? How's your energy? Is everyone doing okay? Just checking in, give people an out. Everyone is weird in their own way. Luna's, <laughs> Luna says, I'm a Muslim and I think I'm weird. Girl, everybody weird in their own way. Everybody weird in their own way, okay? That uh, the other girl that was there during the assault that texted me the day after and said, are you okay? I was really uncomfortable with how touchy George was being. Ooh, but you didn't say anything out loud or in the moment. Mm, interesting. Those two girls I met two days prior. Those two girls weren't my friends. Ooh, then why did you make the decision to drink with them? Not that I'm victim blaming. See, remember, we want to hold accountable without victim blaming. Because like you're a victim, you're a victim, you're a victim. But then the question is, again, is this a crime on crime on crime on crime? Because remember, she was breaking the law by drinking. He was breaking the law by touching her titty. And everybody's breaking the law by being complicit. This is just a bunch of criminals hanging out. They were lovely, lovely girls, yes. But I met them two days prior. Two days and prior. And after VidCon, I never spoke to them again. My most recent texts from mm -hmm. them are after I came out about my story. These aren't people... Uh, that you know these are people that i had just met um and the both of these girls were uncomfortable with the situation mm. situation um and it's okay uh if you don't believe me or if you don't believe him or you don't believe either of us because our point of views are biased i mean i got my point of view is probably really biased because i'm the one that got felt up i mean i'm not i mean everyone's view is biased you know how many homeless men have taken their pants down in front of me you know what i mean like it's kind of gross and i'm annoyed by it but like you know no one's homeless without having some mental health problems let's be real nobody fucking chooses to like give up on life basically and become homeless unless you got some fucking cracked out brain generally speaking so am I really that mad that some crazy guy pulled down his pants in front of me? Not really, if I'm going to be real with you. But somebody might be. And somebody might be traumatized for the rest of their life. You know? Which is fine. But, like, it just happens. And you're just like, okay. And for some people, that's, like, the worst thing that's ever happened in their whole life. I know, I get it. But also, I mean, what am I going to do? What, are you going to blame the guy who's just fucking, you know, just doesn't know? You know? You know? Mikey, don't say slur in chat. They will ban you, Mikey. You better relax. <laughs> Guys, don't, don't, don't say a slur right now. <laughs> okay. Words are constructs. Words are constructs. I just feel like sometimes people might come from a sheltered or privileged enough background to not have to face sort of the ugliness of life. And then when life gets slightly uncomfortable, they just don't know what to do about it. You know, and I feel like this is it. This is like life gives you lessons. You don't have to force suffering into your life. It will happen naturally. I'm not going to feel great about the situation. Uh, but if you're wondering, like, who you can trust on saying how these people are behind the scenes, really acknowledge and really pay attention to the people that are... Actually, great point. Liquid Reality says, I am also wondering what bubble she was in. Like, I remember talking with my mom about things that could happen with alcohol when I was 13. Me too! You know what I mean? Like, I would love to know how was she raised? What was that conversation like? How did it go? You know what I mean? I I would also like to know that. You know what I mean? Nobody can say a slur. Chat, no slurs in the chat. This is not a safe space today. We have too many people here. Act accordingly. We have guests in the house. <laughs> not that we say slurs. Like, okay, everybody relax. It's not even a thing here. <laughs> okay. You can just everybody relax. Okay, everybody be cool, bro. Be cool. My mom is watching. I'm just kidding. She's not watching. Just kidding. Speaking out. Pay attention to the people that surround them to this day. Pay attention to the people that have I don't want a victim blame. Just because you get drunk doesn't mean you deserve to be raped. Just like just because you walk down the street with a million dollars on your wrist doesn't mean you deserve to be robbed. Okay? You can learn to be preventative without victim blaming. Okay? But also, she's allowed to feel violated without making him out to be a predator.
spoken out, but have distanced themselves and pay attention to the people that are speaking out. Uh, because I can tell you, it's not just me. It really isn't. Um, and there are other things that have happened, but that isn't my story to tell. I can only tell so much because those aren't my stories. Mm -hmm. You know, other things, those aren't my stories to tell. Um, but it is, it's the things that, it's just, um, don't worry, I'm <laughs> trying to not prolong this. Um, the three main things I said. Athena with the super chat says, I think her feelings are valid, but in her own heart, but nothing makes sense to me. Who's her friend and who is it? Who watched this happen and who didn't? Yeah, obviously, right? There's so much going on here. Uh, again, I think like humans are going to human. This is part about being a, this is like the weirdest part about being a person. Look, I know so many things about your favorite YouTubers behind closed doors. Maybe not you guys, but I know things about your favorite YouTubers. The thing is like, even if you came out about them, nobody would care because everyone's kind of toxic enough to like not care because everyone's doing their own bullshit. You know what I mean? And so for me, I try to just like set a boundary, keep my distance because people like toxicity more than they admit. And that's why they take risks because they kind of like the thrill of it. That's why I think it says something about you, like like how you conduct yourself. <clears throat> Not necessarily who you know, because I know lots of very unsavory people, but more like what, how you conduct yourself. And then if you're willing to, look, I have friends that I disagree with. And I'd be willing to say like, hey, don't date my friends. He's kind of like dramatic right now. And some people are like, I can't believe you would say that about your friend. And I'm like, why not? Like, I love my friends, but like, don't date them. They're a mess. But like also, maybe my friend is like offended that I said that. But also look at your life. Why would you recommend somebody to date you? You're a mess. But it's because people don't want to admit they're a mess while being a mess. Some of the messiest people I know are some of the most lovable people I know. I still wouldn't recommend dating them. And they might be offended about that. Get over it. You gotta get over it, bro. I would say don't date Katie. She doesn't seem ready. Right? And that's okay. She doesn't have to be ready to date. I would say... I don't know if George is ready to be someone's husband, but it sounds like he needs to work on a lot more introspection, right? I feel like George needs a lot more work. I'll say it again and again. I love Sneeko. Stop dating him. He will cheat on you. Okay? Listen to people when they tell you who they are. And I don't know if people are really ready to do that. In my first stream, and the three important things in this story, age, power, and consent. Two things, again, he's conveniently... <clears throat> not acknowledged or conveniently didn't acknowledge at the time. The age, the age gap, obviously. Again, my story's about consent, but these are really important to, these will explain my thought process, just the way things played out. Katie uh, the Hart, age Katie gap, Hart, yes, Katie it's important Hart, to know. Uh, again, not freshly 18, freshly out of high school, uh, 18 and five months, uh, and he was 26. Mia says, guys, I know a lot of bad stuff about Brittany, but I can't say what it is. Just trust me, bro. Mia's right. She does. She knows everything bad about me, which is my ass is bad as fuck, bro. Just kidding. That was sexual. It's hard not to be sexual. You know what I'm saying? It's just kind of fun sometimes, you know? Ask your mom. I was with her last night. She said the same thing. Um, it's also important to acknowledge. Hold on. I didn't. Again, not freshly 18, freshly out of high school. Uh, 18 and five months. Yeah, but like you're a legal adult, girl. It's not a case. I'm so sorry. I, I, I understand the energy of it. But she's also an adult. Like at the end of the day, it is what it is what it is, right? Uh, and he was 26. Yeah, it's not my favorite thing either. I hate an age gap. But also, what are you going to do? Um, It's also important to acknowledge this age gap because of the experience gap. Uh, the way that he came out in his video and said what he did to me was tame for him. Um, and how it's something that has affected me so much. People have different perceptions of things. If you ask a religious person, does a good girl kiss at the end of the date? Maybe they'd say no. If you ask a secular person, maybe they'd say yes. And you know what I mean? That's why Katie is valid, but obviously why Katie and George should never have interacted. Because they don't, they don't understand each other. They're so not on the same page. Because it was the first time. And if I could have, if I knew, I wouldn't have 
you know, if I had the choice of where my first time being sexual or whatever, I would have not picked there. I would have not picked it in front of multiple people. Um, but again, it's important how it was tamed to him, but also the age gap of, you know, if that was tamed to him or if he's done stuff like this before, you think he'd know better. Uh, knowing better is like a wrong way to view it. Guys, think of a guy or a girl, you know, in their 50s, 60s. Think of a man or a woman, you know, in their 50s or 60s who definitely doesn't know better. People don't know better because they're old. They don't know better because they're a gender. Nobody knows better. Everyone only knows what they know. I don't expect Katie to know better. I don't expect anyone to know better. You know what I mean? Shadow B says, aren't you married? Why would you fuck my mom? Who do you think I'm married to? Um, the power imbalance. No, I didn't fucking bring up power and say how I was excited to be there because of his clout. I wasn't fucking using him for his clout. That's not why power is important here. But she said that. She did say in her original video she thought it was the price she had to pay to hang out with bigger YouTube content creators and to network. So she did say that. Which is why I'm curious on who wrote her first statement. Here. Him going and being like, I feel used. <sighs> Fucking cry me a river. That's not why I brought up the power. Why power is important in this is because I, I looked up to them. I was an aspiring creator, and these were the biggest <clears throat> creators in the industry. Like, well, that was your first problem. If you're only hanging out with content creators because you see them as different from you, you're not ready to hang out with them. Look, I'm an adult content creator. I don't care if you have 20 million views or if you're fucking Trump himself. We're peers. As far as I'm concerned, we're both adults. But if you are with the biggest content creators ever and you are admitting there's a power dynamic, you shouldn't be in the room with them. You shouldn't be in the room with them. And the fact that she didn't know that is my biggest problem. If you feel this way, you should not engage with them because you're basically asking adults to babysit you, which I think is very unfair. It is so weird to ask other adults, can you babysit me while I'm at this event? Either you're old enough and ready enough to engage and whether you're like you're either ready to be seen as peers and equals or you shouldn't be engaging. And she, she can't expect those content creators to be the ones to tell her not to come to the party. She has to be the one to do it. She's the adult. Like they're both adults. But you know, she's the irony. She's giving George so much responsibility over her agency. Like that's kind of the irony. Is she saying, hey, I'm going to give I'm going to call this man a predator and a sexual assaulter, and I'm going to give him the responsibility of keeping me safe. And this is how humans operate, and that's why humans are so confusing. Oh, my nose. Oh, my nose. Oh, my allergies. Like, I, I, before I started streaming, I watched these people. I watched the Dream SMP. Like, I did that shit. I looked up to them. I was excited being around them because I was excited to be around such successful people, not because I only see people for their followers, but because I've, I've looked. That's the problem. You know, when I went hung out in Miami with ABBA and everybody, I was so excited to meet them because I was ready to fight them. Like I would fight a bear. I could take ABBA in a fight. Ask ABBA to fight me, bro. Ask ABBA to fight me, bro. I'll take ABBA in a fight. I'll take Sneeko in a fight. I'll take a bear in a fight. I'll take them all in a fight. That's the only reason I wanted to meet any of these bitches. Not that I met Sneeko, but Abba knows. Abba knows he would lose if I ever fought him. Kuro with the super chat says, not really trying to nitpick here, but in her first video, she says 18 and a virgin at the time. To me, that means she looks back and sees what he did to her as not tame, even after having some experience. She looks back and says what he did as not tame. Are you saying that she thinks it was like losing a virginity and a virgin at the time? To me, that means she looks back and sees what he did as not tame, even after having some experience. Yeah, I think that makes sense. You know, how about two bears? Oh, three bears, girl. Brit versus Sneeko 2024. He could never, bruh. He wishes, bro. He wishes. The point is, is like, look, okay, leave Abba alone. He, just, I'll fight him too. Fight him. Mm, w, ooh, you know, mm. Not preach, though. We respect preach. You know, we disrespect Abba. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Shout out. Love Abba. He's a friend. Anyways, you know what I'm saying? It's like, how weird would that have been if I had shown up and been like, oh my God, you're like, girl, are you an adult or not, girl? But she's not. She's not ready. She should know that. She should know that. 
You know what I mean? She should know she's not ready to hang out with them. If you're admiring people, um, I don't think you should. You know, okay, here's what I noticed. Can I tell you guys something? Okay, this is just for you. Can I tell you guys something? <sighs> okay, I got to tell you something. I noticed, and this is no hate, but I noticed there's a certain kind of fan, okay, there's a certain kind of fan that belongs to these communities, and I've noticed a trend where you guys start streaming careers just to talk about the community. And I don't know if you know that that's weird. Like, I noticed that people reached out to me to, like, collab and stuff. And I say no to most collabs because I'm very, like, private about – see, I have boundaries because I don't know who's reaching out. I don't know if it's another Katie. But I don't collab all the time. But I realized as I was looking through your profiles, a lot of you just become streamers to talk about your favorite streamers. And I don't know if you know that's weird to somebody who's like, this is my career. And I don't know if you know, like, that's absolutely the reason I wouldn't reach out to you. Because it's like, oh, you're having a major parasocial relationship with the content creators. So no offense. So Katie, like, I don't want another, I don't want a Katie in my life. Like, I don't want somebody who's only interested in talking to streamers so they become content creators to talk to streamers. Like, I don't want those people in my life. I want content creators that are good at their jobs who happen to collab with other content creators because we're all doing our own things. And so I don't know if, like, I'm paying attention to that. When people ask me for collabs, I'm like, do you have your own shit? Or are you just becoming a content creator to talk to other people? So if somebody in my life was like, oh my God, Brittany, I love your work. You're amazing. I feel so flustered being around you. We're not engaging. We're not equals. Now I feel weird. Now you're making me feel weird. Because you're seeing me like something I'm not. I'm just a person. So, because like shit like this happens where people start playing the power games and all that shit. Not good. Looked up to these people and that's why it's so much more heartbreaking. Uh, I mean, being violated is one thing, but who it comes from is also. Um, and again, it's not... I wasn't going to use this and use their clout. Also, I stayed silent for so long because I knew how much power they had. I mean, you've seen, there are people to this day that stay silent about their experiences. Doe, thank you for the super chat. Says, keep Abba out of your mouth. Asmin Gold, though. Don't you come for Asmin, bro. I love Asmin, bro, but I would take Asmin in a fight. But of course I would. Asmin can't fight. Asmin loses. Asmin can't even. You go. Asmin to the ground. We love him. Okay, we love him. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. Because of what's happening to me right now. You saw what has happened to me since I came out. About how smart they are with these situations and how th there's people, there's, there's creators that have messaged me about their stories but say they're still scared to do it. I mean, it's even the fact of the power in the situation of we have the same fucking Twitch manager. Like, Oh. Yeah, you should probably switch Twitch managers. <clears throat> See, I'm not involved with Twitch. How does that work, guys? What's a Twitch manager? How does that work? I had so much. Did she have a following before she collabed? Or is her following only because they collabed? It cost. I put, I put up with it all. I After it happened, I didn't want it to happen. But, you know, I was just trying to forget about it because... We have the same Twitch manager. The reason I was at VidCon in the first place, the reason I got a meet and greet back in TwitchCon and- Hey, Aelin, I don't like you sexualizing Katie in the chat. It's like super inappropriate. Like, you know what I mean? Like, cut it out or I'm gonna block you. I don't like it. Don't sexualize her in the chat. Don't be weird, guys. Okay. Got to meet my viewers for the first time. Moments that mean so much to me was all thanks to my Twitch manager. Without that, I wouldn't be able to do content. I wouldn't be able to continue. They didn't collab. Uh, they never collabed. Okay. And they told me, again... She rose with the dream SMP wave. Is that supposed to be like simp wave? 
this they didn't tell me in a malicious or threatening way but i just learned that night again through questions and games we were playing um they have the same twitch manager that would do anything for them i mean if i came out about anything i'm not saying they would have used that. did you only get that twitch manager because they put in a good word for you or did you get that twitch manager that's the question is like, did Katie get picked up by the Twitch manager because she was a content creator or because George and Dream put in a good word for her? That, but I hope you guys would understand how I was in a place of, I was scared of their power, you know, and- Wait, she's saying, she's trying to say that George would have ruined her career with the Twitch manager. What, there's no collab, she's assuming malice on his part. Well, she always assumes malice. That's why I'm telling you she's distorted. One of the reasons I think her she's distorted is because she's she's a a a a, a um, uh, assigning a lot of malicious intent to George. Like we can't read his mind, but she expected him to read hers in a way, but not read hers because she expected him to ask. But like it was very confusing. Everything was too confusing. DSP or DS or DSP is a Dream Survival Multiplayer Craft. Oh, okay, I thought it was Simp. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I acknowledged their power and their fame, not because I was acknowledging them. Nah, they never knew her. Okay, so wait, hold on. They didn't even know her before those nights. Oh yeah, the guys didn't even know who she was. What am I talking about? This is even more confusing. Wait, yeah, they didn't even know her. So who got it into her head? That she, like, why does she think this about people? Is it because of the different friend group? Like, can someone explain? That's the part I'm so lost on. You know what I mean? Is she confused? Who told her the guys were like this? You know? For their numbers and not for who they were as a person, but because I acknowledge no! that my future could be Did over. Even watch his second because response? of the connections that he they had. The I'm so annoyed with her for having those sounds on. Does she not know what's happening because she doesn't have her earphones in? Or no, she has her earphones on. Why is she letting her sound background happen? And in my own life, Why like in my own success that I was having as a creator, they, my biggest, you know, contributor to that success was someone that they were also tied to and had way more, you know, say over. Um, and also the biggest thing about power in that situation, again, I, I, I had so much at risk. I had to suck up what happened to me. That's what I'm talking about. Putting up with it. Hmm. I'm saying that because. Coriander with the super chat says she had no attachments to George until it until the event. She wasn't a part of the DSMP. She got the Twitch manager like a year prior and it holds no weight to her career. Yeah, it's interesting. She's saying, OK, I'm going to say this because I think it's important. She is saying everything. That does often happen in victim situations, but she's not giving enough evidence that it's actually happening to her. So she is correct. In some situations, YouTubers will take advantage of fans slash new creators. In some situations, content creators will convince their audience that like it was a mistake and a miscommunication. In some situations, they'll use their connection and networking to basically ruin someone's career. In some situations, that absolutely is true. Power dynamics are real. People fucking fuck with you. It's a whole thing. I'm not sure that this is happening here. And it's not because I don't want to believe her. It's just because the way that it's all turning out doesn't make sense. So when we say it's not a big deal, he touched her boob if that's what happened. We're not saying it's not a big deal. We're saying the thing that happened and your reaction isn't making sense. Right? It's like if I went and a homeless guy like took his pants down in front of me and I called the cops and I was like, I've been raped. It's like, well, that doesn't make sense. Oh, I've been sexually like um, attacked in some capacity. Well, that's not really what's happening. Oh, I've been sexually harassed. That might be more accurate. Maybe I'm being sexually harassed if he's following me around with his dick out. But you want to be accurate with your language because why is this happening? But I wouldn't. Because I'm like, eh, it's just a homeless guy. He's probably fucking mentally ill. Like, yeah, what are you going to do? As long as he doesn't touch me, I don't care. Right? Like, as long as he doesn't touch me, I don't care if you're pissing in the alleyway. Just don't fucking touch me. Don't follow me. If you follow me, if you touch me, I'll probably call the cops. But if you're just, like, pissing in an alleyway, like, I don't fucking care. Okay? So, again, I think, like, I want her to look at the context and say, okay. Um, I'm on a couch. The guy touches my tit. And I'm like, oh. 
I'm not really into that. Could you move your hand away? But like, that's the thing is like, I wouldn't have got into a situation where I didn't feel safe versus like you're in a situation where you feel really safe and then something bad happens. But I can't tell which one it is because she's saying there's a power dynamic. How do you feel safe in a power dynamic? But also I come from a perspective and this is my perspective. This is my generation. This is my bubble. I do think I could probably fuck my boss without it going par badly, but not if my boss used it to fire me or threatened me and said, hey, you have to have sex with me or I'll fire you. I would just be like, I quit, bro. Also, he's a bitch. And also everyone should know he's like blackmailing his employees. But also like, I think in another universe, like I dated a girl once. Ooh, story time. I dated a girl, loved her. We used to go to Disneyland as our dates. I dated a girl and she eventually became my manager in my department. So I moved departments so we could keep dating because we weren't allowed to date managers. So you know what I'm saying? There was a power dynamic that eventually occurred because she became manager while I was dating her. But you see how I just moved? You see how I just moved departments so we could still date? But it didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're, I don't even know what we're talking about here if we're talking about like understanding how adult dynamics work. So again, I think there's like a miscommunication happening when there's alcohol involved, when there's weed involved, love weed, shout out. When there's, you know, subscribers, if their subscribers matter, she shouldn't hang out with them. That's like me hanging out with PewDiePie and not being able to be friends with Felix because he has 100, 000, 100 million subscribers. Why would that matter? Like, why would it matter? Or I guess I should use a real life friend. What are Abba and I not allowed to be friends because he has like 2 million followers and I have like not even 100,000 subscribers? P.S. guys, subscribe so we can reach 100,000 subscribers this year. But you know what I mean? Am I not supposed to be friends with Abba because he has 2 million subscribers? Well, that feels unfair to both me and Abba. That feels so unfair that we're grown adults. We're both in our 30s. Why wouldn't we be able to be friends just because we have a different subscriber count? And I think if you think that way, that's okay. But that means you can't be friends with them. Not that they can't be friends with you. Right? George could have been friends with her. But she's saying she can't be friends with him because of the subscriber count difference. Okay. Then don't interact with him. Why are you being weird? Because I didn't want my future at stake because I got assaulted. Um, but also the power that he took by doing it in front of people. I'm a very shy person. The power he took by doing it in front of people? Is that what she said? That's my problem. Now she's assigning a thought process to George that I'm not convinced he was having. Steak because I got assaulted. Um, but also the power that he took by doing it in front of people. The power he took by doing it in front of people. He probably didn't think I'd like it that way, but he could have been. So what evidence do we have that George could have been thinking about it that way, right? Doe with the super chat says, originally thought the video was about destiny after I saw his tweet. Now I'm waiting to see what Abba and Brittany think. So thank you. Wait, what video? After I saw his tweet. Originally thought the video was about destiny after I saw his tweet. Now I'm waiting to see if what Abba and Brittany think. So thank you. I feel like I'm a little lost, but I love that. Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate that. Um, so yeah, like, I want to know. I want to know. I'm a very shy person. Um, it's hard for me to say, you know, to stand up for myself in regular situations. Wouldn't it be safer for him to do it in public so everybody knows it's consensual? I have another story. A girl accused me of taking advantage of her. Would you guys like to hear this story? One of the first women I ever interacted with sexually was a friend of mine that I had for a while. She was pretty promiscuous in our friend group and cheated on her husband. So she was kind of a hoe, but also was really ashamed of it and would often accuse people of taking advantage of her because she was ashamed of it. I didn't realize this at the time, but we had gone for mimosas because we were all very into the gay brunch scene, went for mimosas and went back to her place with a friend, right? And I, she and I start getting hot and heavy. Our friend is watching you know, we're all girls, three girls together. We're all, we've all had mimosas. We're all having fun. Okay. The girl who is watching us has a camera and goes, can I take pictures of you guys? And we're like, whatever. She starts taking photos of us as I'm pulling off my friend's pants. And I'm like, are you okay with this? Is this okay? Do you like this? Do you want this? And she'd be like, no, no, I don't want it. I'd be like, okay. And then I'd stop touching her. She's like, no, 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 don't stop touching me. And I'm like, okay. 
So like you're into it. And we were both drunk, but I was like, okay, you're into it. And she was like, no, like, but yes, but like, you know, and she was like, no. And I was like, okay, so you're doing like the fighting thing, right? Like we're fighting, we're doing the like fake fighting thing. And so she's like, oh my God, don't do it. Don't do it. And then I'd be like, okay, we're not doing it. I would literally stop. And then she'd be like, no, keep going. And I'm like, okay, so you want it. It was like, so it was new. I was 21. I was a virgin, never been with anyone in my whole life. She was the first, first, first girl that I had any, anything with. And again, our friend was there. We had all done stuff before. We've all cuddled. We've all slept at each other's houses. We've all hunked each other's boobs. At this point, we had all been like very how I met your mother, okay? So finally, we get to the point where I stop and I go, hey, I need to make sure you really want to do this because if you don't want to do this, like, you know what I mean? She goes, no, I definitely want to do this, but can our friend leave the room because I feel embarrassed having her watch us? And I was like, yeah. So our friend went and waited outside the apartment just in front of the door on the other side of the window. So we went, we fooled around. I pulled down her pants. I played with her. We did our whole thing. I kept my clothes on. We had some fun. Nothing big, like no big deal. Just like very casual, not full on sex. Just okay. After our friend came back in, we all went out and partied. We had a bunch of fun. It was midday, by the way, after brunch. Okay, didn't think anything about it. Just didn't think anything about it. Then, like a few days later, she goes, I feel like you took advantage of me. I was like, what? How? And she was like, well, I feel like I was drunk. I was like, first, we were both drunk. And there was a person watching us. And you gave verbal consent multiple times. And I'm so confused. And then a year later, she apologizes to me and says, sorry, I was fighting a lot of sex shame at the time. And I was so embarrassed that I was sleeping around with everybody and I just felt like it contradicted how I felt about myself as a Republican and a conservative. And I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, it is kind of weird how like pro-gay you are and you're sleeping with everyone and you're doing things. And like she had problems with trauma and she used to steal things a lot. And that eventually eroded the friendship. Eventually the friendship eroded because she was like lying constantly. But here I am virginal, 21. I don't know any better. I'm thinking I met this girl in the Republican scene. We're all chilling. She knows I'm a, like at the time I identified as a lesbian, I'm pansexual, but like, you know what I mean? And it was like a really big life lesson that the universe taught me. Huge life lesson that the universe taught me. And I think these are the lessons that the universe sends you or your God or whoever you think put you here. And then you have to decide how to grow from it and not repeat those mistakes. It took a few more mistakes for me to realize like, okay, people be lying. How do I find people that aren't going to lie to me? Well, first, you got to find people that don't lie to themselves. And trying to find people who don't lie to themselves is actually the hardest part. Because once they lie to themselves, they have no choice but to lie to you because they don't even know they're lying. Once Katie decided this was her reality, she couldn't help but tell us that's the reality because she doesn't know any better. You know what I mean? What are we going to do about it? Once she decided this was the reality, this is how she saw things, it doesn't matter if it's true or not because this is like her, this is her thought process. So then it says, I feel bad for the husband getting cheating on. No, 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 She didn't cheat on the husband. She was divorced when she was with me, for the record. She had cheated prior with somebody else, another Christian, of course, another guy. They had cheated together. When she and I did stuff, she was already divorced, for the record. I don't sleep with married people. Thank you. And I knew her husband, so I wouldn't have done that. So for the record, I do not sleep with married people. I do not cheat. I've never cheated. I do not participate in cheating. Okay. Um, but yeah, that was like, that was so interesting. I learned a lot of life, life lessons in those early 20s. I learned that people really do lie to themselves. And so they will lie to you. They don't even mean to do it, but it will happen. But I feel like if that sexual move or you know wanting to take it to the next level if it was done in a private setting maybe i could have mustered up enough courage to say no i'm not comfortable with this or to rip his hands out of my fucking bra uh but he did it in on a couch with other people sitting next to us and with other people in the room any you know any expression i did anything i did it was on display for other people. He took the power away from me in that situation. Um, and once again, the consent aspect. I understand if you think I'm full of shit. I understand if you don't believe me at all. 
I understand if those two things you think I'm full of shit about, you know, who cares? Ah, uh, Zen, this says, I still sucks she lied about you. I remember the story hurt you so much. Well, to be fair, I've let go of all my hidden anger for people. It did hurt me. At the time, that hurt me so bad, right? It's like my first queer experience. I was like so excited. But what are you going to do? People have their own journeys in life, you know? Honestly, therapy and philosophy really saved my life, guys. It's just crazy what people will do. But honestly, they just do it because they think it's right. And then you got to have the boundaries. You got to say, hey, I'm not asking you to stop. I'm just pulling myself away from the situation. You can be who you're going to be. I'm just not going to engage. That's why those friendships end. Because I'm just not going to go on that journey with you. But like you do you. You know? Haley says she's giving him way too much power. Well, that's the problem. Katie really thinks. Katie really gives him so much of the power. And I think that's the problem. Right? That is the problem. Is that you can't give him the power to decide how you feel about things. That's up to you. He never took any power. He never tried to use his power. She doesn't tell a story where he did use his power. She assumes that what he, what, that's what he did, but she never gave any evidence that's what he did. She always made an action as if she, he would use her power, his power against her, but he never actually does. It's about the age. Who cares about, you know, the power imbalance in the situation? The ah, John says she was too drunk to leave the room, but not that drunk to remember all of the detail. That's what's difficult. That's what's so difficult. She was too drunk to leave the room, too drunk to advocate her for herself, too drunk, too drunk, too drunk. But here we are, reading, reading George's mind, knowing exactly what happened. Yeah. Consent is always fucking there. <sighs> he admitted, I never gave verbal consent. Again, the only question he asked is, are you ticklish? I said fucking no. Like, there was no consent given. Yeah, that is true. She never gave verbal consent. The question is, does George need verbal consent to touch her? Some would say yes, some would say no. You have to know, George is responsible for knowing who he's dealing with. I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> George is responsible for knowing, but he doesn't know this. He doesn't know he's responsible. But he needs to learn that this is the lesson the universe is sending George. You are responsible for knowing who you're dealing with. You're responsible for knowing if she's the kind of person who needs verbal or not verbal consent. And she's responsible for letting him know she needs verbal or not verbal consent. You know what I mean? Um, it doesn't matter if you're laughing. It doesn't matter what you're wearing. It doesn't matter where you are. Uh, that is not an invitation. Um, and for everyone saying, well, you could have gave nonverbal consent. I will tell you right now, if I was given the opportunity to give even nonverbal consent, my answer would have always been no. I'm asexual. I don't like sexual stuff. Um, given the option of doing something sexual, my answer is going to be no. I'm on the spectrum of asexual, which I don't know if it's because of my bad experiences, but anything sexual makes me extremely uncomfortable. Wait. Wait. Oh, it. Oh, comfortable. The answer is going to be no. I'm on the spectrum of asexual, which I don't know if it's because of my bad experiences, but. Oh, eh, oh, eh. What do you mean? What bad experiences? There's more than one? She's 18 by this time. Because listen, you're either asexual without bad experiences or. You're what I call performatively asexual, which is valid, meaning like not interested in sexual stuff because of experiences. But these two are different thing, right? Ace people cannot wait, can be not sex repulsed. That's true. Lots of asexual people have sex with their partners. They're not sex repulsed. Some people are sex repulsed. So why does she have multiple situations? Which bad experiences? Because people who have many bad experiences... Has she ever gone to therapy for those bad experiences? Do you, because this was my theory day one. This was my theory in the first video. Do y'all remember my theory? My theory was that I bet she's been hurt already and George triggered that thing, right? 
but she didn't, she put it on George because of her past experiences. Do you remember that? I told you my theory, she has been hurt before. And that George triggered her, not that he assaulted her, but that it made her feel like it was happening again. You know what I mean? I told you this was my theory. That's what I told you, right? And so I think that's actually what happened. I actually believe she's been hurt before. I do believe this. And I, and I do think that George triggered her accidentally. And I believe this. And I'm saying that's why I wonder if she went to therapy. So she could know is she mistreating people accidentally because hurt people hurt people. Is she repeating the cycle of hurt because she didn't know? Oh, but Raya said she, it was her first sexual experience. Well, not everyone counts their assaults. I don't count my assault as a sexual experience. I don't know if you guys do that. But when I count how many sexual partners I've had, I don't count my rape. Do you guys count your rape? Because I don't count mine. So when people ask me, like, how many partners have I been with? Like, I don't, I don't add that number in. You know what I mean? Um, I'll explain that, but I don't add the number. So maybe she's saying, I've never had past, like, this is the furthest I've ever gone. So touching her boob, she said, was the furthest she's ever gone sexually. Mm, okay, this is the part of the story that gets a little confusing. Even more so. Okay, yeah, mm, I would have to talk to her. I would have to ask her. Mm, yeah, I'd need more, mm, I'd need more clarification on this. Okay, you guys don't count it either. Okay, okay, based. Yeah, I think that's pretty common for us not to count it. Like, I don't know many people who do count it. So I think that makes sense. Okay, this is interesting. Yeah, she said that she, that the touching of the boob was the furthest she's ever gone sexually. But now she's saying she's not sure if she's asexual because the bad things she's, you know. Oh, mm, I think she just... This has been the first time that I've seen a huge inconsistency, if I'm being honest. Because I know you guys said there were inconsistencies before, but this one's really good. Really bad. But this one's real. This is a real inconsistency. George is the furthest she's ever gone, but I think I'm asexual because of my bad first experience or my bad experiences. Yeah, I would say this is her big, her super bad, like super bad mishap. Because now I don't, now... Mm, sorry, girl, you fucked up. This is a fuck up. Oh, she'd have to explain this. Maybe a misspeak? Maybe. Maybe she misspoke? I mean, maybe she misspoke, but this is, uh, yeah. Discord said this and a few other things making me have a hard time not assuming she's kind of trying to manipulate wording to purposely paint George as terrible as possible by implying him preying on her. Yeah, per I mean, yeah, for sure. But this was the first time that she got a little, all right, this is a big oops. Let's keep watching. Anything sexual. Oh, hold on. Tom Furler in the chat says, counting it in a group of consensual experiences would be weird. But if she only has non-consensual experiences, then she has nothing else to count. Mm, maybe. What are the chances of that? Where'd this girl grow up, bro? Maybe. I don't know what Gen Z... I don't know what Gen Z is like experiencing. I don't know what their life is experiencing. Let's rewind it a bit and try to re-listen. Answer would have always been no. Okay. I'm asexual. So she's not into George. It would have always been no. She wasn't into him. Sexual? I don't like sexual stuff. I don't like sexual stuff. Um, given the option of doing something sexual, my answer is going to be no. I'm okay. on the spectrum of asexual. Valid. Which I don't know if it's because of my bad experiences, but anything sexual makes me extremely uncomfortable. Okay. Um, so let's say under the circumstances, I'm drunk and I could have gave nonverbal consent. I would have still said no, nonverbally. However the fuck I could have done that. I believe that. That's why I said I believe she really does think it was sexual assault. But also, you can accidentally touch a girl's boob and not mean to sexually assault her. So that's what I mean. I'm okay calling it sexual assault if we mean that we're not going to hold it against George because it was a mistake. Or I'm not okay calling it sexual assault if by calling it sexual assault, he has to be held accountable to something that was a mistake. I just feel like the only thing he needs to be accountable for is being like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, bro. I misread the situation. And then you go, okay, don't do it again. And then he doesn't do it again. Um... And again, I'm I'm fucking drunk. Oh, you were laughing. Oh, you were doing I'm fucking drunk. 
with my friends. How how did I? Um, the reason I brought up this entire situation and what I was I was hoping to bring. No, chemistry says how can she say that? But also admit to cuddling and touching um, a guy. Cuddling isn't sexual. If you guys think it is, then I don't want you around children because you know you can cuddle children and not be sexual. Cuddling is not sexual. If you grew up in that bubble, that's your business. But like in my bubble, you can cuddle with your cousins. You can cuddle with your friends. You can cuddle with your parents. You can cuddle with friends and not be sexual. I don't know who raised you that you're not allowed to cuddle your friends, but I was not raised like that. And I was raised in a conservative bubble. You think I didn't cuddle with my friends? So again, I don't know why cuddling is sexual. So she could have cuddled with people and had it been totally platonic. Okay. Super important. Okay. Cuddling is not always sexual. If it is for you, that's fine. But you're telling on yourself and that's fine. Okay. Light too. This wasn't about fucking, this wasn't about him. This wasn't about him. I was trying to bring light to blind idolization. How dangerous it is. Coming from someone who was a viewer. How dangerous, dangerous. She shouldn't have been hanging out with them. Come, like saying that right there, she's literally telling on herself. She's saying, I don't even see myself as an adult. I don't even see myself as an equal. I don't, then why were you in the room with them? You know what I mean? Have you guys never cuddled drunk with your friends like puppies? You guys are missing out. Let me tell you, I had to dismantle. Guys, if racism can be dismantled, you think cuddling can't? Again, things are constructs. Is gender even real? Okay. Literally, if you've never cuddled with your friends, I don't even know. You're missing out. Okay. You're missing out. You're missing out. And that's your business. I don't live in those bubbles. I've sought out very awesome people in my life. I've gone to cuddle parties. I've hung out with people. I love hanging out with people that are like, you ever hung out with a hippie or a nudist? It's like saying nudism is always sexual. Um, okay. Have you ever traveled the globe? Have you ever gone to different countries? Nothing is always, always. Everyone does things different than you, okay? So you do you, but like, that's not, the, that's not just not true. If George and Dream cuddle because they're drunk, are they being sexual together? Or are they just friends who are cuddling? With a person you don't know, though? I've cuddled with people I don't know. Yeah, and it's been great. Like I said, there's always gonna be bad circumstances, but if you're with really good people, Everything can be safe, but you have to be with safe people. I've cuddled with strangers. I've, I've never had anyone fill me up. I've always had a good time. If people mistake, if people misread the situation, we just correct them and they go back to being normal. Again, everybody has a different lived experience. Your lived experience is fine, but if you think sexual, like cuddling is always sexual, then Katie's right. Touching a boob without verbal consent is always essay. If you think cuddling is always sexual, then touching a boob without verbal consent is always sexual assault. That's what you're doing right now. You are saying, no matter the intent, no matter what people say, it's always this way. You are doing a Katie. So make a decision. Make a decision. Is cuddling always sexual? Then touching a boob without verbal consent, definitely sexual assault. Make a decision. Which one is it? Kid with the super chat says, are they, are they her friends or not? She keeps switching. Um, friendly. I think they're friendly. Because what does friends mean? I'm friends with a lot of people I don't know. You feel me? I know a lot of YouTubers. We all call each other friends. I don't know these people. I've never hung out with them offline. I don't know their real names. I don't know their families. Z-Man says, I cuddle with my bros all day. Let's go. Bros in the chat. You know. Cuddles in the chat, let's go. Dangerous it is to blindly idolize these people that you don't know. And I always tell my viewers that, to not idolize me to the point of defending me till like you die. You know, it's, mm. it's unhealthy. Um, people, people aren't gonna be, not everyone is who they seem. And it's a hard pill to swallow, but it's important to swallow it. You know what I mean? Like. And especially in these kind of situations where you're so, you idolize someone to the point of where something bad comes out about them and you just dig for excuses for them. For sure. That does happen. Absolutely. Right? That does happen. We know it happens. We see people bat for people no matter how bad their behavior all the time. We see that. It's normal. We all do that. And the question is, is how are you batting? 
Like I always try to meet people where they're at, which some people always think that's me defending them. I'm not defending your bad actions. I'm just saying I know why you did them. And I'm saying like, you know, you can hold yourself accountable. But again, I don't believe like audiences need to hold their content creators accountable. You need to hold yourself accountable for watching who you watch, which is different. But Katie already said she didn't hold herself accountable because she said she was going into that event, right? Knowing she was a fan, knowing there was a power dynamic. So she didn't even respect herself enough to not go. And then she'll say, well, I was drunk before I got there. Okay. You made a lot of mistakes that night. Welcome to consequences. Also, George made a lot of mistakes that night. Welcome to consequences. Just so many excuses <sighs> instead of just accepting it. You know, that's where it gets dangerous. That's where it's dangerous for everyone involved. Um, it's, it's, again, I know how hard something like this can be to accept. It's like, you know, if your best friend, you know your best friend so much, and they, someone comes to you and says they did something to them. You don't want to believe it because you know. Well, I mean, I might believe it. I have crazy friends. Look. If somebody came to me and said, hey, one of your brothers did this, I'd be like, which brother? Which one? Hey, your best friend did this. Which one? Because some of my best friends be wild. Some of them might have done something. But mostly it's because humans are going to human. The question is, if they really did that thing, you should probably uh, call the cops. But also some of my siblings, there ain't no fucking way, bro. If someone came and told a lie about somebody I knew, I'd be like, that doesn't match their character. Probably not. But some of my brothers be wild. Now, I'm not talking about grape or anything. But I ain't talking about, I mean, depends. Which brother? Which friend? Who? Which one? Because maybe if it matches their character, not everyone, look, I judge people on their character. What's your values? What would you do when temptation comes your way? If I got a friend that's always cheating, and someone comes to me and goes, your friend cheated. I'd be like, that makes sense. They tend to do that. If they were like, what are you going to do about it? I don't know. Go ask them. They're the adult. What the fuck? Like, they know I don't like cheating. What am I going to do? Go spank them? Don't date my friends. Don't date my cheating friends. But also, what do you want me to do? Go spank them on the bottom? What am I, their mom? I'm not their mom. But like, the, you know what I mean? So again, I think people have this idea that like, oh, I would defend. I would bury a body for my friend. Girl, I ain't going to bury a body for none of you. If you showed up at school, I'm calling the cops on you. I'll visit you in prison because you're like, you're the, you know, but I'm not, I'm not gonna. I didn't make that decision with my life. Okay. Like I love you guys. I'm right or die in the sense that I will always love your consciousness, but I'm calling the cops on you with peace and love. You crazy bitch. Know your best friend and you don't think they could ever do that. I mean, look at them because you know them so well, except you don't fucking know these people you 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 don't know these people they aren't your best friend these are these are people that create content to millions of people they are yeah but she did the same thing she objectified george in the same way she had a parasocial relationship with him and then she she went crazy on him your best friend like you don't you don't know who they could be and again, and that's why I think it's so important. It leaves you in a situation where you're like, well, how can I trust anyone? How can I? It's so important to see the. Yeah. Why would we trust her? Why would we trust them? I don't trust any of them. How about that? I don't trust any of them. Do you know what I trust? I trust my judgment. I don't trust George. I don't trust Dream. I don't trust Katie. You know who I do trust? Me. I trust my judgment. I trust me. I've earned my own trust. She hasn't earned shit from me. I don't know those people. I don't know Dream. I don't trust George. I don't trust none of them. But I trust my judgment. Okay? And my judgment is fucking good, bro. Okay? So I trust my judgment. It's not perfect. It's not perfect. I make mistakes. But damn, it's pretty good. Okay? So that's what we need to do. Don't trust these people. Don't trust Dream or George. You don't know them. I trust me. I trust my judgment of them. And I think it's pretty good. People that do know. These content creators that have spent time with these people, these content creators that do know these people, have had private conversations with these people, speaking out against them. It's so blatantly obvious. 
these people that have seen them behind the scenes. That's true. But how do you know the difference between somebody just having like a principal disagreement with you and then somebody literally thinking you're a predator and talking about it with the internet, right? Because I definitely have a lot of principled issues with people, but like I don't need to make videos outing them, you know, because I do know stuff about your favorites, but it's not enough. You know, it's not that. It's just toxicity. Who cares, bro? I don't care about people being toxic. If you want to talk about it, talk about it. But like they already out themselves. If you can't figure out they're toxic, like honestly, you're kind of dumb. And at that point, maybe the universe is trying to teach you a lesson. You know what I mean? So again, I think what you need to pay attention to is the fact that, again, I don't know what Katie's real motivation is with telling this story. But even if the people know you behind closed doors, you know people hate each other. People spread rumors. People lie about each other. So again, like what if they just don't like you? What if they decide, you know how many people, oh my God, I don't know if you're new to my community. Back in the day, a YouTuber, he, he accused me of running a cult. First of all, I don't have time to run a cult. I'm busy watching anime. I'm literally on episode almost like 700 of One Piece. Everybody relax. Okay, no spoilers in the chat. But literally, the idea that I would be running a cult is like the funniest thing. So now the meme on my channel is that join the Discord, it's a cult, right? It's like a joke because this YouTuber who is totally insane just thought it would be, he's like, yeah, I think you're running a cult, which he eventually took back, of course, because he's a fucking idiot. But the thing is, is he was a grown up in his 30s who had the audacity to make accusations. And that's what I'm saying. This idea that like, just because someone says shit, bro, doesn't mean anything. Lots of people say shit. You know who you should listen to is the content creator. You should pay attention to me. If you think I'm suspicious, hate me for the real me and not the version of me in your head. I don't mind if you hate me, but you got to hate me for the real me, not the version of me in your head. I'm not a cult leader. Nobody's got time to run that cult. But hey, if you guys want to join the cult, join the Discord. 18 plus. Thank you. That have hung out <clears throat> with them, you know, that have distanced themselves since then or that <sighs> have spoken out against them. Um... I was just hoping that this situation could open people's eyes. Um, and again, open your eyes, Lord, help them to see your face. How scary and how open their eyes, Lord. It's just building more and more this this devotion to these people. Um, but I was just hoping to open some people's eyes, I guess. Um, and it's definitely a problem bigger than me. Um, this is just about the behind the scenes of this community, you know, and all the people that have fall fallen victim to it. I mean, there's so much shit that goes down and I'm just one of the ones that have came out about my story. Um, I don't want to sit here and keep having to prove myself. I can't, I can't, I can't sit here and have to watch his responses and see his face and watch him describe it. I, I can't, <laughs> I can't mm. keep doing this. And I'm accepting the fact that uh, maybe, you know, nobody believes me. I'm accepting the fact mm. I've, I'm accepting it. Um, but also... I feel like <laughs> Georgiana says, do you think George needs to make a new statement? I don't know if he needs to make a new statement. Um, but I think ultimately, I think, hmm, I don't know if he needs to make a new statement. But <laughs> Discord says, I still haven't received my cloak, mask, or vibrating butt plug for the cult meetings. I feel slighted. My bad, guys. I'll send those out right away. Sorry. Cult, cult members, I'll send those out right away. Um, yeah, I don't know if George needs to make a new statement. At this point, I think it's pretty clear. Uh, that they just live in completely different bubbles, have a completely different take on things. Neither of them seems to trust themselves very much, but I think they need to learn how to. And I think this is the lesson that the life gives you as a young person is to like, learn how to trust yourself and also learn how to hold yourself accountable by your own metric of value. And like values are very different. And morals are very different. Like they're very difficult to know. They're so specific to you, the consciousness. Um, I'm not even sure where Katie's values lie. But, uh, you know, somewhere here, you know, Kuro with the super chat says one more thing. If she didn't want a career in content creation, why does speaking about this 
uh, actions affect her in terms of the power he holds? Reasons she gave for not coming forward earlier. You know, a great question. I think if I'm not mistaken, I think she wanted to be a content creator, but then everything happened and then she didn't want to be one after all. Is that true? Which by the way, she's allowed to change her mind about later. She is allowed to say, actually, guys, I've decided to be a content creator. So I I'm not sure, but that's a good point. I, I think I'm confused about when she decided not to become a content creator. But also, just a shout out to my normies out there. I don't know if you guys know this. Even though much of the world is on social media posting their problems, I hope you know the most well-adjusted people are not posting their neighbors online. They're not filming people in public. They're absolutely not writing hate comments on videos. And they're certainly not streaming. I say this as a streamer. The healthiest, most adjusted people are certainly not on the internet in the way that we are. And I say this as a streamer. I have just the right amount of trauma to be willing to be on the internet. Okay? And this girl here, if she doesn't want to be a content creator, sure, girl. Sure. Especially in this situation. There's nothing I could say that could change some people's minds. I think, again, because of this idolization, this is how it's dangerous. How, no matter what I say, no matter what proof I come out about, people that don't want to believe will never believe. They will never believe, no matter what comes out. Hey, that's true. I mean, that's true, right? There's always people who won't believe, no matter how much. The guy could confess. The girl could confess. They could, people could literally confess and people are like, nah, not you, bruh, not you. It's like, I'm literally telling you I did it. They're like, nah, not you, bro, not you, bro. It's because they don't want to. <laughs> they will continue to find excuses to not face reality. Um, as for any forgiving or anything, I feel like it's very obvious. I was never in a position to forgive anyone. I didn't yeah, wait, what proof? Oh, well, I guess him admitting it. Like, I guess them saying it. Go into this wanting to forgive <clears throat> any. I mean, I would like George. I Okay, if George comes out and says, I touch her titty. I think I'm okay with that. I still stand by everything I said. But I think that would help clear up some stuff. Because if that's the case, then I, I still think I'm the most right. I still think I'm the most right. If he touched her titty, and it did happen that way, then I think I'm the most right. He genuinely thought... It was consensual. She genuinely thought it was unconsensual. Now they have to argue about who's more right. But the dilemma is both truths can exist at the same time because it's about perception. He comes from a bubble where he didn't think about verbal consent beforehand. She comes from a bubble where she expected consent beforehand. Okay. So, oops, my bad. It's like the reporter that interviewed Saddam Hussein and accidentally crossed his legs and showed the bottom of his shoe and Saddam walked out of the interview. Okay, my bad. Maybe the guy should have done research, some research before he interviewed him. Maybe Saddam Hussein should kill himself. That's a joke because he's dead. Also, he tortured a lot of my family and friends. So, you know. Also, he was a human doing human things. I get it. But okay. We all have a different way to have conversations. So again, bubble meets bubble. Boom. Boom anyone um and again that is my choice by the way fun fact some people loved saddam hussein as he like saved their family members some people hated saddam hussein as he gassed their family members i'm just saying bubbles uh but especially how i've seen the things play out um the way i've been treated um especially since his responses okay uh first of all in a couple years, she's going to have an OF. If you guys talk shit on sex work, I will block you. I am on OF and I fucking love that life. And there's nothing wrong with being on OF. And if she wants to be a sex worker, I think it's fucking beautiful. But if she doesn't want to be a sex worker, that's beautiful. If you sex shame in my chat, I will block you. Because this is my bubble. And in my bubble, no. You can have a difference of opinion, but don't sex shame her. Don't go after her sexually. Don't do that. I would never forgive. Uh, I wouldn't. Um, I've been belittled, blamed, invalidated, been called a liar, been called Amber Heard, been called any name, even though he sat there and admitted to it. Um, again, it's not false allegations when 
I came out about my sexual assault story and he admitted to it. Um, so the amount of victim blaming though has been insane. And in these situations, it's a very real issue that happens. To this day, it happens all the time when someone comes out about something. The people saying, I shouldn't have been illegally drinking. Well, that's what you get for being, you know, illegal, illegally drinking. You know, if I was in the UK, where I am most of the time, uh oh, drinking legally at 18 and this situation still happened, what then? Because I know the people saying it's my fault because I was illegally drinking would just find another reason to blame me. It mm, that's true. That's true. People, victim, victim blaming is unnecessary. You can victim blame uh, and she can still hold herself ac accountable. Like you can, you don't have to victim blame. I just think there's no reason to do that. Now, when we talk about preventative measures, you can do everything right and still get raped. You should still try to do everything right. Just FYI. Because there are ways to suss out the rapist. Example, if she had verbalized, George, don't touch my tits. And then if he said, doesn't matter, and touched her anyway, it's a pretty good way of indicating he's Sassy baka. Even if I was legally drinking, they would find another reason to blame me. It's not about the drinking. It's not about the fact I laughed. It's about the fact that you just want to find a reason to blame me for the situation that happened to me. Um, people saying that I shouldn't have been laughing. That I, shouldn't have, I was drunk. Oh my God, I was drunk. Like, your mindset during that is, it doesn't change what you want and don't want. And again, like, that's not true though people well kind of actually some people have a theory that alcohol exposes the real you i don't think i'm my real self when i'm drunk i'm gonna be real with you but i do think a lot of people drink because they want liquor to courage to do things they never would have done sober so they can use the alcohol as an excuse for doing them i think it just depends on the category of person so when i say categories guys we're all talking about blue we're all talking about drunk people but which f color of drunk people are we talking about are we talking about the drunk people that get drunk and then blame the alcohol for what they do because they wouldn't have been able to do it sober? Or do they drink alcohol in order and then not remember things? Like some people, it takes four shots to get drunk and for other people it takes half a shot. For some people, they remember things when they're blacked out. For some people, they don't. That's why it's called blacked out. For some people, they're so, you know, everyone is so different, right? But I do think a lot of people are willing to blame somebody no matter what. I know people who've had their drink drinks like drugged and people still blame them for drinking the drink. And I'm like, they're, they're, they didn't know their drink was drugged, bro. Like somebody drugged their drink and they're like, they should have known. It's like, how would they have known that? Some people are shitty. Some people blame you for your rapes. Those people suck. Fuck those people. Don't talk to those people. They fucking suck. If people blame you for your rapes, they fucking suck. Okay. Don't talk to them. Have some boundaries. Remove yourself from them. Fuck them. In this situation. Absolute miscommunication happened. And by her definition in her bubble, totally sexually, like sexual assault. Absolutely. And I looked up the qual the um, qualifiers for some places in like at the University of California. I was looking up their consent rules today. Just, I don't, I was doing research. And actually by their definition, it was sexual assault. If she was on college campus and this happened, it would be considered sexual assault. It's a bubble thing. And other bubbles, it's not sexual assault. It depends. The reason we clarified a sexual assault is so if you want to press charges, we can, the law is on your side. Now, if you don't want to press charges because you're consenting to it, that's different. That's why spitting on someone is assault. Guys, if you spit on someone, it is considered assault if you press charges. If you don't press charges because you're consensually allowing your partner to spit on you, then nobody cares. The only reason the law does that is so it gives opportunities for people to press charges if necessary. Like someone does a racist act and a white guy spits on a black person. Obviously, press charges, that's sexual assault and a, sexual assault. That's a, assault and a, and, a, and a hate crime. But if you're in an interracial relationship and someone spits on each other during sex, it's just called a good time because it's consensual. The only reason the law has the, the, the writing is so people, if needed, can go to the law, which by the way, there's still a judge and a jury and there's a whole process. There's a whole process. Okay, but obviously when we're having these conversations, have you never seen someone unconsensually spit on someone? It's obviously assault. Have you ever seen one, seen someone consensually spit on someone? It's kind of a good time. 
Not my thing, but it's kind of a good time. Not my thing, but you know. Like, it's uh, people saying I probably liked it, and now I just regret it. I didn't. I'm telling you, I didn't. I believe her. I believe she didn't want it. I do not believe. I truly believe she did not mean to signal to him that it was okay. I truly believe this was a complete miscommunication. I 1000% believe that she did not flirt with him in a way that to her was real flirting. Because look, I gave flirt with my friends all the time. I'm not inviting you to have sex with me. I can see why you mistook that, but I would just tell you, you know. And yes, he was drunk. He was drunk as well. So he's going to fucking misunderstand communication, bros. So I believe her. And I believe him. I believe George and I believe Katie. I believe both of them had a genuine like situation happen of a complete miscommunication. And now the point is, is she going to believe that? And if she doesn't, I do think that's kind of crazy. And if like he believes her, by the way, George believes her, but he's saying, I didn't mean to do that. It was a mistake. You know what I mean? But if she doesn't recognize that, I think that's because she's been hurt in the past and she really needs to go to therapy. She needs to go to trauma counseling, like a, a specific counseling. Tom Fullery says her text from the next day proved she was uncomfortable. Yeah, I think she needs to go to in, like focused counseling for trauma because she said she's been hurt in the past, which she admitted in this video, which is why I think George might have triggered her accidentally. But I do believe George and I believe Katie at this point. So now we have to talk about what do we do when the situation occurs? It's really tough. It's really fucking tough. I really genuinely hope Katie moves on and I hope George moves on. But now, yes, we go into healing time. Exactly, not impressed. We go into healing time and we go into trauma therapy and we go into forgiveness mode because humans are going to human. And this was a very human situation and it's not the first time it's going to happen. It's not the last. If you interact with people, guys, you will accidentally hug somebody, touch their hair, maybe even kiss them. You'll misread social cues because it's just, it's a part of being a person. Apologize, move on. And if you notice a pattern, if you notice somebody playing dumb to manipulate people, then you can start taking, you know, you can start really putting together some evidence. But I just, I don't think George is lying. And I just don't think Katie's lying. I think they're really misunderstanding the situation. I think George has a much clearer understanding though, because he was very compassionate towards Katie. I'm waiting for Katie to be compassionate towards him. But she is 19 and seems pretty traumatized. I, I don't know how loud I have to shout it. Tom said she didn't say in the past the GNF thing was from eight months ago. No, she said this in this video, though. She said she's asexual and she was asexual when she met George. And she said, I didn't know if I'm asexual from past stuff, meaning when she was asexual, if she, when she met George, meaning past stuff would be prior to George. And again, I'm asexual. I would have never liked it. And then we're see. So she says she's asexual. She's not sure if it's because of past stuff, which means prior to George regretted it i would have never liked it to begin with i'm trying to tell you this i believe that um it's always a she shouldn't have done that she should have done this she shouldn't have been wearing that she shouldn't have done this rather than a simple he shouldn't have done what he did it's 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 never just a simple he should have controlled himself it's it's always it's always you know her fault in these situations and never his for not controlling himself. I don't get it. And I, I know she doesn't get it. And I wish I could explain it to her. He, he wasn't thinking I need to control myself. He was thinking uh, like, you're not thinking like that. You're not thinking. Okay. As a person who was DD so many times in her life, I never like looked at my friends and thought you should control yourself from grabbing your keys when you're drunk. They're drunk. Everyone's drunk. They're a mess. It's messy. That's why drinking is so dangerous. I never thought like drunk people should learn to control themselves. Drunk people are the most people who don't know how to control themselves. Right? What you do is you pre-plan when you're sober. That's why being drunk is so sad because it can lead to like drowning. It can lead to getting assaulted, being misunderstood, accidentally starting a fight with someone you don't mean to. You know what I mean? I don't recommend drinking unless you're with people who can watch you. Or have your back. The one time I got fucked over drinking was in a group of people and I didn't have anyone watching me or having my back. And yeah, I got fucked over, bro.
it sucks, but alcohol is a really dangerous like activity if you don't prepare and if it's not a culture you're used to and you don't have, you know what I mean? I take a drinking buddy, guys. Drinking buddies are really great. Kind of sucks for the sober buddy, but you know, it's nice to have a drinking buddy there. Somebody who's sober and can watch you. So again, I think she's right to have wanted it to gone to have gone differently, but it couldn't have gone differently given the situation because they were both drunk. I would also like to point out it's not a her and he situation uh, because men get assaulted too, okay? Roles are over. That's assault. Men get assaulted too. It can happen to anyone, and that's very real. And that's a conversation that really should be had, uh, but not in this situation. Um, it's not my fault for smiling. Uh, it's not my fault for being there. It's, it's just not... Um, I acknowledge that I was naive. I acknowledge. But I'm not, I'm not going to apologize for being naive. Mia says, think the chat is just split on whether she genuinely thinks this or whether she's a fan whose fantasy was let down and the sound of v soured her view of George. Love seeing both sides, to be honest. Yeah, I think, I don't think she was rejected by George. She rejected him, even by his account and her account. There was nothing like, there's not even a rejection. Actually, I take that back. Nobody was really rejected. It just went the way it went and nothing more happened. Right? I don't think anyone rejected anybody. So there was no reason to, for anyone to feel rejected and they were still friends after. So, yeah. Naive and not realizing, you know, the way the world is sometimes, you know? Um, I would also like to acknowledge, this is another thing that I am going to acknowledge and take accountability for. Um, my goal for coming out about this all, I've strayed very far away from my goal. Um, mm. uh, my goal when I came out about this. Oh, Mia says, I didn't mean the rejection. I meant what she imagined he'd be like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe. That happens. That happens. You can meet someone and be like, oh, I thought you were different. But that doesn't mean, like, you need to make accusations, you know? You know what I mean? She rejected him at the elevator. She didn't reject him, sort of, because he didn't ask her to come sleep with him. She just didn't take the hint to come in the elevator. Isn't that interesting? So she read his mind, right? She was doing a lot of mind reading because he didn't say, come to the elevator, like, come to my room and have sex with me. So she didn't even like reject him in a real way. She just didn't go into the elevator and going into the elevator wouldn't have been consent. That's what's so confusing about the whole thing. Maria with the super chat says she texted her friends and said she was chilling in the moment but thought different afterwards. It sounds like she was consenting at the time but regretted it later. Um, okay. It sounds to me like she was okay with it in general but, but the more she thought about it and the more she heard it from her friends, she decided, actually, I'm really uncomfortable and I'm mad about this. And then instead of actually talking it through with a professional, she probably talked about it with her friends. And she's very probably confused about exactly all of it. How she feels about, like in 10 years, I'm sure she'll have a different relationship with this. How she feels about it, what the relationship is, all of that. You know what I mean? And so I'm not convinced she really even knows how she feels about it now because I think that's the problem with introspection is like in order for her to introspect very deeply she would have to first dismantle all of the trauma in her life dismantle all of the layers like if you watch you they're private now but I used to have videos showing how I would tell the same stories differently and once I dismantled all of them down to like what I think is like actually true I tell the stories differently every time because I'm like oh at this time in my life, I saw from this perspective and then now I'm seeing it from this because there's so many ways to view a perspective. Like when people are racist towards me and they call me like a sand N-word, I know that a part of them isn't calling me that because they actually know I'm Middle Eastern. A lot of people think I'm Jewish, but I'm Iraqi, you know, I'm a Syrian. And I know that if I tell that story in some way, I'm like, see, people are racist. But then I know for a fact that people are just calling me that because they know it will piss me off. But now that it doesn't piss me off, I know that they're not even doing it because they're racist. They're bored. 
And it's like, depending on what stage in my life I tell this story, I can come at it with different narratives. And now that I'm seeing people for like more like how they are versus how I assume they are because of what I've been told people are, I'm like, oh, you don't even care. You don't even care. You're just like, oh, this pisses her off. I'll throw a slur at her. And I'm like, oh, you're not even racist. You're bored. That's even the worst, right? Oh my God. Yes, kitty, let's go. Iraqi too, let's go. So again, when we're having this conversation, we have to ask ourselves, what, what, like, what version of perception, like, what are you saying to me? What do you mean by this? Interesting. So in 10 years, I don't know how Katie's going to feel about this or think about this, but I'm excited to find out if she's still a content creator. I would love to know what changed or if anything changed, you know? This uh, was for it not to be about drama for it not to be about canceling. And I know you hear that now and you're probably thinking you're the biggest hypocrite in the world. And I acknowledge that. Uh, I have strayed anytime I reply oh, to him. Oh, wait, sorry, Abby, good point. Abby said, I don't know. I feel like she was giving him conflicting signals that could look like nonverbal consent. And I think she kind of admitted to that because she was scared to offend or reject him. That is true, actually. Wait, to, wait, 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 that is true. Technically, when she was on the couch, she admitted that she went through with it, thinking it was what she had to do to network with bigger content creators. She thought it was the price to pay. Mm, that's a good point. That's a good point. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hold on. Because she thought, yeah, she said, this is the price I have to pay to be in this situation. I'm willing to pay it, which means you sold your soul for clout. That sucks. So not sexual assault. But also she felt uncomfortable and wished she did make the decision. Maybe it's a, okay, this is going to sound crazy. What if it's a decision of like, I don't want to be a girl that makes connections only using my body. But also if that's the only way I can make connections, I'm willing to do it. But also I hate that I have to do that. That kind of sucks. But who told you you had to do that? None of the guys asked for sex. None of the guys pursued kissing her. At most, George touched her boob, maybe. Which means, yeah. And then he respected her consent and didn't push her further. Yeah, it's very hard. You know what? Okay, here's my final, here's my final theory. Genuinely, if she could not see them as peers, as equals, then no matter what happened, it would have been a problem. We were drinking and that was uncool. We were in a hotel room locked up together. That's crazy. Oh my God, he touched my boob. I think possibly even without him touching her boob, she might have come up with a reason why he was uncomfortable to be drinking in the first place with people. Maybe. Because if this is about power dynamics, then she shouldn't have been drinking with people in general. She shouldn't have been in that room. But that's the problem is because like she was a legal adult. She was with people she didn't consider her peer. So I have a feeling no matter what she did, she would have felt like she was being being babysat maybe. Yeah, there's like a lot here. I don't want to assume. It's just like, oh, I simply regret it. It sounds to me like she's not even sure if she's like who she is, which again, trauma, therapy, introspection. Like who is Katie? So again, this, okay, this is a conversation that happens a lot on YouTube. If smaller creators make content about bigger creators, do bigger creators have the right to come after smaller creators? Yes, if they have the right to defend themselves. No, if they're punching down and bullying for no reason. But ultimately, people have the right to defend themselves. And you are all content creators, so you're all adults if you're an adult content creator, right? And I always hated this argument because I'm like, I'm an adult. You can make a video about me. But like also, I can understand how in some situations, bigger content creators use this as a reason to send their audience after smaller content creators. So again, which situation are we looking at? And I think we're looking at a situation where a smaller content creator is punching up and expecting the guy not to punch back. And I think that's probably the wrong assessment. You know what I mean? <clears throat> Ah, uh, Tom Foolery says she also makes it about verbal consent, but based on the pressure she says she felt, it sounds like she would have verbally consented as well. Well, that's the problem. We'll never know that, and I don't want to make that assumption on her behalf, but it obviously is a concern of mine. If she's already gone into the situation feeling like she's not equal to them, it's like, why do you feel that way? 
right? Taylor says cactus mom. Katie's Katie's mom, cactus mom, really, Brittany. Katie's mom said she only she can only go to VidCon if looked after by ghosty. I heard that too. I'm not sure what that means. Like you're an adult. You, my parents were not telling me where to go at 18. I'm like an adult. I have a job. I'm working three jobs and I have a car. Why are my parents telling me where to go at 18? You know what I mean? What, what is that about? So if her mom thought she was too immature to handle her life, which she probably was because she was newly 18, right? See, my parents said, hey, you play with fire, you're going to get burned. And my parents were pretty ruthless about it, bro. I'm not saying that's better. I'm not, you know, but yeah, I think if her mom is sending her there with hopes friends will watch her, then maybe her friend also is to be held responsible in some aspect. But ghosty, ghosty, is ghosty the one who ran off puking? <clears throat> you know what I mean? I'm on Twitter. Anytime <laughs> I made a response on Twitter, anytime I was like, look at these screenshots, look, it opened the floor for it to be viewed as drama and as, you know me trying to ruin his life i made those tweets out of i felt like i was backed into a corner i made those tweets out of anger um seeing him say he would have never like crossed someone's boundaries it just i was really upset um and i acknowledged by doing that stuff i strayed away from my goal of why i did this all but Annie said, didn't Shubble say something similar that older content creators need to take care of the younger ones? Ew. I don't want to be part of any of your communities. I don't know if she said that, but let me tell you right now, I'm not your friend. I don't want to be part of your community. I'm not a part of your clique. And no, I don't want to come to brunch. I am not here to take care of you. You have a mother. You can go see her. And if she's dead, sucks. Okay. I might like to be called Mama Simon, which the internet dubbed me. But at the same time, girl, I'm not your real mama. I didn't give birth to you. Mm-mm. Absolutely not. Older content creators need to take care of younger ones. Absolutely not. I don't want that responsibility. I do not consent. I do not consent. Figure your shit out, bro. Mm -mm. Uh, it is true that that was my goal in the beginning. Mm -mm. For everyone that watched my first stream and didn't stop, that happened. People watched my stream, heard me tell my story, how scared I was to heard my story, but stopped after the story was done to go in their notes app, to write down every single detail about the guy that did it, to go to Twitter, to then form these bands and figure out who did it and who to attack. It wasn't fucking about him. It wasn't about him. And if you would have listened. That's true. The internet sucks. The internet sucks. You guys are a cesspool of people. The internet is a cesspool of, of trolls and goblins. And I know I live here. But that's why I protect myself with peace and love. She's right. The internet sucks, bro. The way I have seen Reddit talk about me, like, girl, they don't have any clue who I am. The way they miscategorize me is insane, bro. But that's life. It does suck. It's why, again, I want to know who told her to tell her story. Why would you take this heat without understanding? But she's 19. She probably thought, I don't know. She probably just thought, She's telling her story to make sense. You know what I mean? Past my story and listen to any <sighs> of the things I talked about after. It's about victims. It's, it's barely even about me. It's me telling my story about assault. It's about assault and it's about the things that- Now I know some victims of assault were really upset with her. They're like, real victims don't feel this way. I think that's really fucked up. I do. I think, I think victims of sexual- I'm a victim of sexual assault, survivor of sexual assault, or rape- I should say this. I'm not upset at Katie. I have no reason to be. Her story isn't my story. Our stories are very different. I had a completely different story. Um, we're not talking about the same things. My life is in her life. My brain is in her brain. I'm not mad at her. I don't think she represents me. I don't think she makes it worse for victims. Uh, victims need Katie's help. It was bad enough. I'm not going to let the whole responsibility ride on the shoulders of a 19-year-old when I'd rather point fingers at politicians and leaders, right? Like, I'm not going to hold a 19-year-old more accountable than I would hold people who are in charge of me legally, who represent me in the law, judges, Supreme Courts. I'm not interested in holding a 19-year-old accountable uh, as bad representation for victims of rape when we have grown men on sitcoms, radio shows, YouTube shows openly talking about running train on women who don't even know 
or are too drunk to consent. I'm not interested in holding a 19-year-old accountable. But if you would like to blame her for the regression, if you would like to blame her instead of grown-ups, sure. Absolutely. You do that. But I'm not going to do that that go on behind the scenes and it became this thing about him about canceling him about him about drama it turned into this thing for to spread hate and to spread you know people just fighting and picking sides and then people commenting on it you know the commentary like it's like it's a fucking sports match and it's not real fucking life i can't i can't turn it off i can't you can you can argue about it on Twitter. You can you can watch videos about it. You can talk about it on a podcast. You can make a video covering it. But then you can move on to the next hit topic. You can move on to the next trending thing. You can turn off your phone and it doesn't exist anymore. I can't turn off my life. I can't turn off my memories. I can't turn it off. It's something that I really recommend therapy. <clears throat> I do. I think it would help in immensely. Just like as somebody, I'm looking for a therapist right now. I really want more help with my PTSD. Um, I think it would be really great. But in general, I think it would really help her because it doesn't have to haunt you forever. It does eventually shut off or gets brought back up. I don't think about my rape every day, guys. It happened a long time ago. Sometimes I still get triggered, which is why I want to go to therapy but I've been triggered twice in the last like four years, twice, medically triggered. I don't think about my rape every day. There is another side to this. I want to give Katie hope. I want to give you guys all hope. If you're still in the process of thinking about it every day, there's another side. There is absolutely another way to live your life and to like put yourself at rest. Even when you're still, I'm still, like I said, I'm still working on it. I hope to get down to zero triggers, medical triggers, but like you don't, you don't have to live with it every day, but that takes time. My assault happened like 12 years ago, long time ago, 12 years ago, no longer, 14 years ago, long time ago, guys, long time ago, hers just happened. Regardless of it being a miscommunication, she still has a relationship with it that's negative, therapy will help you. A good therapist will help you. I recommend DBT for her because I recommend DBT for everybody. But I think in her case, it actually might be specifically helpful. You know? That happened to me. You know? Abby with the super chat says, my theory is that she didn't like it, but in the moment didn't assert her boundaries because of her own assumptions and perceptions of the situation. Now she's upset that George didn't see past her conflicting nonverbal cues. I agree with that. I think she did not know how to state her boundaries. I think she was perceiving it incorrectly, which I think was probably a contributing uh, from her past trauma that she referenced in this video. I agree with that. You know, I do agree with that. Taylor says, after listening to Dream Space yesterday, I, Taylor, I'm assuming you're the one who sent it to me. I got this video called Dream Space and it was like a dream video from like two weeks ago talking about the incident, his perspective. He did say sorry to Katie. He was very compassionate. Taylor says, after listening to Dream Space yesterday, did you see how the smear campaign, uh, him and by association has made them into villains, how Katie has all the assumptions about them? Yeah, I do. And I think that within reason, Katie probably feels like she's telling the truth. You know, Big D says, what's the difference between a medical trigger and a regular trigger? Well, the internet says trigger is like when you're upset. And I'm, I've been saying medical trigger to explain it to the internet. Because sometimes when I say trigger, I think they think I'm saying I'm, I'm upset. Being upset is not a trigger. That's like an internet term. A medical trigger meaning like you're put back in that situation. When a military soldier is medically triggered because he hears fireworks or she fears, hears fireworks on 4th of July and she's put back or he is put back in that situation, it's like you go back to where you were when you have the relationship with the PTSD incident. CPTSD is long-term trauma over long-term time. PTSD is a single incident that causes a reaction inside the self. So PTSD usually is triggered and it puts you back and sort of you think the situation's happening again. Internet says triggered to meaning upset. So I'm realizing some of the miscommunication I might have even had with other YouTubers when I said, oh, I was triggered. I think they think I mean I'm upset and I'm like, no, I'm medically triggered. I mean, it's not up to me. I'm like back in the zone, right? 
So again, just like with a military soldier, we're not going to hold him accountable by being triggered back into his PTSD memory. But we would say to him, obviously, you're not within reason to be triggered, but you still get triggered because it's your PTSD. So it's within reason. Same with Katie. It's not reasonable that she thought George was like assaulting her, but also given her past and her understanding of the context, it's understandable why she's doing that. So just like with a military soldier, it's not reasonable for him to like hurt people because he's triggered, but we understand why he got there, right? We understand why he got there. So then it's kind of like we're more lenient on him, right? Because we get it. We get why it happened. Okay, like, again, you want to meet people where they're at. You want to be loving and compassionate. You understand why people get there. I think there's plenty of reasons why Katie's the way she is. I think therapy would help dismantle those things and help her really know what's going on. If she's got a good therapist, you got to get a good therapist. And you also got to be ready to change, you know? Cloudy, thank you so much for the compliments on my hair. Appreciate it. Anytime someone asks, what's the furthest you've gone? That's my story. That's what I'm reminded of it. And I can't turn that off. It's a real thing. It's real people. The purpose of me trying to come out about this. I was I was trying to bring, you know, I finally felt safe to tell my story. Uh, and for all the people... George says sorry even though it was her fault. Well, George says sorry because he did do something to violate Katie. You can say sorry for accidentally doing something, guys. That's the good thing to do is to say, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize you didn't want it. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I, I totally made a mistake. George apologized because he did something wrong. He misread the situation. He should have apologized. That was good. George did really good. He apologized for the misunderstanding. That's what he should have done. And then she should have gone, oh my God, it's okay. Now that I know it's an like a mistake, I, okay, cool. Like, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Why do you guys keep saying she's still a virgin? I don't know if she's a virgin. It's none of my business. What does it matter if she's still a virgin? Am I crazy? Like, what does it matter if she's a virgin or not a virgin? Like, that's... Does that have anything to do with the situation? I don't want to, I don't need to know the status of her virginity. In these situations that pressure other creators to make commentaries on it, that at other creators being like, say something, fuck you. What are you, what are you doing? Why are you begging at these other creators to say something, to make comments, just so you have more, more things to consume in this situation? These are real people. You don't know what they're going through behind the scenes. You don't know how they're processing it. I mean, imagine something like that happening to you and then you're getting grilled to, it's not about any of them. It's not about them. It's not about him. It's about, especially, the creators that I never knew I wasn't aware about had stories that have reached out to me. You never know what someone's going through. Adding someone in these kind of sensitive situations, telling them to speak on it, you don't know what they've went through. You don't know if they've went through things with these people too. You don't, you don't know. Uh, it's, it's just. Well, if they did, so, okay. What you can do now is read between the lines. And if she is saying that other people in the same group assaulted or raped people, then I do kind of expect you to come out with those stories. Look, the bullshit I know about YouTubers behind the closed doors, none of it's about rape. So I don't give a fuck. Okay. Some of it's about consent violations for sure. But the people who were violated don't want to talk about it. That's their business. Maybe one day I'll regret not saying something out loud for sure. Uh, but also... If you engage with those people and you're not surprised they don't fuck you over, I mean, you're just fucking dumb as well. And a part of me is like, you gotta learn that lesson because the people, you know what I mean? Like, who fucking cares? But also, maybe I'll regret it. Maybe one day I'll be like, fuck, I should have said something. But also, I'm not your fucking mom. Get people STI tested. Listen to me. Don't sleep with people who aren't tested recently and with you. Don't sleep with people you don't know are on birth control. Don't think you can fix people that are fucked up. And you'll be fine. If you get them tested, you make sure you're on birth control and you don't think you can fix them, you'll be fine. But if you don't do those things, I warned you, that's my warning. Just do those things and you'll be fine. 
okay? And maybe I'll regret it. But come on, I just, I just, I kind of just said it. Just, okay, just, mm. anyways. If Katie knows, if these women know, and it's true that people are raping people, I think you should probably say something. But also, I know a lot of people don't want to be your hero. They don't want to have to do it. I know so many women who it was rape for sure. And yeah, it's too much fucking spoons and work to come out. I know men who have absolutely been assaulted and it's too much fucking work to press charges. They don't want to start a campaign. They don't want people to misbelieve them. And the question is, what should people do? They should do their best. Yeah, maybe they should come out with the stories. Maybe they shouldn't tell anyone. Maybe, 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 maybe. It's really exhausting to try to figure out when do you tell people things. It's really exhausting. And I think pretending like we know the answer is so fucking narcissistic. We don't know the answer. We don't know what every single person in every situation should do. All we know is we should do our best. And your best isn't always good enough. But it's good enough. Disgusting to get these people, you know? And again, I do say acknowledge the people uh, coming out about this, uh, speaking against it. And I am grateful for all the people that have um, a lot. You said it's almost like she has a savior complex. I also went to therapy for this. I think it's a product of being on the internet and being raised in a certain way. Like, no joke. My therapist was like, do you think you're Spider-Man or Superman? Superman. She's like, do you think you're Superman? I was like, no. And she goes, why do you think you have to save the world? I was like, I don't know. People could, like, I keep thinking I'm a bad person if I don't. I was raised with the 60s as the example. Like, what would you do if Martin Luther King Jr. was marching? Would you want to do it? You know what I mean? Oh, my gosh. What would you do if, like, black people were being discriminated against in front of you? What would you do if, like, the Jews were hiding from the Nazis? Like, you grew up your whole life thinking, like, what would you do? But the truth is, you'd probably do what everyone else did in history. Nothing. It's a big responsibility to try to do something. And I don't think we've evolved as animals to always do something. I think we've evolved as animals to survive. And usually, not doing anything is better for survival. But I do think the internet encourages you to be a savior I do think there's a lot of pressure to do the right thing. I think people want you to be perfect because we live in such an imperfect world. Um, but I think ultimately, like, life is hard enough. You know what I mean? Things are hard enough. And I think you have to pick and choose your battles wisely. You know what I mean? And I don't think we know how to do that. And so Katie, I would say, isn't picking and choosing her battles wisely. But to be fair... You have to learn the hard way. You have to earn wisdom. Suffering wisely takes wisdom. I will die unwise. I know some of you are very sweet and you're like, Brittany, you're so smart, but I am not wise. I have moments of wisdom, but all overall, like I'm no Uncle Iroh. You feel me? Uncle Iroh's in the chat, guys. Uncle Iroh's in the chat. Like I'm not Uncle Iroh. And maybe I'll die not being that wise, but life will continue to teach me lessons as it will continue to teach Katie and all of us lessons. A lot of them are my friends and a lot of them, you know, are creators that I look up to that have reached out to me, uh, making sure I'm okay. Um, but also I will make aware that this also does open, you know, the platform and open the ability for people to, you know, that aren't good to <laughs> speak on it and be like, yeah, I support you just, you know. So it, it is hard to fully trust everyone, but anyways. Um, I brought it up. I brought all this up. I, it became into this thing of picking sides and dramatizing it, making it into drama instead of focusing on the bigger issue, instead of the focusing on the things that happen in the content world, instead of focusing on the issues of blind idolization, you know, um, but people only cared about finding something else to argue about instead of just That's focusing true. on the main idea. That's true. Um, and the biggest thing that I want to mention and one of the last things is people saying, why did you come publicly about this? Why didn't you keep it private? Ali says, so as a consumer on the internet, how do we navigate past accusations about content creators who we like? Should we sh be shaming others for enjoying content? I think you should focus on yourself. I think you should focus on yourself and live 
by example. And I think it's okay to want to warn people. I've done that in the past. It just doesn't work. Like, it doesn't matter. People are going to make their own decisions. I believe people can recover and change. Um, like, I really like Mike Tyson, but he's a convicted rapist. And that's very complicated, right? I do like a lot of people, but they do not have clean pasts. You know what I mean? You have to decide how you feel about it. No one will ever ruin Ye's old music for me. I don't listen to now Ye. I stopped listening to Ye before Yeezus. But like old Ye, nobody will ruin that for me. Not even Ye. It's up to you how you want to have a relationship with content. There are YouTubers that put a sour taste in my mouth and I can't watch anymore. I'm not going to shame people for enjoying their content. But I might pay attention to how much they love them. To be fair, when people tell me they love Tucker Carlson, I also give them the side eye. People give me the side eye because I like, you know, PewDiePie. It is what it is. You have to decide how you feel about it. You know? But people are people. Don't put people on a pedestal, bros. Yes, nobody date Mike Tyson or Sneeko. But yeah, sometimes people give me a bad taste and I never watch them again. But you know, if you want to give a side eye to somebody who's like, I really love this person. I think like very, very like uh, well of somebody. It's like, maybe you can just keep that, you know, just keep note of that, you know? What I've noticed in my sphere, and I told my, <laughs> I made a video about this, is like, uh, I do pay attention to who people talk to and collab. I've blocked a lot of YouTubers in my life. I'm not talking to you. If you're super, super toxic, like there's a level of toxicity, I will not talk to somebody. But there's also a level of toxicity I might, you know, there's still a level of toxicity I might, you know what I mean? But not, not, uh, you got to pick and choose your battles, guys. Pick and choose your battles. Why did you, because I saw what Shelby did for me. I saw the effect Shelby had on me, seeing another content creator, someone I looked up to speaking out about something that happened, realizing that someone I looked up to went through the same thing as me. You don't know. Ooh, but she didn't go through the same thing as you, bitch. Ooh, she didn't go through the same thing as you. That's the problem. See, Katie, no, Shelby reminds me of like past relationships I've had. I've dated really toxic people and I was toxic enough to date them. So that's my fault. But not my fault because I don't believe in fault. That's just where I was in life. It was what it was, okay? I dumped those people. Never talked to them again. Best decision I ever made. But I had to become a healthier person to not want to date them or not believe in them or not change. So Shelby is not the same situation. Shelby had a relationship with Wilbur that was constantly toxic and annoying and frustrating. And yes, though I want to hold Shelby accountable to some extent because she's nearing 30. Well, she's 19. Some people were critical of me. And they're like, why are you harsher on Shelby than on Katie? Because Shelby's 30 and Katie's 19. Hello? So yeah, I feel bad for Shelby. And she's right. She wasn't a toxic relationship. And I'm not mad she spoke out against Wilbur. She can make her decisions about that. As long as she never lied and as long as she was being honest. Does Wilbur need to go to prison? No, he needs to go to therapy. As far as I know of what Wilbur did to her, they were all things that needed therapy. Definitely abusive, definitely toxic, but go to therapy. He doesn't need to be arrested. He didn't do anything that needs to be arrested. He did things that need to go to, to therapy. Okay? So Discord said, did Katie actually mention therapy once in her videos? It seems like something worthwhile she could have brought up. She hasn't mentioned therapy once from what I remember. Does anybody, does anybody remember she has not mentioned therapy once, which is driving me crazy, by the way. Do none of these people know about therapy? It's very annoying that no one's talking about it because it's a great tool, okay? Um, so I will say, I don't think what happened to Shelby and her are the same situation. And again, going back to categorization, see how we're all talking about shades of toxicity, which are shades of blue, but what happened to Katie is like a light blue. What happened to Shelby is a dark blue. And the fact that she thinks they're both dark blue is crazy. Like that is a miscategorization of the situation. Katie is miscategorizing, miscategorizing her own situation. Her situation is nothing like Shelby's situation. Completely fucking different. Night and day. 
I mean, it's, it's, you know what I mean? It's all blue, but it's totally fucking different. And the fact that she doesn't know it's totally fucking different, it's like, oh, pourquoi? Oh. Ooh, Mia says, but do you think she actually believes that? I don't know. I don't know. Understand what that does. You, you don't, you don't understand how that feels. I wanted to be that for other people. Me staying silent about my situation. Who is the, who is that helping? I understand. Oh, it's just bringing up because if you view it as drama, it is like, oh, why are you bringing this drama forward? Yi says, I feel like she didn't mean it like that. Do you think she just meant in general, like with bigger male content creators? I don't know how she meant it. But it is an, it's sexual assault. It is me and my viewers know uh, one of the biggest. Um, Super says, when she says same thing I went through, I wonder if she means bodily autonomy being violated. Maybe. These things I've focused on in my content is being open for the purpose of connecting. Because realizing someone that you watch goes through the same things that you do, it is, it is so healing and it is so eye-opening. And again- Soner said, this is why abused victims are hating on her. Yeah, but don't you think that's fucked up? Don't you think it's kind of fucked up to- to, because she's definitely probably an abuse victim, guys. Don't you think it's super fucked up to, like, punch down on her when she's 19 and probably has gone through something that she's not talking about? Or maybe she's... Because even to do this, I think you do have to have problems. So I just feel like punching... Like, being mad at her for not representing your story correctly is kind of insane, too. I think assault victims that are genuinely mad at Katie for misrepresenting them, that's kind of crazy. I feel like you're still in your trauma. I feel like you're being kind of crazy. I do. You can be mad at me if you want, but I'm telling you, you're crazy. It is, cra it is crazy pr to project your trauma onto Katie. What does her story have to do anything with you? She doesn't know you. It's not about you. It's kind of narcissistic to make it about you, to be honest. So I think it's inappropriate. I think you're being super inappropriate. Again, I will always... If I could do this all over, I would do it all again because the amount of uh, viewers of mine and the viewers that aren't of mine that have reached out to me saying they understand and that they feel safe now uh, to accept what's happened to them. Not even safe to come out about their stories because you don't, you don't have to come out about your story. You don't have to yell it off the rooftops to heal from it, you know? Um, but again, it, it, it is a big help. It creates this open. She says she represents abuse victims. She probably does. She's just not your kind. Again, she does represent probably some form of abuse victim. Maybe like blue version, but you're a dark view. Like if you're dark blue, she's not talking about you. She's not talking about me. My, my life has no overlap with Katie's. So she's not talking about me. See, when YouTubers talk and they're like, you know, Middle Eastern women with big noses and curly hair, I hate them. They don't know me. They're not talking about me. They just describe me, but they ain't talking about me. You know what I'm saying? Why would I assume this has anything to do with me? Why are you assuming it has anything to do with you? Because that's your trauma talking. I'm telling you right now, why would you think that has nothing to do with me? When I hear that is not about me. They ain't talk about me. The fact that you think they're talking about you. Hmm, interesting open discussion of these these hard things to talk about that's that's what that's why i came out about my story not not to and again i know it sounds hypocritical and that's i'm acknowledging that and i did things i probably shouldn't have with with making it this drama kind of thing on twitter by replying and being you know um but yeah um Again, I came out my out with my story. It's fine if you don't believe me. Um, and it's also really fine if you don't understand me. You don't understand why I did. You don't understand why I couldn't have stood up in the moment and ran out of the room. It's fine if you don't understand because the story is... Yo, Athena says you give me such a new perspective to view things and it's so eye-opening. Welcome to the bubble pop. We call that a bubble pop here, girl. When we have a different perception and we go, oh, wait. I never thought about it that way. That's a bubble pop, girl. Mm, welcome. For you. It's for people who... Victims who understand my thought process. My my first stream wasn't, this is all the bad stuff. When, she, when you guys say, like, 
I'm mad at her because she says I, re- I represent abuse victims. Does she re- represent abuse victims that were burned with cigarettes by their parents? Or is that maybe a different category? Is that maybe a different category? When someone says like, oh, I was abused by my parents too. Oh my God, me too. How are you abused? Oh, they used to cut off my toes. Oh, they used to take away my Nintendo and I couldn't play it for a while. See how we're having different conversations? It's just different conversations. Oh, I was abused by my parents. They would beat me every time they caught me looking at gay porn. Oh, shit. Yeah, my parents used to put cigarettes out on my eyes. Okay, well, you know, I don't want to play who's suffering more, but... Yeah, I just feel like we're all talking about different things, and we all keep thinking we're talking about the same thing. Oh, my God, you were raped? Me too. Oh, my God, do you remember yours? No, not at all. I was drugged out. Oh, I remember every detail of mine. Fuck, we did not have the same experience. Being raped isn't a monolith. When we say I was raped, I'm not telling you anything. We're not, we don't have the same stories just because we had the same words. That this person did go kill them. It was me describing my experience uh, with assault that happened to me and then acknowledging it, you know, actually realizing, shit, this is something that happened to me and I can't ignore it and, and accepting it. It was about my journey as a victim um, and I fully understand not many people to understand that kind of uh, journey. And even if you are a victim and don't understand me, you know, you don't you don't have to have the same situation to still be a victim. So I understand that as well. Um, my story was meant for people who chose to believe me, not because, you know, of proof or because Ooh. I have video of it Ooh. or because of any of that, but because they've experienced it themselves. And they... Ooh. That is a red flag. Where's that twig TikTok red flag guy? Let's listen to that again. And that as well. Um, my story was meant for people who chose to believe me, not because, you know, of proof or because I have video of it or because of any of that, but because they've experienced it themselves and they Ooh. recognize it. Ooh. They recognize what I've went through and they recognize that I'm sincere about it. I do recognize trauma. And I do recognize an impact. And I absolutely do recognize something is going on. I do think she's a victim of something. I do recognize trauma. I'm not saying she's a liar. I'm saying I'm seeing, you know what I do see? I see distortion. I do. I know you guys really want me to end the video saying like Katie's a bitch and I fucking hate her. How? What do you want me to hate a 19 year old for who I obviously see as mentally unwell? I would love a professional to spend six months with her, a year, whatever, once a month, figuring out what it is and what's going on. Because regardless of how you guys feel about her, no well-adjusted, healthy person does this. Even if she's lying, guys, even making false accusations, no healthy, adjusted person makes false accusations. Amber Heard is very disturbed. No healthy, adjusted person just makes up claims about people. Okay? So with peace and love, she obviously needs help. Okay? So that is what I'm seeing. I don't need... The evidence is her. So the evidence that I think she needs help is like her posting content. Right? Same with George. The reason I'm looking at him in dream and thinking, God, I'm so glad my friends aren't this young or silly is also the same reason I'm like, oh, my siblings are probably going to be as messy as them, you know? Soner says evil people do. Evil people don't exist. <clears throat> Welcome to my audience. Welcome to my community. Evil is a mythos created by construct. That is a word we put on people that we don't want to acknowledge are human beings. We call them monsters. We call them evil. They're animals on a planet. I don't know why you think we're here. I don't know if you think God put you here or aliens or you think we live in the matrix. I just think we're simply animals evolved over time. We live in a universe and we're biological creatures. Evil is furthest from joy. Joy is what I call beyond happiness, beyond anything. It's an understanding of who you are and what you're doing here. Not in a magical way, just like in a radical acceptance way, right? No woo-woo, no magic, no God. 
It's okay if you believe in those things, but it's a belief, okay? People aren't evil because you decide they're evil. Evil is a construct that you use towards that word. Hitler, good example, the one everyone always uses, right? Tripp says Hitler was gunning for evil. Hitler thought he was doing good. And it takes other people to stop Hitler to give a different version of good. Evil is a construct further from, furthest from joy. So yes, he was evil because he was furthest from joy. You guys are saying Jeffrey Dahmer wasn't evil. He's evil because he's furthest from joy. He's not evil because he was born evil. He's not evil because he's a villain. He's not evil because you're afraid of him. He's furthest from joy. Right? <clears throat> so Hitler thought he was doing good for Germany. Just like, you know, every other dictator ever who ever existed literally thought, and people have good stories about them. I use Saddam as an example because some people I know talk only good about Saddam because he saved like their mother. Some people talk bad about Saddam because he killed their mother. I personally think all violence is moving furthest from joy, right? So I think a joyful person probably isn't going to murder the Jews. A joyful person probably isn't going to lie about a person. A joyful person probably isn't going to need to make false accusations. But calling them evil is like calling a person a monster. As long as you're using it <clears throat> with introspection, I'm okay with it. But if you think, oh, that's a monster. That's not even a human. That's an evil person. You know, Driz says, so can people not be good? Good is, a, it's, a, it's a construct. So yes, people can be good according to you. People can be good according to you. So I think most people are good because they're doing the best with what they can. People sometimes move towards evil, but are mostly somewhere in the middle or maybe go back and forth between joy and evil. But people are rarely evil and people are rarely joyful. You know? So people are just people. And then you have to decide where your boundaries lie. Right? So someone had to stop Hitler because it was the right thing to do. But did we even go into that war because it was the right thing to do? Or did we end up stopping Hitler because he was fucking with our shit? If you're American. And it's not like America doesn't do evil because they move furthest from joy. Because humans, and as a general species, we do a lot of things that are furthest from joy. You know? So again, people are doing what they think is best. And it's pretty interesting what people justify. But then people tell me I'm crazy or call me a prude or say I'm insane for wanting to do things that like, I don't want to lie if I don't have to. Outside of survival situations, I don't lie. People are like, that's crazy. You should lie. Lying is good. Why? They're like, everyone lies. Well, everyone lies, but not everyone lies. I never lie about other people. That's a big rule of mine. But other people are more than happy to lie about other people. And I think that's interesting. I think it's interesting the way they justify lying about other people. See, I don't believe an eye for an eye. I don't think because you hurt me, I get to hurt you now. I personally don't believe that. I believe I'm allowed to defend myself though. I don't think I'm allowed to hurt people because they've hurt other people. You know? If genocide is what you think are best, then are you evil though? I do think genocide is in the eve, like closest to evil and furthest from joy. I, I do think that's true. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get back to it. <clears throat> um, I feel like the whole situation, the way it played out has been uh, very unfair. But what's most unfair is what he did to me in the first place. Uh, so... Um, there's that. I'm, I'm tired of the constant fight of trying to validate what I went through to validate and prove that I was uncomfortable. Um, I'm tired <laughs> with it all, honestly. But again, I would still do. Actually, good point. Discord said I'm still confused how these Gen Z kids haven't brought up the option of therapy. I bet they're in the bubble that therapy isn't a thing. Right? Guys, what if they're in the bubble? See, we have this stereotype. All Gen Zers talk about is therapy, therapy, therapy. She hasn't mentioned therapy once. What if she's the bubble of, of Gen Zers that don't go to therapy? See how we make this assumption that because they're Gen Z, they'd go to therapy? Because I thought that too. 
I thought, how are they Gen Z and aren't talking about therapy? They're not in the therapy bubble. That's got to be it. <clears throat> do it all over again because um, I don't want people to view that as me like bowing out and, you know, because I bit more than I can chew. I'm still here, but um, I, I'm just not going to apologize what I've went through. Um, I know there may be more after this. Uh, more, you know, people trying to get the final word or, like, people, you know, responding to what I've said. Uh, but this is my final. Ah, so people in chat are saying this is the bubble that they feel like once they're validated, why go to therapy? Or TikTok therapy? Or therapy was canceled back in 2017? What? When? Gen Z is all about mental health, not therapy. Ah, Interesting. I think, is it millennials who are really into therapy? But Wilbur mentioned therapy. Wilbur did mention therapy, funny enough. Hmm. Yeah. Th Wilbur did mention therapy. That's a good point, Discord. Discord said, theory, she's looking for the victim role, not a solution. That's why she's in looking for therapy or taking different perspectives. Probably true. Yeah. Yeah, she's definitely looked in, looking for a victim role. I think she thinks it's the best place to be right now. Um, well, that's what I'm saying, though. You can't just go to therapy, guys. You have to be ready to change. So until she's ready to change or heal or get better, of course, like, she wouldn't go to therapy, right? Discord said therapy would destroy her current self, for sure. Introspection would destroy this version of herself. I think she needs to do this for a while before she realizes, like, oh, shit, I got to do something about this. But lots of people are fine living in their misery. They do it all the time. Half of you in this chat are probably doing it right now. As somebody who lived pretty miserable for quite a few years, it's kind of hard to get out of it because at least you know what it is. You know? Uh, on it all. Um, if there's anything said after this, where there's responses or anything, I won't be there to see it. Um, I, I just, I, I won't. Um, as for, you know, the future and stuff, I'm in a really weird place. Um, you know, content, when I was going through stuff in my real life, I would use content as kind of an escape. You know, it was a place to feel safe and even... See, true. That's kind of what content was for me back in the day, though I always thought of it as a job. Only recently, I'm like, nope, this is my job. This is not a place for me to escape. This is my job. This was like four years ago. I decided like, okay, content's going to be my job. She's got it. That's a problem. Red flag. Are you a content creator or is, is being online like your therapy without being therapy? See, I only want to collab with people. I'm trying to like really hard only collab with people that are taking their content creation really seriously because I want to work. I came here to work. And I think that's really hard to find because a lot of people do end up online because they're bored and they want friends. Like sometimes people will try to friend me on Discord. Guys, if you try to friend me on Discord, I'm going to say no to you. If you're a content creator, you better be reaching out for a collab. And even then, I might not say yes. But sometimes people will be like, oh, I just want to be on your friends list to be on your friends list. It's like, no. Why? Just like, I'm here to work. You know, I want to work and that's it. Okay? I want to work. But that's the problem. It's like people come to, they become streamers. They do social stuff to spend time with friends, which is cute and fun. But uh, you got to pay attention to what that means. You know what I mean? So is it bad to use content as an escape? I don't think it's bad to enjoy time shutting off your brain. I shut off my brain. I watch TikToks. I do it every night. I watch anime. I shut off my brain all the time. I don't think it's bad. What's bad is like if it becomes your whole life, if you're not facing yourself, if you're using it as an escape, like alcohol, you know what I mean? Which is different than just enjoying a drink. But escaping, denying yourself responsibility, you know, not having a good relationship, not moving towards your joy, if, if content creation is making you miserable, if what you're doing is miserable, move towards your joy. Switch positions, you know? If every choice you keep making is making you miserable, pick different ones. And if my life was shit <laughs> off the screen, I could come on here and, and be with you guys. Uh, but now, obviously, I'm just in a very weird place. Um... So I'm not promising anything, not promising that I'm going to come back, not promising that I'm leaving forever. Uh, it's just a thing about time and taking time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
and I hope you guys can understand that. Uh, it does suck. I There are things that I've been working on for like a year <laughs> that I don't want to just scrap, but also it's just... And I think a lot of people need time right now. Um, not even just me or him or like anyone, I think it's just... Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, again, can't promise anything for the future, but I'll promise that you know, I'll do I'll do whatever I love moving forward. Um, and I hope I wish you guys the best. I I don't want to you know you guys to view this as me abandoning abandoning you or whatever, but I just don't promise. Yeah, I don't have that relationship with my audience. Guys, if I have to leave for my mental health, peace out. I know you respect me enough to let me do this. And if you made me feel like I was abandoning you, shame on you. This is a young person's mentality. I used to have this when I was a young like content creator. You do not owe your audience your mental health. You do not owe them if they feel like they're you're abandoning them. Okay. Someone had the audacity to write Cat Black the rudest message. And it was like, Cat, um, I know you're going through mental health stuff right now, but you need to post more. This is your job. Take it seriously. Um, first of all, Cat can post as much as she wants. If you don't like the amount of content she's creating, don't support her. Also, whether it's for mental health or the fact that she just wants to post twice a month is up to her. But this idea that your audience is like, um, you need to post more. Um, you need to old yeller yourself. Okay. You need to leave people alone. I produce a lot of content because I'm vibing. This is my life. I love it. But if the content creator you know only posts once a year or once a month, that's their business. You don't have to support them. If you took money, like if they took money from you and promised you content they didn't deliver, that's different. That's not what's happening. Promise anything. Um, I will never forget how how kind um, a lot of you have been, um, and and the way that my community has treated me um, <laughs> since I was sixteen. Truly, <sighs> I'm really lucky. I I really really am. Um, a lot of people tell me I'm, you know, brave for coming. What? Content creators feel in debt to their audience because they give them money? I don't feel that way about anybody who gives me money, bitch. You're giving me money because I'm working. I'm I'm providing. A, we're having an exchange. Some people feel that way about their jobs, I guess. But, like, I don't get paid unless I show up to work. So I don't know about you. Sometimes, you know what I mean? Like, I'm working. I don't feel bad. I feel grateful which is different. I feel grateful I'm able to work and make money. I don't feel bad. That's that's some trauma right there, girl. That's you convincing yourself that, unless you don't think of it as a job. See, if you're doing YouTube as a hobby, I don't think you should collect money. I'm gonna be real. I think if you're not taking your job seriously on YouTube, I think it's weird to make money doing it, but like you do you, I don't care. I'm not gonna moralize it. But like if you're running a job and you're making content, then I feel like it's kind of weird to feel bad earning money for work you've been putting stuff into. You know, Raiders says I give money for Indiana cat food. True. Don't worry, Raiders. We get Indiana snacks in your honor. Indiana's my cat. Coming out about all this, I feel the exact opposite. I'm only strong because of you guys and the people supporting me behind the scenes. Um, I guess that's it. I can sit mm. here and ask for this not to be clipped out of context and ask for people to just refer people here, but I know that uh, that's not gonna happen. I have no control over it, so. I've said all I can. Um, and again, thank you all. Uh, that's all, I guess. Uh, goodbye. Stay safe, goodbye. please heal. And yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, well, we did it. Thank you guys for being here. Like the stream before you leave. But okay, what do you guys think? What are what are our ending thoughts? What's the wisdom we have to offer this situation? I stand by what I said. I don't think she's lying, but I do think she's misunderstanding. I don't think George is lying, but I do think he misunderstood. I, I'm... I'm old. I'm almost 35. And I know that's young, but I'm old enough to know. I'm old enough to have seen this happen so many times to people around me. It's messy when you're dealing with other people, whether they're smart 
or introspective or thoughtful, but genuinely the amount of brain dead conversations I've had myself or other people have had with me and we all think we're so smart and I'm like, why are we even having this conversation? Because we're brain dead humans, okay? And I think what's important is that we recognize like we're not perfect and things will go wrong and miscommunication will happen. And I think that that's the part of this that I don't think people are ready to see. But I'm like I said, I'm old. I've seen it enough. I've seen it happen time and time and time again. And I'm just so ready for people to choose to do something else, but it's not going to happen. So if anyone sees this and wants to reach out to me, I'm pretty good at like, I'm pretty good at giving uh, advice in private, but also go to therapy. I can help with philosophy stuff, but therapy is the thing. Therapy is going to help with that mental distortion stuff. And philosophy is going to help you with your values. Why do I do what I do? Who do I think I am? What are my morals? When I'm in a position where I have to sell my soul for money and clout, my morals will tell me not to. My morals will help me get off the couch and walk out. My morals will tell me I'm not going to do this. But if you don't have morals or your morals say you're allowed to sell your soul for clout, that's between you and your God, sis. That has nothing to do with me. That is between you and your God. You know? Do you charge? I do charge one-on-one -on -one calls. Um, they are not, they are just simply talking to me. So if you want to talk to me one-on-one -on -one, or you can join the Discord, you have to be 18 plus. And the Discord, I do events there. I do discussion events on philosophy and stuff. $10 a month. Uh, it's a good space. We do professionally taught yoga, uh, especially if you're chronically ill. I have fibromyalgia. So we do yoga for the chronically, the chronic girlies and boys. Um, we talk philosophy, do movie events. If you sign up on the first of every month, you get all the events for the month. We reset all the events every 30 days. If you sign up now, you'll pay $10 now and then on the first again. So it's up to you how you want to do it. Um, one on one time, that's more expensive. But Patreon lets you into the Discord. So if you guys want to join, it's linked on the top of this chat. 18 plus though. Okay, please respect that. We create a really safe space for adults to talk about philosophy. Um, I don't want to deal with any kids. Sorry, guys. Now, am I going to talk about the George uh, video that you guys sent me? No, I don't think it's necessary. I did watch it and listen to it. And I think it was good. Uh, but I, I don't think it adds much to the conversation. Genuinely, like, Dream, Dream, did I say George? I'm sorry, Dream's video. Dream was just lost and confused and felt like the night went really well, and it was so confused anything sexual even happened. So as far as George, as far as Dream was concerned, um, he was just confused about everything. Tried to reach out to people. People were weird about things. And so I, I don't think there's any reason for me to talk about it except to say that it did add context for me as a creator, and I felt like it, it made sense. It followed through. Sounds like a bunch of young people really confused about situations, you know? So join the Discord for philosophy content. I'm not a therapist. We do not do therapy stuff. Uh, like the stream. I'll be back again tomorrow. I stream five days a week during the weekdays, usually around 2 p.m. Eastern, but we're in daylight savings time, so 3 p.m. for the month of March. Yippee says, Brittany, your community and your bubble is a safe space. I'm so happy I found you all. It's definitely a safe space for whatever category of people we are. I don't know if it's a safe space for everybody, but definitely for, um, yeah. You guys have been a vibe. I want to say for the like the fact that there was a thousand people here, the chat stayed pretty civil and pretty great. And I appreciate that so much. What good energy. And I think that's a good reflection of, I'm assuming you guys are coming mostly from Dream or George's community. I think that's a good reflection of their community. In my head, in real life I'm in bed. My belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 dun.